Good evening, and welcome to a very special edition of Kitchen Nightmares. Last year, something happened that shocked me and millions of you when I tried to help a restaurant in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was forced to do something I've never done, walk away. I went to Amy's Baking Company to help, but the owners were incapable of listening. There was such a strong reaction to the episode that we decided to give you an update on what has happened since. We'll also show you some footage that has never been seen before, and we'll hear from Amy and Sammy themselves. But first, a brief reminder of my wild journey at Amy's Baking Company. It was my first time in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I was really looking forward to helping the husband and wife team of Sammy and Amy with their restaurant, Amy's Baking Company. Just give me the per salad, darling, if you can. All right, all right. Since 2007, Amy had run the kitchen. Hey, hey. I understand this whole substitution thing. And Sammy was in charge of the front of house. For C. The owners felt that their food wasn't even an issue. If anyone tell me that my wife's food is no good, I just tell them to leave the restaurant. They were looking for validation from me that everything they were doing was right. Chef Ramsey is coming to tell the people how the food is good here. In the past, they had an ongoing war with online bloggers and customers who were writing negative reviews. These reviewers and these bloggers decided to make up lies and say that they ate the food and it was disgusting. Amy and Sammy felt that they were under attack, and that was the main reason why their business was in trouble. The customer is not always right. Before I arrived, the cameras were there to document dinner service at Amy's Baking Company. Can you make me per salad instead of that Caesar? Seriously? Many of the diners were so frustrated because of the long wait times. Never waited this long for a pizza. While the ones that did have food it really just isn't good. were truly disappointed with what they were getting. I'll take it. But during the course of the evening, Sammy and Amy had a really hard time dealing with any negativity from customers. Two pieces not cooked enough. Put it again in the, in the, in the oven. Sure, I'll burn it. It became clear that this restaurant what is the problem with it? The customer isn't always right. The egg is... OK, yeah. if you came to eat to enjoy, then you should know what you like to eat, sir. And there was one particular situation that my crew has never witnessed in the seven years of doing Kitchen Nightmares. We're waiting on one pizza. It's coming now. It's coming now, now. You keep saying that. You've been saying that for an hour. Look at him. He's like, where's my pizza? <laughs> really? Send him home. You want to wait, you wait. You don't want to pay what did you have, and you fuck off from here. Do you understand? Sammy? Go out, you motherfucker! Are you kidding me? No, you are! Don't, get don't out of speak here. like this! Go out! Are you no. fucking kidding me? You're playing dog! Stop! 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 Are they for real? You pay. You look go out. You, if you touch, I fucking, you can call me help, I told you. You go, fuck you, fuck you. No, I'm kidding, I'm fuck you. No kidding, I'm fuck you. Call the police. Take the money. No, I want the money from him. I am calling the police. You guys are fucking crazy. No, he's just calling the police. I know, but hey, you're not touching him. Get away. Motherfucker. You're a little pansy. Get out of here. Don't you ever come back here. You little weenie. Keep walking. Fuck you. Give me a break. My team gave me little detail, but told me that it was a rough night at the restaurant. This is ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this before. But as always, I wanted to form my own opinions. When I arrived, I was pleasantly surprised at the nice decor, how clean the kitchen was, and how well organized everything seemed to be. Is this a joke? I mean, look, dates, labels, yes, sectioned off. I even sampled a pretty good dessert. That's lovely. Little did I know, at that time, this wasn't going to be a piece of cake. If all your food is as good as it's dessert, trust me, there's something not quite right here. During my lunch, things started to unravel. First, I was shocked to learn my waitress, Miranda, didn't make any tips. So where did the tips go? The owner. What? Yeah. I can't believe that. I know. I try to tell him. <laughs> Wow. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, small pool boy. Sammy. You spoke earlier about the problem with staff. Yeah, I just found out something pretty major. Miranda, the young girl? Yeah. You go give her her tips? No. Sammy, yeah. you cannot take server's tips. Then bring me the people who's going to do their job, and I don't have to interfere. They can take the whole tips for them. Did you see? I already took three orders by myself and sent them already to the... You're the owner. I'm doing the most of the job. I was totally appalled. Wow. Then I waited forever for my food. I'm going to start eating my ticket. I know you've been waiting. 
When it finally arrived, it's just a mess. It was a major disappointment. Do you want me to take that? Please, because it is like eating dry cat food. And even though I let Sammy know the major problems with the food, I feel it's raw, it's doughy. He chose not to pass anything on to Amy. What's wrong? Nothing. According to Sammy, his wife had an issue with criticism. I know my wife, she's, she's getting nervous. She's scared of telling her the truth. Do you want to tell her? Come with me, you tell her. I just wanted to know, so she chose okay, the next she one. She will know, yes, yeah, she will know. Right. Anyway, I am 75 minutes in, and so far, I've had an undercooked pizza. Oh, OK, I'm going to tell her you're starving. I'm oh. going to tell her you're starving. OK, she'll move, OK? She'll move. She, I hope oh. so. But hours later, at the start of dinner service, Amy was complaining that she had not received any feedback from what I experienced at lunch. So I decided to tell her the brutal truth. These are store-bought crap frozen ravioli. They're not crap, and they're delicious. And I, the oh, first time I've ever, oh okay. My God. Did you taste it? You didn't taste that one. I can't because you didn't get the feedback. I said they were disgusting. But right from the start, she didn't consider anything I was saying as constructive. I've never had a problem oh with it. Oh, my God. I tried again and again to point out the issues. The bun for the beef burger was soggy as anything. I have never had a problem with that hamburger, ever. But everything was either deflected... That was dry. It's good like that. ...or ignored. There's no point in me saying anything to you because you just say, well, it's good like that. Whatever. I felt so frustrated. At this point, I went into the dining room and hit another wall when I tried to confront Sammy about the tips. Do you think the girls deserve some tips tonight? No, they get hourly. Sir, the tip that you left, the young lady server, the owner takes the tips. No, 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 okay. Don't no, fuck no, no. with me. Yeah, I will fuck with you. Yeah. Who the fuck you think you are? Complete bullshit. That night, once again, there were a number of issues with the food and there were long wait times as well. Are we used to waiting on something? Is yeah. It, what is it that you're waiting on? Pasta. Just yeah. spicy pasta. The so, pasta it's resica? Fine. Yes. Is that coming? Then, towards the end of service, a food runner named Katie asked Amy a question. 4B. No, no, 5B. Are you sure? And Amy lost it. You don't need to question me, Katie. You can go okay. home right now. Katie! Listen to me when I'm speaking to you. Do not walk away from me. You don't work here anymore, OK? Don't start crying. Don't why, cry. why are you no, behaving please, like this? No, no, oh, my no, no, God. Please, come on, come on. Since no, I'm talking, I was running away from you. I wasn't doing anything. You had an attitude for me all night long, Katie. Don't worry, don't worry, please. I quit. No, you're not. I quit. She is quitting. She has an attitude. After a really bizarre dinner service, I tried again to have a meaningful conversation with Amy. It's become evidence that you can't take criticism. But Amy remained in denial. What I do normally is good. Refusing to listen to anything I had to say. Then your freezer is store-bought shit raviolis. The sauce is delicious. The raviolis, we think that they're very good. Even after a frustrating day, I remained committed to helping the restaurant. So the next morning, I came in with a plan to turn Amy's baking company around. Oh, come on. But they weren't there. So I spent the morning talking with disgruntled past employees. In the year and a half I was there, I saw at least 50 people come and go. It's... 50? They were in and out so yeah. fast. Wow. What happens when customers complain about their food? They get told that they're wrong, that, you know, no, we have the best food in the country. You're wrong. When Amy and Sammy finally arrived... You don't look very happy. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Right. I wanted to confront them with the information I had learned. Have you not had a turnover of more than 50 people? 50 staff. Can you prove that to me? She, is... she was wrong. 100 or even more than 100. And after a very tense conversation in which we were going around in circles... What I have a problem with were the comments you were saying to me last night. I'm here to show you what's right, and you can't take that. I realised that Sammy and Amy were not open even in the slightest, to making any changes. All that's happened is we have been attacked. Attacked? Attacked! I mean, I don't know what you this call it. This is a restaurant that is in a crisis with a delusional owner that can't take criticism. So, for the very first time, I did something I never thought I would do. They can't help people. They can't help themselves. And the right thing for me is to get out of here. Good luck. Yeah, of course that's what I wanted. Yeah. Participate in this bullshit. Wow. Since the airing of Amy's Baking Company, people were very anxious to express their views in a variety of ways on the Internet.
One of the things that got a lot of attention was this cartoon made by the Jackson Moto Company. He is my soulmate, and we're in this business together. Fine. And we stand strong. We have to because there's a lot of online bullies and haters and bloggers. They're dirty. They're lazy. I have issues with customers that are online bullies. And they bully me, bully my husband. That's a joke. Online bullies. They're used to eating processed wood chips or used to getting things for free. It's disgusting. But when did this start? This guy came in that started this entire online online bullying. I told him I thought he was a loser, he was a moron. Do you have children? Well, we have three little boys, but they're trapped inside wow. cat bodies. You look disappointed. These are store-bought crap just, frozen ravioli. They're not crap, and they're delicious, and I, the oh, first time I've ever cooked oh it. Did you taste it? You didn't taste that one. This is, you guys, I make excellent food. <laughs> you all think that you can come in here and say these things. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I speak feline. Meow, meow, meow. That cartoon was just one example of the media explosion that occurred after the airing of Amy's Baking Company. But there was a lot more as this 50-seater restaurant went from obscurity to a national phenomenon and became the number one trending story on the internet. So there's this restaurant called Amy's Baking the Company. The owners are nuts. This was the first time in the history of the show he decided this place was beyond hell. Gordon Ramsay even is like, I'm out People of here. just could not believe how this couple treated their and they customers. they going and going with the same stuff over right. and over. Hundreds of people are turning to social media to voice their Sammy anger. Sammy and Amy, they're on That's Facebook crazy. now. Just trashing everybody. It got uglier and uglier for there. There were threats, nasty online These messages. Freaking crazy. This is what you don't yeah. ever do. I'm actually not. A lot of action on social media. Memes and jokes oh and photoshops. Gifts. Worldwide backlash. Unbelievable to see all of it bubble up online. Wow. It was so crazy. The episode of Kitchen Nightmares about Amy's Baking Company was a pretty special one because it was the first time Gordon Ramsay walked away from a restaurant. Wow. Which is something he never does. And it definitely sparked a curiosity. People were incredibly interested in this story. There were thousands of comments directed at Amy and Sammy, basically calling them batshit crazy. Everyone was under the consensus that these people were not particularly normal. The problem was Amy and Sammy started responding to these comments. As the comments started pouring in, Amy and Sammy just kept posting and posting and posting. They just attacked everybody and just posted status after status, just swearing, calling people out on everything, and just continuing their cyberbullying, what they do best, I guess. <laughs> we just sort of kept watching them in a mixture of shock and horror. You just want to tell these people, no, don't, don't do that. That's a bad idea and the story just went viral. People were sharing all different types of content from satirical cartoons. Think that you can come in here and say these things. To YouTube videos. Meow, 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 meow. Clips, GIFs. Just type in Amy's and everything would come up related to Amy's Baking Company. Just pages and pages. My write-up of Amy's Baking Company's Meltdown. In about three days, it had reached three million views, which is the highest traffic post I've ever done at BuzzFeed. It became the 21st century version of a water cooler conversation. Everyone thought it was just the craziest thing. It was like covering a breaking news story, except instead of politics, we were following this little eatery in Arizona. Honestly, I've never seen something like this before. They were just that crazy. After the dust cleared, Amy and Sammy took to their Facebook and said that it was hacked and that all of the statements that came previously weren't them. And it was met with this really hilarious, are you kidding me, collectively from the internet? No, clearly you weren't hacked at all. I saw the way that they treated people and what they said on Facebook is exactly how they acted in real life. There is the phrase, no publicity is bad publicity, but at the same time, if you're not careful, the internet can turn you into a sideshow. And I think that's exactly what happened here. The aftermath of the episode certainly took on a life of its own. I remember when I first walked in to Amy's Baking Company thinking, hmm, why am I here? The dining room is gorgeous. The kitchen is spotless, something I'm definitely not used to on Kitchen Nightmares. But when Amy gave me a tour of her kitchen, things started getting a little strange. Now, this footage has never been seen before. Take a look. So are you the sous chef? 
Yes. yes. You can see. I'll take you through our lines. Um, do we have any uh, male chefs? Do, do no. No? All no. females? Yes. Not only girls. Why, why is that? Yes. Because it's too, it's tiny, too tiny and my wife, she wants only me to be near her. <laughs> she doesn't want men, you know, I don't like to bump into men. I feel we're comfortable working with girls because my kitchen is so tiny. Wow. So we bend over, we bump into I mean, each other. The male chefs, their ego is too big and there's it's too little in my kitchen, so they leave. I show them the door. And they don't have my standards. They can't right. clean like I do. There, It's like they're doing me a favor. This is how we work. I mean, yeah. I work meticulously because my customers okay. deserve it. Wow. We have three little boys, but they're trapped inside kitty cat's bodies. Meow! <laughs> Zeta does it like this. Meow! And sometimes he sticks his tongue out if he wants treats. No! <laughs> Jade, if you, if you ask him a question, you say, Jade, he'll actually respond. Meow! He responds like that. And Leo, he actually talks. Leo will sing to you. Meow, 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 meow. Later, we'll be heading out to Arizona, where our reporter, Ana Garcia, catches up with Sammy and Amy. But first, let me tell you about some more never-before-seen footage. During my lunch at Amy's Baking Company, I kept telling Sammy what was wrong with the food, but he refused to tell Amy. I remember thinking, how strange was that, that he wouldn't relate anything to his wife? But when I came back for dinner service, I learned why Sammy never shares any negative comments with Amy, because she's completely incapable of taking criticism. When was the last time you took criticism from a customer about one of your dishes? Um, the other day I did. What I was it? A, it was a Caesar salad. The lady didn't like the prosciutto in her Caesar salad, but it's on the menu, and if they don't like it, they can have it without it. Simple. I mean, wow. I, I've oh taken criticism. God. Do you know what? Criticism is healthy. Unfortunately, not enough people told you the truth. Oh, God, you're crazy. No, there you go. I so normal I dessert, store-bought frozen ravioli, yet you still don't get it. If I could make everything from scratch, I would. And you just pull the wool over your husband's eyes, but you can't do it to me. Oh my God, you're not even crazy. prepared to listen to anything. That's because you're not giving me any Advice. constructive criticism. Advice. You're just I'm standing here for. talking, just saying things that denial. aren't even making sense. I'm not in denial about anything. I've never had an issue before. Because your husband doesn't tell you. No, because I know. He's scared to. He's not scared of me. No, that man isn't scared of you. He's not scared of anybody. My husband, if there ever is a problem, immediately he'll bring it back and let Christine and Bullshit. I know. And it's very rare that Did it you tell happens. Today? You knew I was coming today. Well, I was trying to. If you were coming to my restaurant today, I'd make sure every fucking play that you finish is in front of me. I was trying to get feedback and no one would give it to me. Why not? I gave your husband you a number of comments. Yeah, lunch but time. I didn't know. Nobody would change. You don't them like with me. knowing. You of don't want I to wanted. change. There is something I want to clear up. They asked me to come and help them. Right now, I want to show you something that has only ever been seen by myself and the producers of the show. It's their submission video. Oh boy, check it out. So this is where all the magic happens. <laughs> Here we have the walker. Oh my God, it's a mess. The biggest problems with this restaurant would be my husband is too nervous in the front of the house. He doesn't really have a customer service background in any way, shape, or form. I'm chicken like no head. You go, I go, I don't know where to start. Sammy needs to be removed from this situation. A lot of times I think the customers will probably not come back because of something that Sammy may have said to them. Like, first reaction is just to kind of yell. Yes, there have been a few occasional times that he has had an incident, and that I myself have had an inf a few incidents with customers. We're not perfect, but when people come in and they're not nice to us, we're not going to be nice back to them. <laughs> On Yelp, horrible things were written about us that were not true. I retaliated and I told him what I thought about him. I told him that he was a loser and he was a moron. He was a tramp and he wasn't welcome in my restaurant and he's not. I have no problem standing up for myself. Are you, can you film him? Do you see him? Can, they, we can... We had to stop because you were talking. That's okay. This is the first kitchen I've ever worked in where we're not really allowed to talk to each other. Stop talking, everyone, stop. Get out, no talking. I'm out here all by myself, screaming, screaming. The smallest thing can happen, it's like the end of the world. And then they just kind of feed off each other. In order for my restaurant to be open, we both have to be here, 100%. This is our baby. Hold on a second, hold on. I'm getting extremely nervous right now because I have so many things going on back here and I can't remember the questions you're asking because as soon as you ask me, I'm losing it. If you don't come in and spend $100, 
at least. It's like, mm, I don't know, James. Spectacular! My food is the best, I'm telling you. Love you. <laughs> He's nice. He's crazy. He's, He's insane. <laughs> no. Coming up. I don't want you to kiss my ass. I want you to just shut up. The madness continues. I'm not afraid of you. Please. You're afraid of the truth, not me. The truth. You'll get a full update on what has happened to Amy's baking company. They're trying to cash in on their notoriety. You'll hear from former employees. Amy and Sammy thought everyone was out to get them. And what recent diners have to say. He just said, you have to go, you have to go, you have to go. Then it's time for an out of control sit down with Sammy and Amy. He has no balls. He's jealous of my balls, yes, motherfucker. This is what he is. But first, some never before seen footage as Chef Ramsay questions Amy about her pizza. And what's the base of the uh, dough? The recipe for my pizza dough? Mm -hmm. It's a secret. Oh, okay, wow. Well. And people love it. I have people tell me it's the best pizza that they've ever had in wow. their life. My husband will tell me, or customers. Well, he's, he, he, he's fucking naughty because my pizza today was undercooked. So it was raw, and I said, will you take that back? He said, I can't talk to her in service. Why is that? Uh, maybe he knew that it would make me nervous if you didn't enjoy well, the pizza. You're a husband and wife? Yeah. Yeah, it's not as if you're sort of manager and assistant manager. OK. The quicker you go back to the kitchen with criticism... Yeah, we I usually just, don't have criticism, that's the that. problem. You don't and, have criticism? Not usually, Why no. can't you go and tell your wife? Because I, I know my pizza, wife. Pizza, fucking wake up, is undercooked. I don't think your pizza was undercooked. I checked it, and I sent pizzas. That's my number one selling pizza. So you did bring people. it back? No, no I didn't ah. find out, and I asked you what was I wrong. You just said you checked it. No, I checked it when I took it out of the oven. Hold on, if you oh. let me. I checked it when I took it out of the oven, just like I do every other pizza. And to me, it was crispy on the bottom. When I cut it, right. it was crunchy. Okay. So to me, it wasn't okay. wrong. So, but yeah, let's draw a line in that. Back. That's your version, because you sure. didn't see it come back. My version right. was the dough was wet, uh -huh. undercooked in the center. OK. OK. And around the outside, there was insufficient garnish, so it was just dry. I showed it to you. Yeah, yeah you did. You and did the idea, course. come on. I did. Yeah, OK, yeah. but I didn't want to tell yeah. it. No, okay. no, no, it no. I, I said, to... touch that. It's not I did touch slightly, it. 30 yeah. seconds. It was it soaking wet. Okay. It was wet. Wet? No, well, the raw. cheese or something? No, 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 no not the cheese, no. How can you attract good staff when you don't give them the tips they deserve? My husband pays those girls $9 or $10 an hour to listening. do nothing, not OK? They don't deserve those tips. If they could work like my oh husband my worked, God. if they could work like my husband works, no, and it didn't require him to run like four me? people, they would get their tips. He's told them, You're run like I run and work like How I work deluded. and you can have your tips. I am deluded. You're right. Oh my there are so many moments at this restaurant, but truthfully, there's only so much you can put into a one-hour show. Here's an unbelievable exchange that I had with Amy over a package of gnocchi. Cindy's gnocchi in here. No refrigeration required. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. There must be a few chemicals in there. Do we sell these in Ocean? I'm sorry? Do we sell these? Yes, those are the gnocchi that we sell. And no refrigeration required. What's in them? Look at the back, it'll tell you. I don't say that they're organic. I never did. What's in there? He said, look on the back, like some fucking smart ass answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's prepared to charge customers money for that. Whatever. And you get upset because they're not kissing I'm your not ass. I'm not upset with you. I wow. don't want you to kiss my yeah. ass. I want you to just shut up and yeah. give me wow. a chance to finish my sentence instead of being wow, rude. Wow, wow, wow. That's, I'm I've not pissed off because you don't bother me to make me pissed off. I have seen it all. Well, we're making everything for order. This is, you know, it's. Not pre-made. We don't have pre-made food. We're trying to make Except everything. Except the raviolis. Order. Yes, the raviolis are pre-made. And the we, frozen egg Yes, they are. It's fresh, of course. We have to freeze it when we drop it in the fryer so the breading doesn't come off. We do it like and that because gnocchi. I do use those gnocchi. Yes. No pithy reply. Yes, I care a lot. Chef MZ, I would like you to understand just something. Yeah, I'm finding it right now. I want It'd be difficult to understand you one little bit. I've got nowhere to go. Every time I say something to you, you just no. say, hey, my customers love it. I'm not going to talk to you right now, because I have to concentrate well, then, on the then line. Concentrate, then. I will. You're the one who just said you want to talk to me. I so did. I wanted to explain to you oh. that I'm not here to see you. You don't even let me speak, so there's no point in talking to you. Try. Just like my husband. Even though my visit to Amy's Baking Company was a complete disaster from day one, I came back on day two with a plan to turn it around. Unfortunately, I never got to implement it because it became clear that it would be a waste of time. I'm sure you're wondering what's happened to the restaurant since I left. Here, with an update, is our reporter, Anna Garcia.
Thanks, Gordon. I'm here in Scottsdale, Arizona, talking to local people to get their perspective on everything that's happened since the show aired. Everything from the social media phenomenon to how it has affected local businesses. And I'm going to try and talk to Amy and Sammy. But first, here's an update on how the restaurant is doing. Good luck. Thank you. After Chef Ramsay left, it was just a dramatic mess. Amy, no! I'm not, I'm not Amy and Sammy you. thought everyone was out to get them. Attitude I've never seen in my life. They fired everyone, told everyone to can do everything on their own. The next day I was called and Amy and Sammy begged for me to come back, so I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Sammy and Amy saw that I had taken a $5 tip from my customer and had a huge fit over it and told me that I'm a thief and get out of his restaurant. And I threw the money at them and I walked out and told them, don't ever talk to me again. I'm done with this place. A lot of my friends have actually gone there just to check it out because now it's like a tourist site. Everybody wants to see if Amy was actually that crazy. We honestly went in with Let's see if the food is really as people say. One of our friends ordered a drink, got it, noticed that there was something floating in the drink. It had three fruit flies in it. We called Sammy over and he got really upset and he said, there are no flies. He never even acknowledged that there was anything wrong. I said to him, we didn't bring flies in our pockets with us. And he just said, you have to go, you have to go, you have to go. We thought they would kind of wanting to be, you know, pleasing everybody and wanting to have the customers and, you know, but they were exactly like we thought they were. They're trying to cash in on their notoriety. If you go to their website, they're selling t-shirts that are printed with lines from the show. It's not a classy move, but becoming a tourist attraction where they basically make fun of themselves, I think is the only way for them to survive. It's definitely turned into a spectacle that if you're in the area, you just have to see what it's all about. She doesn't like to take the criticize. She likes to take the compliment. She can't take criticism. She cannot take criticism. Have you noticed? When she talks, she can't stop because she won't listen. So she'll continue pounding her own voice rather than actually listen to criticism. But when it's a compliment, yeah. oh my god, that's amazing. My dessert's amazing. No. But then when it's criticism, yeah, it's so what I'm asking, why is that? Uh, yeah. Ask her that question. Ask her. I have the same problem for that. She cannot listen to criticism, but she okay, good. she's good. going to listen. Thank you. To me. She's good. going to. Yes. But she's not listening. Yeah. Just blank there. Do you know she's why? She's not listening. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Right. I have right. that problem well, thank for you. Okay. okay. Can you make a change? Make a change. Mm. So far, we've shown you some incredible unseen footage and brought you up to date on what's happened since this episode aired. But now, it's time to hear from the owners themselves. Here is our reporter, Anna Garcia, with Amy and Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Anna Garcia from Kitchen Nightmares. How are you? Kitchen Nightmares? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Can, we, can, can we come in and talk? Yes, you can come Thank in. you yes. so much. Thank it's you. I appreciate it. Yeah. May I introduce myself? Hi, Anna Garcia from Kitchen Nightmares. Very nice to meet Hi. you. We want to catch up with you and Sammy. Do you have a few minutes for us? Uh, no. Now you come out to talk to me. I'd love to talk with you. Now you talk to me and I want money because this time from Kitchen Nightmares, I want money. You, want you guys did make so much money because of us and Gordon Ramsay tried to bury me alive. Who he wants, I will bury him first. I will bury him first and bury your Kitchen Nightmare also because you did it on purpose. You set me up. And this is what you did, to try to bury us alive, alive. And you didn't do yet, and I wouldn't let nobody to do it. Well, will you sit down and talk with us, Sammy, yes, about please. what happened and everything down. that's happened? Let Gordon Ramsay to fuck himself, because he was not fair. He was not fair. How is he not fair, he Sammy? He was not fair, because he shouldn't... It's okay, then, yeah. Because he shouldn't represent us that way. I'm going to go against Fox, against Gordon Ramsay, Kitchen Nightmare. Let me show you something. It's disgusting. So I posted, I took a screen, Sammy. Who is he? He has no balls. He's jealous of my balls, yes, motherfucker. Definitely. This is what he is. We were made to look like the most psychotic, lunatic people in the universe. And after watching Kitchen Nightmares, I see all the crazy. But I don't see any of the good. I know the people that came here were Yelpers because I have proof of it. They were on Yelp talking about it after they were filming and before they were coming here. This is not stuff that I've invented. I'm not delusional. I'm not crazy. Yes, we are passionate. Yes, we are wild. If I came after you, you would probably stand up too. If I came after anybody else, you would defend yourself, wouldn't you? If you have a family, wouldn't you defend it? 
Has it been stressful? Stressful, yes, it's been very stressful. We've had people walk through my doors, come casually over here like this, walk over, look at the display case, keep going like this, and then leave. And then my waitress comes up to me. Now we have waitresses because we had to change our whole procedure because the whole universe thought my husband was stealing the tips. So we tried something new. I took all of the negative things that Gordon Ramsay said and I tried to improve on it. That's why I had him come here. People come here to try to set us up because they think it's funny because they have a hard on for Gordon Ramsay. There was one person, he left on this plate and I have it in my office and I have the surveillance camera proof of it. He puts a giant rubber cockroach on the plate and left it there, left without buying a cake and thought that that was funny. We are dealing with that daily. It's not gonna work here. We stood up to Gordon Ramsay, we're gonna stand up to the world because we don't go down without a fight. We have to show the world and every single business owner out there that you have to stand up. You cannot let anyone shake you down. We have a voice, he has a voice, and it's up to us to stay strong and to show our true product and what we really have to offer here at Amy's Big Company. And that's it. If this business were to be successful, in my opinion, you need to clone me three times. Clone Sammy three times, clone me three times, and I'll be perfect. All the Amy clones would just start like killing off each other. They'd just get so sick of each other. Like one thing another Amy said, like, you can't mix two Amy's. This doesn't go together. In a moment, I'll share with you my final thoughts on Amy's Bacon Company. But first, let's head back to Scottsdale and a reporter, Anna Garcia, who's with Sammy and Amy. How was your business affected by what happened in the episode? We are completely bombarded by the media, by customers, by haters, by trolls. We've become the number one tourist attraction for, for the summer, only it's like Disneyland for the crazies. They stand outside and take pictures just because they want to see us. When they come in, they look at us like they are real and they almost pass out. And then they sit down and they try our food mm -hmm. and they see who we are as people and they say, I can't believe it. It's amazing, your food's incredible. How did this ever happen? What's going on here? Are we being punked? But have you been busy? Because we really didn't find anyone who ever said this place was packed. Well, I'm open for business right now. Look at how, how can I have any normal business when I have this all day long? What happened with Facebook, with the allegations that you had been hacked? Every single post that was written calling people shit and making fun of them for not making money did not come from us. We didn't say those things. Now we are, because now you have lit the fire inside of us. Now when we're calling people little trolls and telling them that they have no balls, yes, that's us. Because okay. I think it takes a very special kind of person. It's called a eunuch to be able to call someone and bully them over the phone or through the internet when you don't know who they are. Nobody make money because those trolls. Because so, Gordon Ramsay told them I'm stealing tips to the people. Can we talk about true. that? Can we talk about yeah. the tips? I was pretty surprised yeah. that the waitresses didn't keep their tips. Yeah. Why, Sammy? Because I give them hourly very high. I don't How give them high? between $8 to $14 an hour. If it's empty like this, they still go with money. If they wait for the tip, they wait like this. Have you changed your policy on the I tips? I did change. I give them tips. So is that something good that came out of the kitchen nightmares? Is that you no, now? No, it's not good because they work with the tip and there is nobody here, then of course they're not going to make money, then they're on way. All of this that's happened, and, you know, have you made any changes to the menu? He can John? keep his menus. Right. Well, his menu can keep it for his own restaurant. What happened to the raviolis? Also, are the raviolis still frozen? Yes, still frozen, yes, yes still frozen. Still yes, still frozen. Yes, still frozen. Yeah, and they're yes, excellent. Yes, they Gordon Ramsay also, during the filming, I asked him, I said, would you let anybody come into your kitchen and give you the kind of attitude that Katie gave, gave me and not fire them? He said, yeah. That to me shows me that he's a pansy. If so, I, I stand oh, up to somebody in my kitchen. Oh, you got criticized for using okay. that word, Amy. The reason I said he was a pansy is because the same reason I call these Yelpers and these people that hide behind the computer screen the Camel Toe Mafia. They are pussies, they are pansies, they have no balls. Because if they had balls, they would come to my face, my husband's face, and tell us exactly all the stuff that the lies, the slanderous stuff that they say online, instead of just hiding behind their computer screen. I have said a lot of offensive things. But when a person is completely under attack, I'm sorry, I would love to be nothing but a lady and control my language and not have a severe case of Tourette's syndrome. But this is what's happened to me because of the pressure. I called that guy a pansy because he was a pale face pansy ass willow. That's exactly what I call him. Yes, I'm going to say things if someone attacks me. I'm not going to stop. How, then I will be a pansy and I'm not a pansy. There was a, a part in the episode where it showed that Sammy tries to shield you from criticism and when Gordon sent back some food. Sammy, you didn't really want to tell Amy. Because it's tell not true. Why. 
because my wife's food is excellent. Everybody loves my wife's food. The reason that he didn't tell me each plate was getting sent back is because he knew that it would, Gordon Ramsay was full of shit. Sammy tells everything to me as I tell everything to Sammy. We share, we don't keep secrets from each other. He protects me, I protect him. People love us because we stand together and we are united. Yes, he and I will fight to the death for each other. No doubt, you come and you try to attack us, I'm going to be like a fierce lion. I'm gonna attack anybody that's coming to try to hurt my husband or my business. It has affected your business. Are you seeing the customers come back? No, Did, it's something, different, different there... people, you know, different people, they, they come, they, they are very happy surprise surprise what Gordon Ramsay say I have enough money to keep my business as long till the stupid people become smart and then they come again to us and they will we are not the ones Gordon Ramsay represent us yeah. we are not at all we are not a villain or gangster or what I am reformed and I, I, I give up long but ago. you did he's say you did say yes. uh, you did say to yeah, Gordon, I showed them. I'm a gangster well, I, mean, I you will did say, say it that. again I will say it again if somebody because I am the one who can go on top of him he cannot go on top of me I can promise you not him not all his people I can promise but you but you did say that Sammy. I did say it and I will say it again if I have to okay I will say it myself I would like people to understand that first and foremost my husband and I we are united and that's the most wonderful thing in my life we are not psychotic lunatic people that will make you wait an hour and a half for your food and then call the police on you if you don't get it we're not going to scream at you and throw you out unless you come to attack us if you do come and attack us we will scream at you and we will throw you out i think like 95 percent of the things that are being said about us we sit and we laugh our butts off about it because it's hysterical do you have a message for gordon ramsay mr ramsay for all the respect that i had for you i ask you now to really put the truth and really give us a chance really give us a chance who a is it to give you a owner. chance because he tried to destroy us well, he, he has control not, of these cameras he doesn't Sammy. give us chance Fuck he has everybody. control over Come these on, cameras chance. they edited us well, i need them to give me a chance well obviously the whole world thinks yeah. that we're psychotic he killed you already the way that they he edited killed us. you already you think he's going to come and say no the food is good i was joking yeah, I think yeah. he should do that if he's No, he won't do that to me. Do you asking too much? He can't. Well, he's like, I he's like he's going to say that and he's going to close his store. That's it. He's finished. I'm he's finished. He, he won't do That's that. It. He won't never say the truth. Of course, he will keep it okay. the truth for himself. Saving restaurants and helping families on Kitchen Nightmares is an incredibly gratifying experience. I look forward to every challenge and I take each mission very seriously. What happened in Scottsdale was actually quite disappointing. My team and I had a fantastic plan to help Amy's Baking Company. Unfortunately, the owners had no interest in hearing it. Good night. Denver, Colorado, known as the Mile High City, is home to almost 2,500 restaurants. Located just seven miles from the city center, is Pantaleon's, opened in 1985 by Pete and his wife, Paulette. Tom. I'm from an island in Greece. When I first got to the US, I was a chef in another place, but I wanted to buy a place of my own because my pizza is the best in the whole world. I'm Paulette. Pete and I on this, and we're married. When we first opened, we did have wonderful reviews. We just got award after award after award. My signature on the pizza is my cross. Back in the 90s, it was busy. But my grandfather thinks he's still in the 90s. I think my pizza is awesome. Pete is stuck in a time war. I've done 200 people, man. Come on, by myself. That's a long time ago. Have a slow lunch. We used to be packed. Now, we have no customers. I cannot pinpoint the reason. I've been telling Pete for years we need to change things, but he doesn't listen. I'm getting some bad feedback on your pizza. Well, what, what are you going to do? My food is not the problem. My table's saying that it's too soggy, too soft on the dough. There's got to be something else. Look at that. There's it's no nasty. It's all grease and crust. Pont Leone's has the worst pizza in Denver. My grandpa's pizza is like a white wall tire. It's mushy. Yeah. It's getting old. That's disgusting. God forbid, if you said anything about his pizza, forget it. He'll be like, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. That's pretty bad. Just shut up. Your veggie pizzas, they're a little soggy. OK, quit, quit winning. I want to change things about the place, but my father shoots down every one of my ideas. It's ridiculous, man. This is your system. Really? Yeah, really. Just shut up. I feel frustrated because I want to help my parents, but there's only so much that I can do to help them.
The restaurant does put a tremendous amount of stress on our family. We are just making ends meet. If it keeps up like this, I could see us shutting down in a year or so. If we don't get this restaurant going, we're going to have to sell our home. We're going to have to find jobs. And at our age, that is not going to be easy. We got to make it work, or we got to get out of it. That's it. This restaurant has been my life for the last 28 years. I put everything in this place that I ever had. If the restaurant fails, it will feel like my life was nothing. Antonioni's. Wow. Denver's best pizza. That is a bold statement. Hello. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you. Hey, Chef. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. Uh, Denver's best pizza. That's a big statement. First name is? Paulette. You are the owner? Co-owner. Co-owner. With? Pete. Where he is? Pete. Oh. There he is. There he is. Hello, Chef. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Where are you Italy from? I'm not Italian. Who oh. that I am? Greek. Oh, Greek? Gotcha now. Who's this? That's my son, I'm Josh. Josh. Josh, how are you, bud? Pleasure. Good to see you. Nice to Good. Um, let's catch up with you and okay. Pete, yeah? Okay. Where should we go? Uh, so we're right here, sir. Okay. Shall we? Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Hope they don't make an ass out of themselves. One thing about Pete that I struggle with is his inability to change. It has absolutely hindered things. Um, so you have the best pizza in Denver. That's I do. A bold statement. Congratulations. When did you receive that? Day 85. So you've had the best pizza in right town on. since 1985. That's incredible. I think I do. Well, actually, I don't think I do. I, I know I do. Where did you train? In New York. Now, there is a city with great pizzas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But mine is better. Uh, but... OK. <laughs> right. OK, great. And you opened in 1985? March 10th of 85, it was Monday, we opened up. You know your dates well for an old boy. An old boy? You know, an old boy is like a charming old man. <laughs> 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 right. How hands-on is this one? Completely. Com completely. Still? Well, seven days a week? Uh, no, we're closed two days. You close two days a week? Uh, Sunday and Monday are closed. Uh, and why are you or... closed on Sunday? Sunday? Because yeah. I want to watch football. <laughs> Are you nuts? Do you have any idea how many pizzas get ordered on a Sunday just in football season? We did open that Sunday in 86. Congratulations. In 86. <laughs> <laughs> so how has that affected the business, closed two days a week, Sunday, Monday? Nobody knows who we're open. I mean, we're closed in the afternoon. The restaurant closes? Seriously? Because he has to have his nap. He has to have his what? Nap. nap. A siesta. Sleep. That's kind of a European thing that, you know, the siesta deal. The restaurant closes because Pete wants a nap? Yeah, like they do in Greece. In England, too. No, no, we don't close no, the afternoon. Don't do that. No, no. Did you do any delivery? Mm, no. Wow. Yes. Plus, there's another problem. The other things, you don't listen to anyone. I mean, you don't listen to me. It's like if he starts doing something one way, you can't get him off of it. She's a princess and controlling. Mm -mm. How old is Josh? 33. And he must be geared up now to take over the business when you take a back seat somewhere. Well, in terms of what's the plan? Is he the head chef now? No. No. He's no. still in. As long as I'm in here, I am. OK, we're talking about pizzas, right? Denver's best pizza. <laughs> what the heck are you laughing about? Well... I'd expect Josh by now, yes. literally five or six years at the helm. Why can't you let go? I don't know. Where do you think you're going to let go? Who knows? For the last two years, two I've years. seen it on a downhill Decline. slide. And now, like a Tuesday night, I might have two tables. Two tables? I've two seen tables. it with no tables. Wow nearly 30 years of business. Have you put money away? No. No. You can't retire? No. We got into trouble. We refinanced our home two or three times. This is crazy. Mm hmm That's what I feel like. Wow. So I'm going to get up to speed uh, with the food. I'm dying to taste that pizza. Uh, I know it's late in the afternoon, but are you, uh, are you going for a nap or are you with us? <laughs>
He's staying. Oh, he's staying. Okay, just he's staying great. Today. Okay, good. I, I didn't know if it was <laughs> oh, nap time. <laughs> Paulette always nags me. She thinks she knows everything, which she doesn't. How they go? She didn't let me show one word. Josh, come around, but let's catch up. Because I've done it for 37 years, I think I know what I'm doing. I didn't realize things were that tough for mom and dad. It's actually gotten to a point where I'm, I'm embarrassed of the place. Right. I didn't. Change is the biggest problem. You're happy with the pizzas? Um, no. Wow. So the bad? Oh, absolutely. It sounds like a very stubborn man. Yeah. I have a lot more ideas. Has he started to pass the reins over or no? No. Seriously? No, no. Absolutely. Why is that? I don't know what's going to make him, if ever. It's always been three more years, three more years. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's been really crazy. Clearly, this family is divided. Wife Paulette and son Josh feel that the restaurant is stuck in the past, while Pete feels there is absolutely nothing wrong with his food. It's time for Chef Ramsay to find out for himself. How are you, darling? I'm good. How so are you? first name is? Celestina. Celestina. That's a beautiful name. And what do you think the problems are with the restaurants? There's a few different problems. Um, when it comes to Pete and Paulette, they butt heads a lot on how things should be run. She wants changes, and Pete wants things his way. Wow. Anyway, let me have a quick look at the menu. Okay. And, um, oh, there's another letter here. Everything is homemade. We cook for you just like Mama did. That's nice to know. Um, done this order. OK. Um, I want to go for a sausage pizza, please. OK. A toasted meatball hero. And the pizza own, because own. And then uh, I'll go for the linguine of clam as well. All righty. Thank you, my darling. No problem. My god. Look at the dining room. I mean, it's got as much atmosphere in here as it is in a hospital room. I mean, it is sad. Here's this, Pete. Okie dokie. OK. I'm not nervous for Chef Ramsay to taste my food. Let's do this. Well, let's put it this way. He's going to go to heaven today. How is it? The meatball sandwich? The meatballs, I've had that at cat food. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. I want to know where the fuck you were eating cat food. Long story. Holy shit. Paulette. Yes. What is that behind your head? That's a hologram. It's freaking me out. You know what? A lot of people are afraid of that. That's a clown. Oh, gosh. How long has that been up there? Oh, probably about 15 years. So whose idea was that? That's spooky. That's mine. <laughs> oh, my God. How's the cars on? Gosh. Really? No, it's done. Get it out. No, it's not. I just checked it. It's Don't done. Worry. It's done. I this just fucking cool. checked it like two seconds ago. It's gonna burn in bottom. Get it out. That's pretty bad. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Shut up, all of you. Perfect. Let's go. Chef's calzone. Yeehaw. OK, Jeez. here's Pete's calzone. Jesus. Do I look like one of the Denver Broncos that I can eat this thing? <laughs> it looks huge. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Doing the portions, I mean, they're hideous. How much filling does he put in there? Jesus. Raw onion. Paulette. Yes. Jesus. How much is he putting in there? Look at all that pepperoni. I mean, the slices are still jammed together. Yeah. I've never seen a calzone so full. I mean, the filling's cold. That is hideous. I don't like that either. I've been wanting to take that calzone and fling it like a frisbee for about 20 years. Pete, I got some critiques for you. Uh, are, you are you kidding me? Listen really? to me, damn it. The complaint is it's so full, it's cold. Shut up. It's going to be a wake up call for Pete. See, perfect. I put my pizza up against anybody in the country. No, in Denver or Colorado, in the country. That's how confident I am about my pizza. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. Here's your sausage pizza. Holy crap. Isn't that ridiculous? It's like the pizza that ate Denver. Yeah. Shit. OK. I'll let you take that in. Thank you. Man. Oh, my god. 
Dripping in grease. And the oil, the grease coming out of that. The oil in there, look at the grease. That's gross. He said it's too greasy, just exactly what I, I feel. Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear it. Honestly, the best pizza in Denver. I mean, does that look like the best pizza? Trust me, I can tell you, it doesn't taste good. So, let's do it. The dough is so thick. Why? I mean, it's just like a loaf of bread. It's like a baguette in there. Mm-hmm. That's our thin crust. That's the thin crust? Mm hmm Stop. <laughs> wow. Seriously? Yeah, a lot of people get upset with me for that when they ask for the thin crust, and I bring them the thin crust. Wow. Did you touch that? The dough is raw. Oh, wow, it is. Raw pastry. My god, what a mess. Darling, I'm done. Alrighty. Uh, dreadful. Okay, I'll let him know. Messy. That is definitely not the best pizza in Denver. Let's get that right. Hey, Pete, he wanted me to show you the god. dough. What's wrong with that pizza? He said the pizza see. was doughy on the inside and greasy. It is doughy, look. Really? I agree with him, too. Are you kidding me? I don't know what the chef is talking about, and a lot of people love it. I do, I eat it. Why don't you guys throw this away? Leave it, I'm gonna eat it. Are you kidding me? What? That's disgusting. I'm hungry. I think Chef Ramsey's problem is that he hasn't tasted a classic pizza before. Damn, it's good. He's tasted all this fancy stuff, you know. Okay, here we go, oh, the Jesus. meatball hero. The meatball hero. Wow, and how do you, uh, how would you? Uh, <laughs> um, oh. I guess you approach that however you feel. Wow, thank you, my darling. No problem. Just visually, there's nothing hero looking about that. God. Mm. That's not anywhere near a hero sandwich. That looks more like a sloppy joe. It's bad. It's all soggy there. It's like eating a patch of soaking wet grass after a cow shat all over it. You're all done with that. That is You're definitely not a hero. Yeah, oh, disgusting. Okay. There's a typo error on the menu. It's not hero, it's zero. I'll let him know. Please. Do you want to hear chef's response? Yes. Yes, he said yeah. it's a zero, not a hero. I don't believe this. I have plenty of people that they love my meatball. I am very proud of my meatballs, and for Chef Ramsey to say it was a zero, it's very insulting. Chef Ramsey has started sampling the menu at Pantaleon's. And while Pete claims his food is the best in Denver, Chef Ramsey has discovered, holy crap, <laughs> it's anything but, with gigantic portions, greasy pizza, and tasteless dishes. It's not hero, it's zero. Josh, what are you doing, Josh? Let the, let the garlic roast. Roast you? Really? I'm gonna whack you over the head with this damn thing. Let it get really hot before you put them in. Is this the first time I've done this? I don't agree at all with serving anything out of a can. It's embarrassing. I tell you, taste this shit. Here. Here's the linguine. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. No problem. Mm. Damn. I mean, that is absolutely dreadful. The seasoning, bland, like a plate of hospital food. I mean, it's just so unappetizing. Look at that. Excess water. I mean, that is disgusting. Man. It looks like Pete's pissed in my pasta. That's bad. Jesus Christ. Oh, you can see what he was doing right now. Ugh. Are you all done with that? Yeah. Thank you, Diane. No problem. And that's like one of the worst urine samples you could ever give. <laughs> oh, gross. Thank you. Horrible. Joshua? What did he say? He was very, very not happy with that. There were a lot of comments. It's ridiculous. Right now, the only person in here that's happier is that stupid fucking clown on the wall. 
That was bad. You gotta take it, man. You gotta have to take it. There's a reason this place isn't doing good right now. Let's come around. Okay. 37 years since I came in this country, I've been working in the kitchens, and I know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know what to say. My first time in Denver, and quite possibly one of the worst experiences I've ever had. First of all, the clams were dreadful. I disagree with you. Seriously? Yes. Have you any idea how bad that tasted? It's how he's made it for years and years. Were they canned? Yeah, yeah. What? Why are you lying to me? I'm not lying. You mentioned on the menu that everything's fresh and homemade like Mama did. It's always fresh made. I don't think the ingredients are quite as, as fresh anymore. And then the big disaster, my sausage pizza. It was dripping in grease. The dough was so thick, parts of it were undercooked. I disagree with you about my dough. I think I have a great dough. Really? Yes, sir. This was a thin crust. Yes, sir. I mean, you need to go and get your eyes tested, but that was not a thin crust. I am disagreeing with you. I have... We are not in pizza. 1985, Pete. Do you think that your father is serving the best pizza in Denver? Not anymore. And do you think your husband is selling the best pizza in Denver? No, I don't. You know, there's a huge mistake on the awning. Because I think you just cooked me the worst pizza in Denver. I disagree with you. Can I have two minutes on my own? Would you mind? Not at all. Pete is extremely set in his ways, but he's got to listen to somebody or we're not going to make it. You know what? He needs this. No, he's right on every damn he thing he's right. saying. Pete, you're in denial. That's the problem. You cannot just continue going through this system of failure that you're just, you're not getting anywhere. You're just going further and further backwards. And it's not making anybody happy. It's not giving your wife and your, your family a bit of freedom. It's just feeding your ego. I don't know what to say. You're sinking. <laughs> you're taking everybody else on the boat with you. No, I'm not. The pizza is not good. I'm still going to disagree with you. I really will. I'm sorry, but I am. I need some fresh air. OK, sir. Fuck me. <sighs> Man. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Stop on. I've been doing this for 37 years. Chef Ramsey was a kid when I first started cooking. I should know a little bit more than he does. He's right on everything he said. Every fucking thing he said is right. The pizza even. I've been telling you, everything that he told you, I've been saying the same shit, though. I said, what? pipe the crust down. It's too fucking much. Mm. Oh, fuck. Does it take him to tell you that, to actually listen, or what? It's ridiculous. The food is shit. It really is. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? It's fucking frustrating. I did the best I could over the years. It's not good enough anymore. out for a minute. I don't know. You know what? I've realized that, that it was like this for many, many years. And I've been nagging and screaming and carrying on. This place either changes or you lock the fucking doors. Oh, and... I, I'm done. If you don't change and do what he says, you'll never see me in this place again. And I don't give two flying you know what's what happens to everything I own. You'll be here by yourself. Everybody calm yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, calm down, right? right? I don't think that I need to change. I know what I'm doing. Joshua and Paulette do not understand about running this place. I got more experience than they both of them put together. So, there you have it.
After seeing how stubborn Pete was about his food, the pizza is not good. I'm still going to disagree with you. And his claim that he has the best pizza in the city, Chef Ramsay knew he had to do something to finally get through to him. We're going to be tasting three margarita pizzas. So he headed downtown. It was kind of a little mushy. Too much cheese. To do a little organized research. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Now armed with the findings from the taste test, Calimera, Chef. Chef Ramsay returns to Pantaleon's to confront Pete with the results. One thing that is very clear, I think Pete's view have overestimated how good your pizza is. I don't think you've ever compared it to what's happening in Denver right now. So after my disappointing lunch yesterday, I did a little research in Denver. How about all of you stand up and come and stand over here, please? Yep. And here it comes. Pete, it's now time to really find out how good your pizzas are. Three pizzas in front of me. A, B, C. A is from one of the best restaurants in town. B is your pizzas. And C is a store-bought local frozen pizza. Time to put your pizza to the test. That's right, your pizza's B. Which was your favorite? I liked A. I'd say A. I like B, A, because it was thin. And your least favorite? B, B, B. Why B? Soggy on the crust. Way too much cheese. It overwhelmed everything else. It felt my heart stop. It was too much. Too, too much, much on the crust. The crust was soggy. It was just not very good. OK, Pete, here's the results in a nutshell. 75% of our taste testers preferred Pizza A from the top local Italian restaurant. In second place, with 15% of the votes, was a store-bought frozen pizza. And in third and last position was yours, with 10% only of the votes. Yours was the least favorite. You're actually beaten by a store-bought fucking frozen pizza. Get the message? Wow. Yeah, wow. How does that make you feel, Paulette? Bad, but I'm not surprised because I've been saying the same thing. Too much cheese, too much crust, too much everything. I've talked and talked and talked about the same things, and I don't see it changing. It's really bad. It needs to change. I think that um, in his mind, it's always more is better. I do put a lot of ingredients in. Yeah, you I do. do? I do. Your pizzas are dated. I am very surprised at the results of the video. I never thought in my wildest dreams that the people of Denver will pick a frozen pizza over my pizza. You have got to understand, you are miles away from serving Denver's best pizza. That 1991 review behind me is no longer valid. We're in a different era. You've taken the praise of a local critic, it's gone to your head, and you have locked in what they said was good, and you've kept doing it for nearly 30 fucking years. Can you three just give me two minutes and get some fresh air outside? Because this is important. I've got one very important question for you. Am I willing to change? That's the one. No. You realize like how embarrassing it's been the last three years to work for other people while well, we have a restaurant? That's all because of this stuff. This bullshit. I've been in here waiting tables and my knees are shot. I'm not gonna do it anymore and I'm serious with you. I mean I may even leave. I am out of here. Uh, I'm actually to to right ahead to Texas because I'm I'm done. I've pulled with you, I've been your partner. You haven't always been mine, but I have been yours. And I want you now to step up, because I don't want to lose my home and the few little things that I have. I don't want you to. Pete, are you committed? I am. You are? I am. 100%? Yes, sir. I am ready to change. I am. Can you? Yes. Well, I hope so. Pete is a creature of habit, and 
It's going to be hard for him to change and break habits. I want to see it. The combination of Chef Ramsay's taste test. Yours was the least favorite. You're actually beaten by a store-bought fucking frozen pizza. And ultimatums from his family. I may even leave. Has resulted in a commitment from Pete. I am ready to change. To accept change. But before any physical changes are made to the restaurant or to the food, Chef Ramsay wants to bridge the gap between a father and a son. Here we are with one, two, three generations working in this business. How important is that for you? Very. Very. So let me tell you something about a unique Italian restaurant. It's in New York. It's called Rayo's. They have been serving quality food since 1896. Wow. Wow. And every single night, it is packed. You cannot get in there. Josh, how does that sound? That's my dream. Do you know what? I'd love to take you to Rayo's. Unfortunately, it's a little far from here. But in 2006, they opened up in Vegas. And I can take you both to Vegas. Oh! Are you shaving me, Chef? That is exactly <laughs> what all three of us are doing tonight. Rayo's is at Caesars, and my good friends at Caesars have sent their private plane. <laughs> now, wheels up in half an hour. What the we fuck are... is going on, Chef? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> I want to take you for dinner. <laughs> It's unbelievable. I can't even think right now. Come on, this is going to be a blast. Are you kidding? I'm ready to go to Vegas with Chef Ramsay and my son, of course. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bye. See ya. <laughs> nice is that to get out of that restaurant? How are you it's feeling? Yeah, great to be out of that restaurant. Excellent. Tonight is about you two. Yeah. Catch up with each other and spend a bit of quality time together. Yeah. Here's to you both. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, cheers. Father and son. How are you, sir? Chef Courtney, how are you, brother? Good to see you. Good to Welcome see you, back. too. Welcome Thank to you so much for having us. This is Pete. I'm Pete. Thank you, Craig Pellegrino. Welcome to Rayo's. Thank you. Come on, let's go into our dining room. Let's go. Four generations in your family? It's, I'm the fourth generation. Can you give a little insight in terms of how, how, how this has happened? I grew up under the tutelage of my father, and I had to learn how to really become open-minded and willing to communicate mm -hmm. in a constructive way. Mm -hmm. And if you have that strong relationship and care for one another, mm -hmm. that will only reflect in your business. And who's really going to pick up on that are your guests. If there was a strong key message to Josh stepping up to the plate, what would it be? Truthfully, the most important thing is the relationship you have with your dad. I agree with Frank that the most important relationship is with my father, and I hope my father can see with working together how successful we can become. Are you ready to try some stunning food? Yes. We are. I am so thankful to Chef Ramsay to bring me over here and open my eyes and my mind. I can see why they've been in business for over 100 years. Absolutely. They know what they're doing. Let's take a lesson from it. I'm going to remember this night for the rest of my life. One night together in Vegas has clearly brought Josh and Pete together again. And while they have been away, Chef Ramsay gave the green light to his team to overhaul the decor of this outdated restaurant. So, are you all ready to see the next chapter, Pantaleo? Yes, yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. OK, great. Remove your blindfolds. Oh, oh. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, so my God. Wow, this is gorgeous. It is amazing. Gone is that depressing, tacky look of the 80s. We have completely transformed this gorgeous little room. It's a restaurant of today. It's got that fresh, contemporary feel. Wow. Is it, you OK? Yeah. Look. Is it amazing? It is amazing. 
we tore down that dated panelling, which was hideous. We added fresh coats of paint, black and white, to give that really nice contemporary vibe. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> We've had these new cool signs to create that nice, fun, modern, hip vibe. Gone of those 25-year-old reviews and that scary clown <laughs> everybody hated. <laughs> we have pictures of Italy. Amen. Stunning family pictures on the wall. Oh, I, I love this. It lets everybody know that this is a family-run restaurant. This is just oh, family. It's my very favorite. Thank you. Our new restaurant looks amazing. To have a hip New York vibe here in Denver is really cool. And it's new, but the history's still here. Come here, you man. <laughs> hey. You okay? No. I'm ecstatic about my new restaurant. I'm overwhelmed. Beautiful. Is this awesome or what? This is sweet. It's the best day in history of Pantaleones, hands down. Please, take a menu and pass them along. To go along with the drastic changes that have been made to the interior... I want you all to dive in. Chef Ramsay has reduced the menu and the portion sizes. Look at that Caesar, how cool. Yeah. Oh, it's just an easy. He's designed a fun contemporary menu that has a modern take on Italian classics. I think Denver is going to love this place. It's awesome. I just want a quick word with all four of you outside. Let's go. It has been a day of surprises for the family, and Chef Ramsay has one more. Just stay there two seconds, OK? OK. That is sure to increase profits. OK. <laughs> OK, we're committed. We're committed. That is your new delivery van, donated by my friends at 1-800-CHARITY-CARS. It's going to let everybody know, not just in the neighborhood, but in the city, that you have the best pizza and you deliver. Deliver. <laughs> now, huh? How gorgeous is that? It's awesome. Isn't it? I have a beautiful restaurant now. I have a beautiful <laughs> menu. And I have a delivery. I'm out of here. With everyone anxious to reveal the completely new restaurant, if they cut the same, they cook the same. Right. Okay. Chef Ramsay gives some last-minute pointers to Pete and Josh. One delicious portion of lasagna and one delicious portion of eggplant palm. This is awesome. Good evening. Welcome to Pantaleone's. How are you? Good. How are you? They did a lot of changes. Which is I want to, we love the pictures over oh, there. That's wonderful. so great. Pete, when the order comes on, nice loud there. Tick it up. Josh, you follow sync. For tonight, Chef Ramsay has divided up the work for the father and son team. You ready? Yes, ready. Josh will be working the saute line. All right, let's do this. While Pete, in addition to making the pizzas, will be expediting. Here's our new menu. I'm going to have the wild mushroom pizza. We will find you, please. Wonderful. All right, ladies. Did I give you enough time to decide? I'm going to get the bruschetta. The bruschetta. Thank you, Ryan. You're very welcome, ladies. Order on, please, Pete. Let's go. Eggplant parm, melisana. Just Come on, Josh. Get him ready and fire. Shut up. Let me do it. I got my thing. Stop. What else is on that picket? Don't just start throwing pizzas in now. You don't think I know what I'm doing, do you? Hey, Pete, how long for 16? What 16? 16 is already gone. Josh, is this done or what? I don't know. I don't know what, what happened. Although dinner service has just begun, Pete is already overwhelmed with orders. Where's the 16, damn it? Bubba, you're not talking to me, man, and we're missing times here. And is not communicating effectively with Josh. I don't even know where the fuck we are. Listen, I want some harmony in here a little bit, yeah? The father and son team are confusing each other, and almost no food has left the kitchen. Where's this going? I need a table number on this. OK, lasagna, the linguine a la vodka, right? Where's the linguine alla vodka? I don't have that. Where's the linguine alla vodka? Uh, not even started. Really? What the hell are you guys doing? Put the fucking thing out. Whatever, man. Stop! You, you, come here. Urgently, now. I, I, I fucking, I, I want to give up. We are now just going so far backwards. Have we come this far now to give up? No. Table 16, this hasn't gone. When a ticket's gone, it gets fucking spiked. Yes, yeah, Chef. Let's regroup, 
And then we focus on 16. Okay. okay. Let's go. In. Chef is absolutely right. I have to take a breath and start doing a ticket at a time. Table 16. Lasagna, linguine, vodka, Josh. Coming up right now. Nice. Take your time. Let's go next. Then I need a neck plate parmesan and small meat lovers. OK. Get your systems going. Come on, you can do it. It appears as though Chef Ramsay's pep talk has done the trick. Both Pete and Josh are clearly more focused. There was 16. They are now able to control the orders and get delicious quality food out in a more organized manner. I love that mushroom pizza. This is so good. Yeah. This is fantastic. Oh, it's delicious. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Table three, Capellini eggplant parmesan. Eggplant parm, Capellini heart. All right, that's my boy. You got that small Bianca? And then we're done. Yeah. Small Bianca and we're done. I never thought I'd see Pete change. I think he's more open to listening and working with his family. I'm really proud of him, very much so. High five. We will pass tonight. Woo! At 61, I can still do it, baby. Tonight, we had a rocky time in the kitchen. But we dealt with it. You now have a plan. Pick up the reins and run with it. All right, look after yourself. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, dig in there. My darling. I love you, Chef. Thank you so much. Chef Ramsey really inspired us. Look after you boys. I will. And hopefully Pete and Josh can do even better and take it to the next level. I've got to go. Come on, take care. Chef Ramsey is a remarkable, remarkable man. I am grateful and thankful to him for coming here and opening my eyes. Take care of you. I love you, you old Brit. In all my years of doing Kitchen Nightmares, I don't think I've ever met a more lovable character than Pete. Unfortunately, when I first arrived, his heart may have been in the right place, but his head certainly wasn't. And for almost 30 years, the guy was doing the same thing every day, despite his business going downhill but I am truly honored to have helped this wonderful, appreciative man to finally see the light. For Pete's sake, I sincerely hope that the Pantiones continues to be successful for generations to come. In the weeks that followed, Pete remained committed to the standards set by Chef Ramsay. Josh, you got linguine a la vodka and the spaghetti meatball coming up? Yes, yes I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. And the new menu has already received positive reviews from not only customers inside the restaurant, That's good. Yeah. but outside as well. Here you go. Keep the change. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have a nice day. Arvada, Colorado. 15 minutes from Denver is home to the old neighborhood restaurant. Owners Alexa and Randy met when they were servers during their college years. They fulfilled a dream when they bought the eatery in 1988. Almost ready? Ready as ever. My wife and I have owned the restaurant for 25 years, and we're here all the time together. Thank you, Randy. Thank you very much. Just trying to do my job. The business has been declining for probably about 13 years. What else is coming back? You have all the tickets that you're going to have, I believe. Just go. I don't need to hear. Go, please, off the line. But the last three months have been really, really hard. And we don't know really why. How are we all doing this evening? I don't know what you put in this steak, but it's even a terrible aftertaste. I don't think there is a menu in the country that is even close to ours. Hey, this just doesn't look at it. So it's uh, Tim Poor, but why would you put horse bread in We have things like a Sedona chicken. We have teriyaki steak. We have beef wontons. We also have trout parmesan burritos, Cajun catfish, duck schnitzel. It's really weird. That's still can go this. And it's not only the menu that's out of control, it's the decor. Welcome to Grandma's house. It's definitely about 40 years out of date. My father doesn't throw anything away. He's definitely the epitome of a hoarder. Everything in here is decrepit. Wallpaper is falling off the wall. Half of the chairs are broken. So it's like sometimes when people sit down, they just go down. <laughs> You lost the wheel over there? Yeah. yeah Seriously, line. look. I think Randy and Alexa are just kind of stuck in their old ways. I don't think that they're willing 
to really change a whole lot of things. They haven't done much in the past 30 years. My wife and I are in debt to the tune of about $320,000. If the stress doesn't subside somewhere, something drastic is going to give. Us, our relationship, this restaurant, we can't keep going like this. Wow, old neighborhood restaurant. Even the sign looks old. Oh, Jesus. What is that thing? Are you kidding me? Strange. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? Randy. Randy Gordon, good to see you. Chef, nice to meet you. Likewise, sad to be here. Uh, what is this? What is this? This thing here. Fiona? Who is, who is this? Fiona. It has a name? She has a name, yes. Come on, seriously? It's not it, it's a she. Wow. She changes outfits regularly. Careful, she's slippery. And no disrespect, but you walk into a restaurant, you don't expect to see a, a, a mannequin there. Uh, it's kind of my wife's thing. Oh. And these? Well, you know, somebody oh. stole her hand. Oh. She's delicate. So this is not a joke. This is something your wife looks after, her mannequin. She does. OK. We have pictures of people with Fiona. Uh, okay, right. Uh, well, why don't you get your dear wife, and then we have a catch up together, right? I'll put this thing back. Sure. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ready? <laughs> Man, this is really weird. My God. Chef broke Fiona. He wants you to come out here. Oh, no. You are kidding me. I'm Alexa. Alexa, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Um, let's sit down at the bar, shall we? Absolutely. Should we catch up? Um, I thought Randy was winding me up because he said that that doll in the window is, uh, is it like a friend of yours. Yeah, she has had a couple of rides in the convertible when I've tried to take her home and put her at peace in the garage, and I had to go run an errand first, so. Stop. OK. Uh, you've had this place for how long? 25 years that we've 25 owned years. it. We both worked here as servers when we were college students at the University ah, of Colorado. Nice. My uh, oldest one, Wiley, works here part time. OK, great. So in a nutshell, um, describe the food for me. Traditional American. OK. How often does it change, the menu? It hasn't in a very Once a long year. time. When was you the last too. time you changed the lunch menu? The lunch menu, several years. When does the menu change? Every three months, every six months? No, more like eight months to a year. Eight months to a year? Once a year. Once a year. And when was the last big change? Two and a half years ago. Fucking hell, Randy. Have you any idea how bad this sounds? OK, so in 33 years, the menu has changed not many times, but it has. OK, uh, right, more importantly, um, what's wrong with the place? It's been a real struggle to even stay open, but I don't think we'd survive 33 years, especially without too much change, unless the food was good. Good. Glad to hear it. Um, I'm dying to eat. Where should I sit? Wherever you'd like. What's all that stuff up there? Antiques. Antiques. Wow. Randy's hoarding. Well, he's got some serious decor issues. The antique stuff and everything, it needs to come down. It looks like a pile of junk. Right, Lexa, I'm going to eat. Let me have a good look at the menu, and I'll, okay. I'll look forward to catching up with you later. Thank you both. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? First name is? Kristen. Kristen, good to see you. I'll be your server today. OK, great. Um, wow, everything's so dated. It is. I mean, has anything changed in there? No, it's. I don't think anything has changed since they took over. Wow. I walked in, there was a dreadful smell, all musty, stinky. It's musty. And where's that smell coming? Is it these antiques? Um, I don't know if it's the antiques, if it's the old upholstery. If you sit in one of these booths, um, it smells like someone that hasn't showered in a while. Serious? Yeah, I'm serious. What, like someone's... Go ahead and smell it. Someone's like, like, like B.O.? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. When I have to set the tables, I 
smell it all the time. So. They stink. It, they, it smells really bad. Uh, have they been reupholstered? No, I think this is the original upholstery from 1980. That's a lot of farts in these chairs. <laughs> Man. And what's with the wheels on the chairs? Um, because it's carpet, I think they think it's convenient, because... <laughs> Man. Um, is this the menu? That is the lunch menu, yeah. Look at the state of it. And I had to pick you out the best one. That's the best one? Yeah, that's the best one I could find. Wow. And this is yeah. the... This is the dinner menu. The dinner menu. Yep. Wow. Brion crout. French onion soup. Wow. New Orleans barbecue shrimp, Cajun catfish, mushroom tempura, beef wontons. We've gone from French to New Orleans to Asian. Wow. Italian. Fucking flies. There's fucking flies everywhere. Where are they coming from? Fucking hell. That fly won't leave you alone. Fucking. <laughs> Man. Anyway. Shall I order? Okay. Uh, let's go for the New Orleans barbecue shrimp. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the Yucatan sea scallops. Okay. And is there a salmon special today? The salmon special today is baked with a dill Dijon cream sauce. Okay, yeah, let's go for that as well. Okay, darling, I think we're done for now. We'll turn those into Alexa. Thank you. Order's in. We bring it on. How are you? My name is Wiley. Wiley, good say, oh, the sun. The sun, yes. Okay, great. How long have you been here? I've been here about 10 years. What do you think the big problem in the restaurant is? I think the big problem is the, the decor. Have you ever tried to take some of this junk down? Oh, I'm afraid to. I'm afraid of what my father might really? do if I tried to take something down. Why? Yeah. If he's kept it up here for 30 years. Yeah, but is it worth anything? I doubt it. It's like a garage sale that you're staring at, eating it. Oh, yeah. Well, good to meet you, bud. Definitely. Thank you. It's great to meet you. Likewise, good to see you, too. You, too. Here's your barbecue shrimp. All right. My dishes are excellent, and if Chef Ramsay doesn't like any of my cooking, it will piss me off. Oh, this barbecue is Barbecue shrimp. Barbecue shrimp. Mm-hmm. It's a very strange-looking barbecue sauce. It's a cream barbecue cream sauce. Cake barbecue cream, cream sauce. sauce. <laughs> Look at the color of that. Is that is the, is the shrimp barbecue, or is it the sauce that's barbecued? It's the barbecue sauce. Oh, I see. And why would you sort of coat the lemon in cream? It's a collateral damage. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> Fuck me. I wouldn't feed that to the fucking mannequin. Even she'd manage to throw that up. That sauce is hideous. And the shrimp was tough as old booze. And the flies are landing on me as opposed to on the shrimp. The look on your face doesn't look good. No. Got a really weird texture. When a fly bypasses the fucking dish, you know it's bad. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I'm, I'm done with that. Thank okay. you, honey. Thanks, honey. Jeez. So what did he say about those? Um, it has a weird texture to the sauce. He doesn't know why it would be called barbecue. People have been coming here for 33 years. The food cannot be that bad. Oh. This is your salmon. Wow. This is the special. Yes. Uh -huh. The dill Dijon cream sauce. The dill Dijon cream sauce. Somebody likes mm -hmm. cream in the kitchen. Who is that? Where do all these cream sauces come from? I don't know who originally started them, but Alexa cooks with a lot of cream. Wow. Everything's made with heavy cream. Ay, ay, ay. We have, oh, there's the salmon under there. It's a uh, cream sauce. Mm hmm. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Salmon tastes frozen. Doesn't taste fresh at all. It's dry, very dry. Wow. I mean, it's very old school. Cream on cream on cream. Well, thank you, my darling. You're um, very welcome. Yeah, that wasn't pleasant. All right, I'll let yeah. them know. That was hideous. He says the salmon tastes dry. What? Come on, really? He said cream again. And... Yeah, well, everything he ordered has cream, but. I know. Wow, and, I would think people um... would know what they're ordering before they did it, but that's whatever. I think everything is delicious. I wouldn't serve it if I didn't think it was delicious. There goes another one. God, that wallpaper. It's terrible. What a mess. Randy, when was the last time we had a coat of paint or I changed the wallpaper? When was the last time? Last wallpaper, five years ago. This, this wallpaper is five years ago? No, not this one. 
Can I show you something? Sure. Please. What's all this here for? And this here? Disrepair. And you pull that table out and you just see all that mark in there across the wall like that. I mean, this place looks and feels like it's been closed for the last 10 years. It's the look that the restaurant has. Well, hopefully, before the week is finished, I'll get a straight answer. Here is your Yucatan scallops. Oh, here it sir. is. Here he is, Wiley. There you go, Chef. The man. And where are the scallops? Inside in the dish. that oh. boat. Inside Underneath the, in the peppers and, yes. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, it is absolutely gross. Wow. Dread. No seasoning whatsoever. And the scallops are just hideous. I've got to find out why this is called Yucatan, because I don't want to insult those people in Mexico. Randy. Um, I'd like to find out why it's called the Yucatan sea scallop dish. What, what's the relation? The spice with the chipotle peppers. So why is it called Yucatan? Because it's got spice in it. Just the name. You, you just pick the name out of the hat? It bears no relevance to the actual... If it does or doesn't, I'm not actually 100% sure. Are you kidding me? OK. I'm done with that, thank you. That was gross. Scallops are overdone and the sauce is bland. That's the way I've been cooking them. They look beautiful. They were cooked perfectly. I know they were. Getting irritated. I like it. It's an absolute matter of taste. This is just stupid. That's the way we cook. That's, that's, it wasn't an off day. <laughs> After sampling some unusual and disgusting food... It's got a really weird texture. ...while sitting in a musty, bug-filled dining room... Flies everywhere. Where are they coming from? Chef Ramsay wants to have a little chat with head chef and owner Alexa and her kitchen staff. I'm going to get straight to the point. I'm seriously concerned. Um, the New Orleans barbecued shrimp. I've never known a barbecue cream sauce anywhere. Yucatan sea scallops, no seasoning. The scallops were meeky, bland, and actually whiter than the actual cream sauce. Do you hear, taste anything you're cooking? I didn't see anything seasoned. I'm sorry, I have a lot of pride in it. I cooked everything there. And I really, you know, a lot of people enjoy the things that we cook. Right. I'm not asking about your pride. The question I asked was, does anyone taste yes. as they cook? So all my food, I didn't What's taste your... your food. You didn't taste my food? No, but I cook that food all the time. I don't know. Oh, so it's just automatic. Push the button, and we're cooking that. So you don't think anything needs seasoning? I thought I was making good food. I don't know why. The food is dated. The decor is hideous. And you sit customers in front of a fucking wall with dilapidated wallpaper, peeling off. You better take a good look at yourself and maybe dust yourself down. Shake it off. A fucking freak in the corner there. Man. Stop. Let's go get ready for dinner. Word has spread that Chef Ramsay is in town. Hello. And the restaurant that is normally not very busy... Right this way. ...is booked. For you, sir. For the uh, chicken cordelline. OK. Tonight, Chef Ramsay will continue to examine the dysfunctional workings of this restaurant. Uh, geez, what's all this shit here for? Hello, Chef. Does, people, uh, do, does anyone actually sit down here? They do, yes. They do, yeah? And when you, uh, when they sit on this, do you not think this looks drab? I don't have a better one. You don't have a better one? How about nothing? What is that? Wow. Merry Christmas. What is this? I mean, honestly. When was this cleaned? Not for a long time, sir. You are in charge of front of the house, right? I am. Oh, my God. There you go. That's your card. The Joker. How fitting is that? How old is this chair? 
20 years. 20 years? 20 years. What kind of message does it send when you have this in the middle of the dining room? I mean, that does look like it's gone past its sell-by date, right? Yes. When was the last time it was cleaned? I would say a couple years ago. Oh, my God. Have you seen down there? Yes. And that's acceptable for you? That's not clean, sir, no. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Oh, no, what is that? Looks like a comb. Looks like a comb. Oh, come on, Randy. Do you think this is funny in front of the customers? Not at all. The crumbs and the shit down there. You're not putting it back there, are you? No, I'll take it out there. Get it to fuck out of here. I'll wash my fucking hands. I wasn't totally flabbergasted. The trash fell out of somebody's pocket. Somebody didn't see it was there. You know, I don't feel that bad about that. Well, covered in dust. It's like rat droppings everywhere. God. Oh. This is shocking. You keep your dirty shoes under the bonquette. They're not mine. Did the customer die? Look at his holes in the sole. Dirty, crusty shoes. Oh, I'm gonna wash my hands again. Man. Okay, onion rings. Do we fix those or are they already out? What's that? It's from the steam table. It's like a river running through here. God, look at the state of this stove. How old is that stove? 33 years old. Wow, I mean, I know the restaurant's cool, the old neighborhood, but like, the kitchen's an old, dilapidated neighborhood, yeah? What is that? Is that your. Wow. You are kidding me. He sticks it in the prime rib and he sticks it back in there. What's that spray? Hand coating so it doesn't stick. A canned coating? Yes. Wow. My mother's definitely lost her high standards over the last 15, 20 years. Here you go, Brandy. I know she cares for this place, but the passion and the fire that I've seen in her before is no longer there. OK, filet, filet, lamb chops. God damn it, I probably burned them. Son of a bitch. What is this in here? This is the office. Wow. How can anyone work in this mess? Jerry, it doesn't make sense. What the hell? What? Why is all this junk? Old equipment. But what's it here for? Parts once in a while. Parts? So what parts do you take from a 1950s ice machine? Legs. Legs? And what's this? Oh, uh, it's a microwave. Does it work? Uh, no. So what can you take from that, then? I don't know. Wow, look at the mess. It's like you're hoarding stuff. Chef Ramsay must think I'm a lunatic for having that stuff sitting back there. But I don't really think that I'm a hoarder. It's just hard for me to throw things away. What's that noise coming from? Something doesn't sound right in there. Oh, Christ almighty. Next to cleaning equipment, how long has that been there? I don't know. It was not in there yesterday. So it died early hours this morning. That dry? Can we come out of there? That, that died a lot longer than 24 hours ago. Matt, take over from Alexa for one minute, please. I got it. Have you seen that here? I know. He has a problem with throwing shit away, clearly. And are you OK with this, though? No. You're not? No, it needs to go. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to wow. get him slowly to get rid of it and to change his ways. But he doesn't listen. It's a problem. Okay, it's a big issue. You're, you're enabling a hoarder. You're right. It is a problem. It's a hoarder. I agree. And that as an office in there? It's a, a, it's a travesty. Absolutely. Horrendous. I just got to wash my hands. That's all I've done for the last 20 minutes is wash my fucking hands. While it is clear to Chef Ramsay that Randy is a hoarder, What's wrong with that, Kristen? The baked potato is foaming because there's so much butter on it with the sour cream. Gross. It's also becoming evident that customers are as disappointed with their food as he was earlier today at lunch. The split top came back. He says it was tough. That's ridiculous. I know. He didn't like the potato cake either. Ah! Now he decides to see what is lurking in the walk-in fridge. What is that? My God, that stinks. That's gone off. Your chicken 
and cooked meat. I am not impressed. They have broken every cardinal rule. It's barely an hour into dinner service at the old neighborhood. The restaurant is already full of unhappy customers. The baked potato is foaming because there's so much butter on it with the sour cream. Gross. And Chef Ramsay has not only made some shocking discoveries in the dining room. Oh, my God. But back in the kitchen, he has made some frightening discoveries as well. What is that? My God, that stinks. That's gone off. My God, that's disgusting. Oh, that is off as well. Salmon. And look, some dirty fuck has picked all the bones out and just left them on the side. What a way to run a fridge. That stinks. So the hoarding isn't just washing machines and microwaves, it's old food. Oh, shit. Look at the state of this. Dirty, dirty fuckers. Oh, wonderful. We survived it? Nope. What in the fuck is this? Mud pie on top of scallops. Man, this fridge is littered with shit. This is a horror show. Randy, can you just get me legs, please, for two minutes? She's extremely busy yeah, right now. Well, I'm, I'm extremely busy. I understand. Yeah. I'll get her. Uh, Wiley, can you stay with me two seconds? Yes. Lex, Chef what? has to have you for a minute right now. OK. When was the last time this walk-in fridge was cleaned? Uh, Monday. Monday. Can you just step over here two yeah. seconds? This is the dessert start preparation. It's got blood. It's disgusting. And these? Lamb chops. And what's this sat in? What is that? Come on. That water. Is. Yeah, water. Dirty water, yeah. Dirty water, Absolutely. you're right. And this here? What is that? Fudge from the mud pie. Fudge from the mud pie yeah. that's sat on top of a leg of lamb that's dripping with blood. You with me? The place is littered with shit everywhere you turn. And for me, it was bad enough to see the crap in the dining room. I didn't expect that walking to be festering the way it is. Go and have a look in there now. Both you walk in there. Mold, crap. And that was cleaned last week. It was not cleaned last week. And this here, can you see that up there? I can see that. Let's get out of it. Seriously? Just smell that. Look at the color of it and the congealed blood. And this, that's blood from the lamp. I've never, ever seen a practice this bad. And then some dirty fucker takes bones from the salmon and dumps them on the side. I did it. You did this. I was pulling them out. Yep, I did. And you put them back on there. I and you set done them that. there, and I didn't oh, put them away. God. Just touch the temperature of that. Just touch that. The big shock for me, hold the bone, is sat with this. You have raw chicken and cooked fucking meat. There's a theme here. This place is littered with junk. The chairs are caked in shit. And the refrigeration walk-in is in disarray. I stepped one foot into your kitchen, and there was a fucking hole in the wall where the meat thermometer gets taken out and stuck inside. There's a freezer there that's not even up to the tenth of a fridge, let alone a freezer. And you've got cooked meat, raw meat, and fucking desserts glazed in half-cooked Olega lamb blood. This is criminal. You have cross-contaminated every ounce of ingredients in this kitchen. And you, 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 you see that? Who is hoarding all this shit? We serve that shit. You use that shit. Why don't you get in there and stop any other fucking entree leaving and shut it fucking down? After witnessing one of the worst kitchens he has ever seen. Oh my god. This is a horror show. And stop any other fucking entree leaving yes. and shut it down. Chef Ramsay knows he has to put an end to the madness. No more entrees. I'm sorry? Take their food away. Why? Because we're not serving anymore. We're about as dirty as a kitchen could be, and it's absolutely 
Disgusting. We will not be serving any more food this evening. Oh. I'm extremely sorry. That's not good. I mean, this is so fucked up. It's so ridiculous. The kitchen's infested. The office is a mess. And on your chairs that you tell me got cleaned years ago, a comb, a candy cane, I mean, old Kleenex used, people wiping the nose, sticking it down the side. You can't even get clarity in there because you're so festering in fucking crap everywhere. Both of you should be shamed. What did you say to me today? That I take pride in what I do. Where? I don't know. I am not proud right now. We got overwhelmed, and it's a shithole. It's a shithole, and it's a mess. And maybe we should just close it down and lose everything we have. Because that's probably what we're going to do. How can I help two individuals that don't even care about what they're doing? We do care. We care tremendously. So why didn't you do anything before I got here? We did. I can't tell you how many hours we cleaned. You cleaned before I got here? I threw out my clothes on Monday. I was so encased with grease. How long? How many hours? How many days? Five. Shit! What the fuck? We just need to stop. I love you. Sorry, it's going to get better. I never thought my restaurant would be shut down. Can I have a quick word, please? Absolutely. Both of you, outside. It's the worst moment of my life, undoubtedly. For the first time in a long time, I'm not actually too sure what to do. Right now, I want to get out of here. Please Good. don't. We could really use your help. The mistakes are so basic. We perhaps should not even be in the business. That's what I'm scared about. I think we can do this. We desperately need your help. You told me in there that you cleaned for five days before I got here. Didn't do any good. How do I know that you really get it and you really will commit to getting this place turned around? I can do whatever Begging you show me. you to me, stay and help us, do it. please. I'll do whatever you want. We're not going to let you down. Now it's your chance to prove it to yourselves and me. Show me. OK, we Thank will. You. We will. Nick, throw the shit away. It was the most mortifying thing I've ever lived through. And I have no excuses. It's my fault if something isn't right here. This is my restaurant. I have a lot of pride in it. I was shown too many things that I did not want to see. The problem is, I'm the guy who's supposed to see it. Okay. We're not good at what we do. We're not even remotely good at what we do. We'll get better. A lot okay. better. I spent 24 years here. I don't want to close this place down filthy and dirty and not operating in a coffin. I don't want it to be a coffin. I want it to exist. I love you. I love you too. After one of the worst days that Chef Ramsay has ever experienced on Kitchen Nightmares, yeah, what a difference. he is pleased with the overnight cleaning done in the kitchen. Now it looks and smells like a proper kitchen. Good. But he has decided to take matters literally into his own hands in the dining room. OK, Lexi, how are you feeling? Very nervous. When I first came to the restaurant, I was overwhelmed with the clutter. Randy, your inability to get rid of junk sent a message to everyone that cleaning out was not necessary. And that has to end today. Come with me, please. Let's go. <gasps> oh, my gosh. That was your restaurant. That's a lot of trash. Today, it's a groundbreaking day, Randy, because you are going to get rid of this shit. My husband has a hard time letting go of things, and it's easier to just store them and think about getting rid of them later, but that later time never came. 
You ready to do this? I want to keep the accordion. And Dr. Wiley's scalp treatment. That's got Wiley's name on it. What? Randy, whether you like it or not, right now, we're moving forward. I brought in this truck, either store or destroy. The majority of this stuff, you know damn well, is junk. Let's go. All right. Excellent. Follow on. Pick something for destruction. Everybody join in. Randy, no? I love it. Let's go. I've had that stuff for 30 years, and some stuff in there looked pretty good. Didn't really want to part with it. Randy, come around, Randy. Where's the button? I want you to do it. Which one? I'm throwing it away. I'm not going to get a dime for it. Oh, the tuba. Oh, oh the tuba. <laughs> oh. Yes, victory. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> It's probably the greatest feeling in the entire world, having Randy actually throw things away. Let's go, guys. Oh, Nick, the microwave again. <laughs> One, two, three. And honestly, I think he enjoyed it. I really think he did. Should I save the legs, Jeff? You cannot save the legs. I think he turned a corner. Right, there's one more valuable piece. Oh, yes, piece. there is. Fiona, too? No, Chef. I know you guys are close. We're not that close. Are you sure now? I'm sure. I'm 150% sure. It's time. Go where you belong. Oh, everybody wave goodbye to Fiona. Oh. oh, she broke it a million pieces. Maybe you have changed. I think so. I didn't think there was going to be any light at the end of the tunnel. But in the end, I feel like the world's off my shoulders with all that stuff being crushed in the truck. I thought he was going to dive in the truck after <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll be working on something in the kitchen I want to show you right now. Follow me, please. Let's go. So first of all, you'll notice how decluttered the kitchen is. <gasps> I've never, ever overhauled a kitchen to this extent. $65,000 worth of equipment. I don't know how you ever lasted a week working in this kitchen with such dreadful equipment. Wow. There's knobs. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than knobs. I made a very urgent call to our friends at Cull Equip, and they came through last minute with brand new kitchen equipment. Take a look at this stunning range. A stunning, rapid six ring gas burner from Thermatech. It's just amazing. Two full-size ovens. Oh, I just want to cook something. Yeah. Now, extreme right-hand side is the Broaster Pressure Fryer. It's not just a fryer. Broaster chicken comes out great, and it is a unique, fast, healthy way of cooking. The whole system seals in the tenderness, and the flavor is retained. Wow, oh, that's too cool. We also replaced that dreadful old fryer with a brand new Imperial jewel basket fryer. Look, you can see through the grease. <laughs> it's clean. You have a brand new prep area now that's chilled. Everything's working. It's all in one piece. It's all in one piece. <laughs> Put your hands in there. Feel that. That's what you call yeah. a refrigeration unit. It's the most amazing equipment I've ever seen. It's all so new and compact and clean. The river neighborhood is gone. <laughs> it's absolutely the most incredible day of my life right now. She's going to cry again. No, I'm trying not to. <laughs> it's OK. Those are good tears. You can let those out. It's beautiful. It's inspiring. I can't believe you I haven't, can't wait. You haven't had anything new in this kitchen for how long? 33 years. <laughs> 33 years. That's way too long, let me tell you. Thank you That's so way much. too long. It's beautiful. With a clear indication that Randy and Alexa have seen the error of their ways, Chef Ramsay continues to push forward with his massive transformation, including a new sign. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Chef. Please take off your blindfolds. Oh! Wow. Awesome. Great. So cool. There's something that was completely dated was that hideous sign. Now, are you ready for more change? Yes. Yes. Come on in to your new restaurant. Oh, my God. So good. Wow. How beautiful oh is this? Oh, my God. Let's just start off with the booze first. Reupholstered. 
with a stain resistance, stunning material. Does anybody notice the wheels have gone and the new chairs are here? I'm really glad they got rid of all the nasty chairs. I think it's going to be a great, fresh start for us, one we really needed. Please come on down. Gone is that antiquated POS system, and we have replaced it with a state-of-the-art, brand-new, unique POS given to us by Dynaware. It's fabulous. It's incredible. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Old Neighborhood's menu was cluttered, much like the restaurant. Take a menu, please. So Chef Ramsay not only revamped the food, but also cut down the menu size dramatically, from 95 items to 20 stunning dishes. Right, visually, keeping with the decor, modern, classic, fresh, and fun. I want you to jump in and start eating. Oh, I'm digging in. So much better than what we had. So delicious. The menu just went from four pages down to one, and the new food is amazing. It's not going back to four pages. That's so good. Now that this landmark restaurant has gone through massive changes in all areas. Welcome to the new old neighborhood. The doors open for the grand reopening. How are we doing this evening? And with a new system in place. OK, we are ready. An energized Randy and Alexa work to get orders out to the diners. OK, one cheese dip. Get it started. Three poutines. One right away by itself, singled out. Guys, why am I coming down here making mac and cheese? I can't do everything. Only 30 minutes into service, Chef Ramsay realizes that although Alexa complains about the staff doing little. Watch out. Give it to him. Matt can play this up. She's doing almost no delegating. Alexa? Yes. Come around 30 seconds. I want to show you something very okay. important. You're yeah. cooking and plating everything. Yep. There's three guys down. Okay. By the side, got to use them a little bit. OK, All you're right. in charge. All right, I got okay, it. You're not the line Absolutely. cook. Absolutely, I do. You're the chef. No, right. Come on. You can do it. Absolutely. You got to help me right here. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's plate some of these things up. There you go. Spread the load. Yeah. Here we go. Mashed potatoes need the green beans. Let's put the uh, ketchup on it. Good. Nice and loud so they can hear you. Salt and pepper and the macaroni and cheese over here, please. Good. Keep it going, Lexi. With Chef Ramsay's advice still ringing in her ears, off we go. Alexa quickly finds her groove. Grab the fried chicken out. And now is running the kitchen, even impressing Chef Ramsay. Well done. Keep it going, yes. And the relaunch is a success. Cheese dip. Oh. It's so good. It's perfect. It really is. It's a it lot of flavor. The tartar sauce is It's like a completely new restaurant. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> well done. That's what I want to say to you all. This restaurant is back. It's beautiful. It has a great menu. And overall, you should be proud of yourselves. Don't underestimate that. And Alexa, for the first time in a long time, you were not only the voice, but you held the reins in that kitchen. I kept it together, and I couldn't have gotten here without the help that I've gotten. Thanks very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Take care. OK. And get the Thanks the for everything. Cleaning that kitchen, OK? <laughs> They'll burn less. <laughs> Thanks, Good night, Jeff. Darling. Good job. Thank you. Well done. In the last 25 years, this restaurant went from being a town landmark to a filthy disaster. And I was seriously worried that these two owners would never change. Randy started to impress me when he let go of the past, but tonight, Alexa really stepped up and showed not only can she cook, but she can run a kitchen. And I don't think we've ever made a restaurant transformation as big as this one. Now, this may be called the old neighborhood, but trust me, it's a new restaurant back on the road to success. <sighs> Who is a mannequin as a friend? Rest in peace, Fiona. Wow. <laughs> The new old neighborhood may help you. After Chef Ramsay left, business at the old neighborhood immediately went on the rise. I want to see fish and chips, first plate. Alexa has embraced <laughs> the new menu and has done a great job managing the kitchen as well. One rack worth goes down, we need another whole rack worth in there. And we're happy to report she's also done a great job managing Randy, who no longer brings any of his junk into the restaurant. Queens, New York is one of the most culturally diverse communities in America. It is here where you'll find Katialo, a Greek restaurant opened in 2000 by husband and wife owners Manny and Christina. I was next door having a haircut. They told me the place is for sale. I know about Greek food. I thought it was easy to run it, so I decided to buy it. 
Katiala, good evening. Many was crazy to buy this restaurant. The pastiche is here and the fried calamari is here. I never thought, not even in my wildest nightmares. Good night, ladies. That I would be stuck here for 13 years. In the good times when my kids were here. Do we have takeout? We do have takeout. We were making money, we were happy, everything was working fine. Table one, take this, give me this. After my kids left the uh, business, me and my wife, we started fighting. Christina, you just took it and you think you, you gave the order? And it gets worse and worse and worse. Are you serious? Next time, don't pick up orders, Christina. I believe that it is men's fault that the place is falling apart. Come on, come on. Who, who, who cares? Eh? The customers, they're not coming back because they're tired to listen to the same bullshit every day. You don't do anything. Only talk, talk, talk. Oh, I like this, man. She doesn't have a schedule. Christina has to take a step back. Many doesn't discuss anything uh, with me. She's pushing me out of work with her nagging and with her attitude. I'm not cheap. I'm not stingy. She is stingy. Or he calls my name, it's always something negative. Christina! Christina! I'm talking to you! Because I'm popular, she feels jealous. Mr. Wonderful, he gets away with everything. I think I'm good for this business. And Christina, she brings me down. Many believes that he's God, that he makes no mistakes. He's perfect. And he does get away with murder. Christina is exaggerating a lot. We're not ready Okay, yet. I got you. I no. heard you 30 times. When your parents are yelling at each other. Christina! Yes! The grill calamari, please. Come on, come on. And there's customers everywhere. No, it's I cannot famous. do everything. There's nothing over here. Don't okay. look at it. It's embarrassing for me to see that. All right, all right, calm all right. down, calm down. I throw my hands up in the air and I say, that's it. I'm out. I can't do this. You're yelling again. Who? Everyone. We came to a point that uh, this restaurant drove us so crazy that Christina went for a divorce paper. I'm tired, you know, fighting over the same, over and over and over. I'm getting out. I can't deal with this. This is the end. I'm not thinking about a divorce right now because my priority is how to fix this restaurant. Chef Ramsey, I think, is like uh, God's uh, gift. It's like an angel. Maybe it's the only person that he's going to put my husband in his place. Love Greek food. Hello. Oh, how are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. My first name is? My name is Manny. Manny, good to see you. Welcome to Catiano. Thank you, Madonna. I'm very happy to meet you. And first name is? Christina. Christina. And you are the head chef, and you're the owner? Yes. We, we are both, both the owners. Are you both the owners? We are husband and wife. Let's catch up first, shall we? The restaurant, which is uh, failing, I say that's Christina's fault. Take a seat, please. If you ask Christina, I'm sure she's going to tell you something different. How long have you been married? 35 years. 35 years? Long time with I, one man. Yeah, long with time one woman, man. too. <laughs> <laughs> How did we find ourselves here? Whose idea was this? Uh, one day he came home and he said, well, I'm going to become partner in a restaurant. Well, I said, what is going on? Two doors next from my door, it was a, a, a beauty salon. salon. So I was having a haircut, and uh, that's how I came here. I talked to the men that I knew. You're having a haircut? Yes. Next door? Yes. And throughout this haircut, you decide to buy the restaurant two doors down? Yes. Just like that? Yeah. Just like Were that. Were you running a restaurant before? No. No. You've been open how long? 14 years. 14, 14 years. So he comes back, honey, I've just had a haircut. I bought myself a restaurant. What did you say? I said that he's crazy. Because 14 years ago, you didn't want it? No, I no. didn't want the business because I had no idea how to okay. run a restaurant. And did you know that your wife didn't want it? Yes. You did? But yes. you still went ahead and did it anyhow? Yes. They didn't like the idea. My wife and my kids. I told him, do you know anything about the restaurant? No. And I came here, and since then, I'm stuck. Stuck? Has it been that bad? I felt all these years I have been feeling, you know, like a prison. I have no life of mine. No, that's not true. He, she's exaggerating. I'll tell you what happened. We were uh, very, very successful. Our kids, 
they were making this business very successful, yes. The kids worked in this business? Yes. So they're still involved? Only my daughter, My daughter yes. comes uh, every Saturday as a waitress. And um, tell me when it started disappearing. It started Are like, you, you know, three, four years. Mm. But actually, the last year is very bad. And this for many different reasons, I think. The fights between us. The fights? Yeah, we had what a lot of fights. How long have you two been at each other's throats? Three years ago. We started yeah. having fights every day, every day. What did you find, man? Many comes here, he didn't really work, you know, he didn't have a schedule. He was coming anytime he wanted, so I had to be here for hours, seven days. No, I was here. He but, wasn't uh, here, you know, long hours, like me, never. Who's in charge? She's in charge. And yes. I don't like that. I do everything, but he's, he's the boss. He doesn't care. That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I never cut Please. corners. Let I, me finish, I, I Let never me finish. keep anything secret. Let everything me finish, is open. Christina. Every day I tell him, listen, here it is. Christina. You want to take over? Be my guest. Christina, this can I talk? I, Let me finish. You talk to me and you point, you know, your finger and you do all this stuff Just in talk. front of my customers. He comes in front and he will woo, woo, woo. He gives, you know, instructions to, to me. So what, and what I you, try, I try to avoid him because I don't now? like to make a sale, you know, all the time in front of what you know, are you the trying to say now? You're trying to say that I'm not good for this. I can go out, and this is it. I'm telling you the truth. You can't handle the truth. That's what it is. How about if I leave and you stay and I don't have any problem? What do you mean, how about? I don't want to be in charge. I'm I want, I'm I want to you. work and I want to, to yeah, reach the point. Yeah, but you have to change. Listening to you both for the last five minutes, I've got no idea who's right, who's wrong, but how do you survive this? I don't know. Does this go on at home? Well, if you have problems here, you think you're not going to take it at home? What's this done to your relationship? What, I mean... It has destroyed. There is no relationship. A lawyer called me and he says, yeah, Christina is here. She's uh, filing for a divorce. So you got divorced? No, 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 we're not. We never... So you didn't sign the, the document? Did you, you sign it? Did you sign it? No. This is crazy. What a mess. Yeah, big mess. It is a mess. It's a big mess. I always no, sleep in I'm different sure. beds sometimes. You have different bedrooms? Of home. course, why not? Yeah, how long have you lived there? Almost 20 years. Is it all paid off? We're selling this house to save this business and to save ourselves from uh, bankruptcies. What? You're yes. selling? We sold it already. You sold the house? You sold the house to put money into the business? It was Which... his idea. I love the house. So I built this, my house, the same way that Jeez. I built this place here. <laughs> Since we came here, I'm nowhere. I have no life. You know, this place destroyed our family. After discovering that Manny and Christina's marriage is on the verge of divorce, Chef Ramsay wants to quickly get a taste of the menu and get a handle on the quality of the food that is being served at Catiallo. Hello. How are Welcome you? Welcome to Catiallo. Nice to see you. And, this uh, is the drinks. The drinks. And this is the menu. And what's your name? Irene. How long have you been here? I'm here since 2000. Oh, wow. So you've been here since... Long time. Wow. What is wrong with the place? Well, the two bosses, if you have two bosses, they have different opinion and but two things. But who's right? Because they don't even sound like husband and wife. You try to do things the way one say, then the other one say different things, and you don't do it. One of them screaming why you do it, because she say or he say, and it's getting worse and worse every day, I think. Wow. Um, shall I order? Of so, course. OK, let's start with the uh, pasticcio. What else? Oh, the uh, Greek-style pork. A Lucanico. The classic one. OK. And then a gyro platter as well, please. And I think, uh, I think that is it. Thank you, though. Look at this place. God, it's depressing. The colours in here are dreadful. Ugh, 
horrible. One was teaching one gyro plate with lemon potatoes. Gyro sandwich, please. Yes, it's coming right now. Oh, the gyro. This is the gyro with the lemon potatoes. Is it fresh? That's coming frozen there, gyro. Wow. They don't make it here. Wow. That gyro is terrible. I mean, why would you serve frozen gyro here? That's the style that he make it here. Always. That's not the way to cook it. Does anyone ever complain about this? Yes. Do you honestly think that is good? I don't know what to say. Wow. This is embarrassing. If there's one thing that you should nail, a gyro, that's the hallmark of any good Greek restaurant. Mano. Yes. This one, he tried this, doesn't like it. Who said that? Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ramsey. Ramsey. Wow, that was a bad start. Can I look on your appetizer, please? Okay, put it in a nice plate. You gotta make it nice. This is for Chef Ramsey. Thank you. Okay. Oh. This is the traditional Lucanico, the Greek sausage. This sausage. Look at that. Are they, is that deep fried? They fry it and they saute with their wine. Bland. When you fry sausage like that, the flavor's gone. It looks like the remainder of a dog chew. That is a mess. Poo, it just smells of fryer. Where's the white wine and garlic? Too much grease. I mean, that's just grease. There's more grease in this plate than there is in the Greek Isles. Uh, I'm so sorry, I don't know. Just taste that, please. Does that remind you of Greece? Uh, only I taste garlic and grease. This area of Queens is called flushing. Right now, I'd like to flush these right down the toilet. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of garlic there, huh? <coughs> oh, Jesus. <coughs> Yeah. <coughs> Shit. <coughs> Take some water, darling. You okay, Irene? I'm okay. I'm okay. <coughs> Emmanuel, the Locanico was too greasy. Doesn't have any wine sauce on the bottom. It was just plain greasy, so he can't eat it. I don't think it's greasy. It's one of the best Locanico that uh, we have in this neighborhood. I don't know why he doesn't like it. You put a 30 seconds? Bro, let's make it good this time. Irini, can we get this stuff uh, to chef? OK, this is the pasticcio. Thank you, Dai. Wow, this is dreadful. It's like a bland pile of worms. It's bland. I mean, that is depressing. When something starts steaming that hot like that in the center, it confirms it's been microwaved. And as for that concoction, oh my god. Looks like the intestines of a cow. That is a mess. Popular? Yeah. That means no. Wow. Are we done? I'm so sorry, yes. Do we have anything else coming? No, do you want to look for something else? The bathroom, that's what I'd like to look for. Sorry. Μάνο. Yes. Όλα τα γυρίζουν πίσω. Τι να κάνω, να τα βγάζουμε όλα. Έλα ρε, Ειρήνη. Έλα ρε, Ειρήνη. Come on. Τι, what's, what's wrong with it? Who was shouting you like that? Κύριε Μισε. Okay. Please. Irene. Irene. She asked me about the table and I say, I don't know. Irene. Okay. Πάω καταλάβω γιατί τα έχει μαζί μου. I'm extremely upset with this man because he should check every dish before it goes out. And especially today that we have Chef Ramsey here. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I lost the words. Everything was greasy. I can't see any freshness here. Did you actually cook my lunch? Did you do anything? I did your gyro, I did. The frozen gyro. That gyro is processed. It tasted just bland, just, just, just horrible. 
Greek sausage. No white wine, no red wine, no shallot, no gun, nothing. Just a greasy mess. You nearly choked on it, Irene. It was that greasy. It was put in the fryer? Yes. Whose idea was that? This is an old recipe. It's been like this for years. I have a very good Lucanico. The best. If you can't be fucking honest with yourself, then I'm not here to bullshit you. You ask me. If you ask somebody else, they might give you a different rate. If I mean... Well, you're the fucking owner. Christina, is this the way it's always been? No. When we started, we didn't uh, cook it, you know, this way. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's, it is what ago. it is now, and it's no, I want to hear this. It started a year ago. Yeah. I don't know why they changed the recipe. That That's actually... how we always do it. No. I'm deeply concerned of the lack of respect and love in your marriage. But one thing you've confirmed across this lunch, that there's no love in your food. I'm embarrassed. Fucking hell. I'm pissed off, I'm angry. The food is not the problem. Oh, I'm not done, I As Manny and Christina are quick to point the finger at each other for the failure of the restaurant. Evelyn, thank you so much for coming to meet me. Appreciate it. How are you? Chef Ramsay decides to get some clarity from their daughter, Evelyn, who works part-time at Katiala. Wow. I mean, first of all, when you think how peaceful and tranquil this setting is, it's the opposite end of the spectrum of what I've just left. Have you witnessed that recently? Are you kidding? I'm the referee. I'm the one that's like, all right, everyone in their corner, calm down. Yeah. How long has it been like this? For too long. You can have multiple owners in a business, but if there isn't one voice, you're not going to get anywhere. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. When my dad sees you and you say, what are you doing? You're not supposed to do it that way. At the end of the day, what's someone yeah. to think? So you do your own thing. Yeah. Have you seen your father change over the years? I have. I think the pressure has gotten to the both of them. Mm -hmm. The only problem is he tends to be the first one to check out. Just go. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. But, you know, they're both not perfect, and definitely no. my, my mom's made some mistakes as well. Ready? <sighs> she doesn't like to maybe appease a customer who's upset. And my dad, she doesn't trust him. Maybe it's, it's easier to point a finger than to look in the mirror. This is the most sensible conversation I've had since I've been in Queens. How close are they to divorcing? You know, they've been so close. As of recent, it's, you know, I can't do it anymore. But I do believe it's a lot. It, it takes a toll on, on me because no one wants to see their family that way, especially their parents. But then, ugh. You know, I don't want them to work 15 hours a day, seven days a week for crying out loud. You deserve more out of life. And they've given so much. I wish I had an easy fix. I wish I could fix it for them, but... And they just need, they need somebody to bring them back to life. They need to just open up their eyes again and just learn to communicate. I, I feel for you. Thank you for being honest. OK, hang in there, will you? Tonight, I'm going to see you in the restaurant. I'll be on service. I'll be everywhere, watching everything. Thank you. <sighs> the shish kebab? The shish kebab. And for you? I'll have the pasticcio. Deluxe pasticcio, gyro, plara, fry, calamari, keftedaki, halum. So, how does the line work? Who operates the grill? The grill, I operate the grill. What are you actually cooking? Anything that comes, charcoal, chicken kebab, shish kebab, gyro. OK, great. Manny, why are you cut them in the knife? You don't know if they're cooked yet? I want to make sure. I don't want to have people complaining. So you slice them in half, they're just going to go dry. But after 14 years, you think you know how to cook a fucking chicken cube. The chicken is dry. The chicken is ready tonight. Shall yes. we cook? What happened? They don't like it? It's too dry. What is that? Where is this coming from? This is for the special. For the special? Yeah, it's all yeah. hot. It's for No, I know, but where, it's all hot. Where is it coming from? Downstairs. 
So you have a team of chefs downstairs as well? No, only for women. Put in the mug. Only for that's, women? Yeah, that's all what you do. Hello? 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 Wow. Christina, there's a lady downstairs that heats this stuff up. Yeah, she puts this in the microwave. What is that? With so much food coming from downstairs, Hello? Chef Ramsay knows he needs to take a closer look at this unusual operation. Oh, so there's the lift there. OK. Shit. What was that clean last? Seriously? What's that? Well, look at that. There's another one. Why are they keeping this? They're going to kill somebody. That's raw meat, cooked meat. What in the fuck? Oh, my God. They're going to be responsible for poisoning the whole of fucking Queens. Uh, these are all rotten. Mr. Oh, what is going on here? I don't know what the fuck is going on. Have you got two seconds? What I saw at lunchtime, I knew we had problems. But I'm more concerned, not just about the shit that's going on upstairs, both you and Evelyn, come here. Let me show you very quickly how much you've checked out. How often are you in this fridge? Every day. Every day. What is that? This is the gyro we had earlier. Take it. Yeah, put it on there. What's that? This is chicken. So you've got cooked gyro cooling down, and you've got cooked meat sat next to raw chicken. In a different tray, sir. In a different tray. And on top of cover a uh, basket of uh, chicken. You cannot store cooked meat anywhere near raw meat. Rule number one. Just smell that. Just smell that. And smell that. Fucking smell it. Yes, I smell it. Yeah, go on, what's it smell of? Can you tell me what that smells of? Because he's in denial. It That's, smells like shit. That is disgusting. Have you any idea how long a jar where, needs to sit? What did you find this? Where the fuck do you think I found this? If it's old, we should have just thrown it out. There's no reason to keep have it. Have you any idea how many years that needs to be in? All this these fucking jars. Eight years. All these jars and my children's life were stored at the back of the fridge. Just. This has been eight oh. years of it. Oh. That is disgusting. Give me one more excuse, and I'm going to flip my fucking lid. This place right now is a fucking hellhole. And when you talk about jars of fake caviar in a fridge for nearly eight years, that's just an inkling to how dysfunctional this place is. Because if you're operating it this badly, I can help you in two minutes. I can give you the best advice you'll ever get. Lock the fucking door and close it down. Two hours into dinner service, Chef Ramsay has made some shocking. These are all rotten. Disgusting. Just smell that. Oh. And dangerous discoveries. That is disgusting. And he offers the owners a word of advice. Lock the fucking door and close it down. This is my uh, responsibility. Well, whose responsibility is it? The people that we have here, and I'm talking for years, you pay cheap workers, they do a cheap job. This is what they do. I think the point is what you're this missing. This is what they do. This is the workers we have. Yeah, but someone has to come in and check it. I don't know about these things, Evelyn. I have no idea that these things were existed That's in your point. refrigerator. That's the How point. How many times, Christina, you cleaned the refrigerator? What is this, man? What is this, man? Unbelievable. Who put this back? Just close the fucking fridge for a second. Let me ask you one question. Yes. Okay. So it's someone else's job to do this, and it's someone else's job to do that, right? What's well, your job have... as an owner, then? Aren't you supposed to check to see what your yes. staff is doing? Yes. So? Daddy, you have to take some responsibility here. Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening, Evelyn. 
the point Chef Ramsay's trying to make is, what's your responsibility? You just hired some guy and say, oh, when you're done, you just put this in here, and you never fucking check them? Who's checking them? Evelyn, how many times I told your mother we have to get the new people if that's the only way to, to, to clean house? You're still not getting it. Come on, what do you mean you're still not getting it? And I'm still behind the grill, be behind this. I'm up to here, I can't. It's your fucking restaurant! Yes, I know, baby. I don't understand why you don't get it, Daddy. You have to take ownership of this place if it's your restaurant. You can't just walk around and saying you're the fucking owner. I need fresh air. My father, he needs to wake up and, and smell the Greek coffee. This is your restaurant. You played a really big part in why it's this bad. And you cannot point fingers. Otherwise, like Chef said, close the fucking doors and get out. Dad. What else do I have to do? You need to understand, it starts with you. You have to stand up and take responsibility. It's not my food. It's Christina's recipes. See? There you go again. Fucking hell. Chef, I'm not 100% responsible. That's, I want you to know that. What I've been struggling with is that I don't think you have the will. You couldn't have been like this 14 years ago. Can I just have two minutes with your daughter? Yes. I honestly don't know what to say. Every time I try to point things out, it's just blaming other people. He does like to point fingers. I've got some serious concerns, but right now, the only reason why I'm staying is because of you. I'm 150% okay. committed. You have no doubt in Your dad, I do. Now get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you, sir. OK. Thank you. Thank you. This morning, Chef Ramsay wants Manny and Christina to understand how destructive they've been to each other. When do we draw a line in the sand and say, Mom, Dad, for God's sake, get on the same page? And he is hoping with the help of their daughter. It's a big ask, but I need you to drive that message home. They will finally see the damage they have done. Morning. Hi. How are you both? Um, OK, bad day yesterday lots of issues, and it's impossible to work on any of them because we have to deal with something more important first. The both of you. Evelyn? Restaurant aside, you guys have issues communicating? <sighs> What's really hard for me is to see how just separated you are. I don't want to see you be so hurtful towards one another. You have so much to be happy about and proud of. And it's time that you work together. But there's no more pointing fingers. I cannot be in the middle. It, it kills me on the inside. It breaks my heart. We lost the scouts, but we can make it again. We have to do it again as a couple, as a family. I will uh, try my best and I will do my best, believe me. Christina, it goes for both of you. You have to be supportive. What's on my heart? <laughs> We have to do it together. We have to share responsibilities, and we have to be united. Two people, one voice. We have to do it, that's it. I'll leave you guys alone for a few minutes. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef. Evelyn is absolutely right. We have to stop pointing figures to each other. We have to communicate in a better way. Give up, okay? No. And we have to unite it and to do whatever we have to do together. <laughs> we do it. After what appears to be a major breakthrough with Christina and Manny. Let's go. Please. Chef Ramsay can finally turn his attention to the food. When was the last time you did something together? Years. Years? Years. 
I want you to do something with me now. The three of us together. Let's go. Sea bass. I've seasoned the fish. I've seasoned the flour, salt and pepper, and the bass goes into a hot pan. Have a taste of that. That is a very simple mm. puree of cauliflower. Just cauliflower? Just cauliflower. I do love cooking, but the last few years I was lazy, and I mean, I lost the touch, I lost the uh, passion. How does that taste? This Don't is amazing. Bad. Of course I want it back. I'm watching everything cooking. Can you place on? It's gonna be a lot of hard work, but I'm up for it. I'm ready. Now, I want you both just to make a portion together. Yes. Okay. okay. Lemons. We have to season them. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't worked together for a very long time, and it's wonderful working one next to the other and in uh, some kind of love again. Take this. It's got to be crispy. This is a new beginning for us. Christina and I, we got to go as a team. That's the only way to succeed and save this business. I'm very happy. With Christina and Manny not only committing to each other, but also to their restaurant, Chef Ramsey and his team spend the night completely overhauling Cazzialo with a look that is sure to remind them of their Greek heritage. Come over, please. You ready to go inside? Yes. yes. Ladies first, let's go. All right. Jump in. Oh, Welcome to the new Cazzialo. Oh, Beautiful is this? Oh my God! This is a dream. Oh, that's beautiful. Welcome to your new restaurant. <laughs> I love it. This is wonderful. New it's wonderful. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Gone is that dreary, drab interior. We've brightened everything up. A stunning fresh coat of paint. Bright. Original artwork. That's Greece. Hand-painted on those walls. Blue shutters give it that Greek feel, just like it is at home. How beautiful is that? That's so beautiful. From there, the seating. We've updated the upholstery, so it feels authentic. Mediterranean. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, cast your eyes down there. Oh, my God, I didn't see The that. new panelling. Oh, it is God. done with reclaimed wood, so you've got that beautiful, authentic Greek feel. It's gorgeous. This is beautiful. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I'd like to focus your attention on the tableware. New plates, new silverware, courtesy of Oneida. This is a unique, durable, stunning tableware. It's made for the food service industry, so it can take a bashing. This is wonderful. This is a dream. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Are you, are, are you OK? Everything. Are you OK? Oh, <laughs> Thank you, it's beautiful, it's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. I feel so happy. One million dollars woman. Now it's a real place. Now it is a real Catialo. <laughs> it's I would never imagine to have a restaurant like this. This is the Catialo of our dreams. I'm so excited, I'm so happy. My passion came back. With the excitement of the new design of the restaurant still in the air... Come down, please, my darling. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil an equally as dramatic change that he has made to the food. Oh, Excellent. my God. Come on down, please, oh, guys. Wow. Oh, my nice. God. Oh, my God. My dream. My dream. Your dream. My dream, my dream came true. The menu is self-contained, and it's done with what we've got to work with. Red pepper hummus. Done, obviously, with chickpeas, tahini, lemon, garlic, and roasted red peppers running through it. And then one of my favorites, how could we not have spanakopita, crumpled feta around the outside, stuffed with a delicious, creamy spinach. Our sandwiches, the classic gyro. I love it. Kebabs, chicken kebab, shrimp kebab, lamb kebab, and the beef kebab. Very nice. And then the bronzino, delicious, yeah? It looks wonderful. It looks awesome. Excited? Very. Very. Right, dig in. Yeah, start tasting, guys. Let's go. Mm. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. Wow. Mm. Mm. That's really, really good. So tasty, so different. Yeah, absolutely amazing. 
definitely I feel in love with the restaurant again. The new menu that uh, Chef Ramsey created, everything is authentic Greek. I reignite, I'm re-energized. You will see us change the attitude of this place. I love it. It's so good that I cannot stop eating. Welcome to Catiallo. The artwork is beautiful. It reminds me of Greece. I'm going to get the grilled flank steak. For tonight's relaunch, Chef Ramsay has the father-daughter duo working together in the kitchen. Manny, you're going to be expedited. Yes. I want to hear you, yes? Yes. OK, yes. Excellent. First take is coming in. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Two red pepper hummus, Evelyn, is working. Yes, sir. Chicken kebab, table one. Let's go. I think for this relaunch to be successful, my father needs to really just communicate. I think he can step in and do it. I just think he needs to build up his confidence a little bit. Let's get these people fed, baby. We one spanakopita, one millijano salata right now, please. Right now, right now. Just. I got two spinach fries at the window. Take it outside. Come on. Let's go. The first tickets are completed quickly, and the food is leaving the kitchen at a steady pace. Presentation mm. for you. And the diners are raving about the new menu. Excellent. Good. Try? That's delicious. Manoli. Yes. I need the moussaka for number 12. You take it. Uh, no, I didn't take the table. They have been there for some time. But only 45 minutes into service, Manny is beginning to get overwhelmed and has completely lost track of the orders. I have food in the window. I need to know what tables these are for, and you need to get the service here and get them out. Let's go. It's getting crazy. Table 73, Spanakopita, Melizona yes. Salata. Wait, wait a second. What, what's the table? 73. I don't have any 73 over here. Unbelievable. We're just wondering how uh, much longer for our order. What else? What else? Talk to me. I don't hear anyone talking. What are we doing right now? This is a disaster. So, look at me. We're falling behind. I need you expediting. Air traffic control, you need to handle those tickets. Why are these still here? You're the expediter. You need to listen. You need to calm okay. down. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. 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 And Manny is leading the kitchen, but after a good start, he has now lost track of the orders. You need to, you need to calm okay. down. And despite Evelyn's attempt to get her father focused, Manny decides now would be a good time to take a break. This is crazy. Are you waiting for anything? I wait for 21. I don't have 21. Your daddy tell you. Huh? I'm not daddy. I don't have anything for you. I had it. I am frustrated because things start going wild. But I was thinking about my daughter. I was thinking about my wife. So I'm trying to, to pull everything together. What's wrong, Manny? You OK? What's the matter? This is a disaster. We don't going to give up. You don't know how. Yeah, I do know how it is. It's crazy. It's I get upset, but well, we, we don't to, know what's going on. We have to stay calm. What table's going next? <sighs> oh, my God. Manny, you have to turn and stand. Yes. But you've got to get your head out of the sand. Open up and talk. Please, let's go. Table number three. The moussaka is... I need it right now. All right. You said moussaka. Moussaka you have. OK, good. Now in control. Stay in control. You got it. Sam Ramsey's words pull me uh, back together. Fry Calamar is ready? Yes. Pick it up from there, the spinach pie, please. Good. I promised I would be the leader, and that's what I'm going to do. Christina, you have a frank steak medium, yes. chicken kebab, and chicken souvlaki sandwich. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Hey, my name is Manny. Manny, I'm the owner of the place. Nice to meet you, Two lamb, one shrimp, one chicken. Fire it up, guys. We're good. This is the last one. Bring it home nice. The same passion that my father had when he first opened this restaurant, it's back in him now. That's what's really important. You're proud of your little girl? Of course. Of course. <laughs> we are so happy. Opa! How are you feeling? We're feeling Great. Good. I'm so happy. When I first arrived here, one thing I didn't see was any love for each other. Tonight, in amongst all that pressure, you still had respect. You have to stay like that. You have to remember to support each other. Yes. Respect yes. each other. Yes. And most importantly, communicate with each other. Yes. Trust That's me, do that, important. and you'll be together for another 35 years.
Good night. Thank you. God bless. Good Bye, guys. This for me, let me tell you, has been one of the most difficult kitchen nightmares ever. Not only was I watching a restaurant in shambles, but a, a marriage as well. However, in the last couple of days, both Manny and Christina seem to be heading in the right direction. Fixing both the marriage and the restaurant, I strongly believe they're on course. Let's keep it that way. Wow, who gets a haircut and buys the restaurant next door? In the weeks that followed, Manny, I need the appetizers for number 12. Uh, yes. Thank you. Manny and Christina are back working together in harmony, and their marriage is better than it has been in years. Thank you. Thank you so much. And with business continuing to improve, fire me four pitas and cut them in six, please. Evelyn has decided to work full time at Katiyala. I'm at the window, Dad. Before Chef Ramsay came here, we had no hopes, man. Everybody enjoy your food. Okay. Opa. <laughs> But he didn't only save our restaurant. He saved our marriage, our family, and I really appreciate what he did. Catialo, it's really Catialo. Now my place, it's really something else. Woodland Park, Colorado. 30 minutes from Colorado Springs. It's known as the city above the clouds, and it's home to Manja Manja an Italian restaurant owned by former realtor, Julie Watson. Hi, Manja Manja, this is Julie, can I help you? We bought the building. It was a fast food restaurant and I didn't know what concept I wanted to do. Would anyone like some cracked pepper? My mom decided to open up an Italian restaurant because there aren't any other Italian restaurants. There's three Mexican and two Chinese. You guys need tables. This is the only Italian restaurant in Woodland Park. Then we've blown it. Come on, people. Because Julie is a poor manager. Just do whatever you guys want to do. How's that? She doesn't know what she's doing. I said to use plates. How are we supposed to plate up spaghetti? <laughs> this restaurant runs like a Jerry Springer show. Get rid of this shit. And what's in the walk-in? We fight a lot. My mom has a tendency to yell. No, you're supposed to fucking make a meat lasagna for tonight. Instead of solving the problem. The next fucking lasagna I bring back is going up your ass. She gets mad and she, you stay out of her way. Just not in the mood for it. And then you say anything and you're gonna get it. Is someone hiding shit? Because I just ordered three dozen bowls. The king of the world attitude that Julie has causes a lot of problems. Trevor, that's burned to a curse. We have to start that over. My biggest problem in the restaurant is my head chef, Trevor, who thinks he's a god. I want it done and it better be done by two o'clock. I run somewhere. Fuck you, Trevor. I hate Trevor. He's disrespectful. He's just not a very nice person. He throws fits. What's going in? He's thrown stuff at me. He's messed food up on purpose. This is always a good way to check. Ah! He's walked out before. There, you don't like this, how about this? I've never been into a sit-down restaurant with a drive through window. Hi there, how are you? A drive through screams fast food and not just casual, fine dining restaurant. This is not good. The food isn't cooked with much love. It's cooked with stress and a microwave. Where is my other lasagna? It's in the microwave. There's like no cheese to it. That one table bitch so much, I don't know what to do with them. I have had more people tell me what is wrong with me that I've been ever in my whole life. It's like open field day on Julie. I've reached my breaking point. I'm stressed and cannot take any more. Deep breath. If this restaurant goes out of business, I will lose everything. I have put all my money into this restaurant. Having Chef Ramsay here is the last resort. to the window. This looks like a fast food restaurant. <laughs> this has to be a first. He's here. I see him. Janelle, just chill. I wonder if they have tables inside. 
Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Nice to see you. What's your first name? Janelle. Janelle. Okay, great. Look, let's get one thing right. You do have tables inside, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and the drive-through. Why is that here? Normally, people call in their order and then they pick it up. So. On average, uh, mm -hmm. how many guests drive by a day? Maybe Not like many. one or two. So yeah. I'm the one of the day. Yes, you're the one. Wow. Of the day. Well, let's make this quick. Um, okay. Soup of the day is what? Uh, it's chicken and wild rice. Let's have a um, chicken and wild rice. Please. Okay. Thanks, darling. Mhm. Mm wow. Why are you making me do this, Mom? Janelle, stop. What? Should I just do soup how we normally do? And the yep, yeah, just do it like we normally do it. Well, let's see how quick they are. Very nerve-wracking. She's going to need a spoon. I know. Hey, Janelle, don't forget to tape the top. I'm going to tape the top. This is super frustrating. I just want this to be over. Where do you go? Oh. That's my soup. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. My kitchen nightmares first. It smells really good. A drive through Italian restaurant. It is hilarious. He has an adorable accent. Yes, he does have an adorable accent. <laughs> wow. That is it. That is it. Wow. Doesn't look very um, appetizing. And uh, knife and fork, <laughs> knife spoon <laughs> to eat my soup. Mind you, it is actually thick enough to eat the soup off <laughs> a fork. You forgot to give him a spoon. How's he supposed to eat his spoon? You didn't give me a spoon. I gave you no, a spoon. No, you didn't hand it to me. Trust me. If you're going to be in the drive-through business, first of all, you can give me a, a spoon, and secondly, you could at least fill my cup. But this is. Pretty horrific. Oh. Wow. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are I'm you? Julie Watson. Julie, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. And you are the. I'm the owner. The owner. Well, let me tell you something. That's the first for me. A drive-through <laughs> pickup in an Italian restaurant. Wasn't that great? The soup wasn't. Oh, the soup wasn't no, good. No, oh, Joe's thick and bland and. I'm um, sorry. So let's catch up, Joe. Okay. Yeah. What's with all these little frilly curtains? People didn't like the fact that the booths were down, and so they asked me to raise the booths, and that's how we raised them. Oh, my curtains. Right, how are you? I'm good. Excellent. So what was the plan in opening this place? Because it looks like a chain restaurant. It was a chain restaurant. No, it looks like it now. Still? It doesn't resemble a fast food restaurant for you. Well, kind of, but not that bad. Right. I don't see anything Italian in here whatsoever. Really? Yeah, really. I think it's cute. OK, well, when was the last time you were in Italy? Never. Ah. Okay. I'm that? Irish. Okay. Is that all fake? Are they Christmas tree it's... lights as well at the top? Of yes, it? it is. And we're in August. No, but it's light. It gives light into the day. I think it's beautiful. Which part is beautiful for you? The fake flowers or the curtains? <laughs> <laughs> You're just not gonna let that go, are you? Uh, Holy pretty... shit! I'm just curious, that's all this uh... Oh shit, you're making me laugh. <laughs> uh, why Italian cuisine then? I opened an Italian restaurant because people in Woodland Park said there's no Italian. Open an Italian restaurant, and so I opened an Italian restaurant. Right. You must have some good staff, surely. I do. So who are the highlights? Uh, Andrea mm -hmm. is a great waitress. My daughter, Janelle. Oh, Janelle, the one who forgot the to window. give me a spoon for the soup. Yeah, the okay. one that forgot to give you the spoon. Um, I have Kevin's great, one of my cooks. Right. Um, problems, what are they? I think our food's great, but I have a cook that has worked with me since the day I opened, and he has an attitude. Right. But I haven't fired him because it's hard to get help up here in Woodland Park. It okay. is. Yes, it is. Who maintains the standards here? Me. Are you the controlling? The buck stops here. Right. But you just confirmed you've kept the wrong chef for four years. But he right. shows up. 90% of the time, he does what he's supposed to right. do. Right, OK. But 10% of the time, he's an asshole. And which restaurant did he come from? He's never worked in a restaurant. So he had no background in training? Exactly. So how did he start? He was not washing dishes. OK, and does he get on with the rest of the team, the front no. of the house staff? No. He doesn't? No, he makes them crazy. And what do the servers think of him? 
they think he's an asshole. Okay. If he gets pissed off, he'll walk out the back door and sit and smoke. In the middle of service? Yeah. What? Yes. Where does that come from, the attitude? Because he thinks he's a god. He's seen the parade of people that I've had through this restaurant. Okay. So he's put you over And so out. he's, yeah, exactly. He knows that I can't fire him because I have no one else. How old is he? 22. He's 22? Yes. I mean, 22 years of age, you shouldn't be running the kitchen. But somehow okay. the food turns out good. It does turn out good. How is that possible? Because we haven't changed anything for four years. OK, well, we'll see. Proof's in the eating, right? That's right. Show me around. OK. Please. Excellent. Um, the Great Wall of Woodland Park. Yes. I love my wall. Don't make fun of my wall. Good. No, no, it's uh, this hideous. Ladies, how are we? Good, thank this you. Hi, this Andrea. Is Andrea. OK, great. Uh, young man, come over. How are you, bud? Uh, Trevor Peterson, nice to meet you. Trevor Peterson, OK. And what do you do? Oh, I'm the head chef. So you're yes, the young 22-year-old that 90% is good and 10% is an asshole. Yeah. OK. Or the other way around, whichever way you want to look at. No, I'm just going on what the owner said. Uh, how do you rate the food out of 10? Five. F oh. It's your own food, Trevor. Wow. And I would give it a 50-50 on Trevor's behavior. And where does this stem from? Did we fall out? We were dating back in the day, or I guess you could say. Right. Might the... even be a 40-60 on the nice? bad side. Seriously? Yeah. You make me that mad. You, you tried much. to punch me. What, Janelle. What, 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 hold on. Janelle. Janelle, come over here, my darling. Please. This young man tried to punch you? Yeah, he pushed me into the walk-in and tried to punch me. And when I told him I was going to call the cops, when? back about a month ago. Is that real? I didn't. It's somewhat real, yeah. So you grab her, threaten to punch her, and push her into the walk-in? After she tells me no one cares if I get fired, no one cares about my well-being, no one cares about me, no one gives a shit it's about true. me. No one likes you. Coming up... We got a fucking problem. Julie is on the warpath as Chef Ramsay tries the food. Why doesn't he just leave it alone? Then... Enough pasta for close to 400 portions. It's a discovery unlike any other. What fruitcake's operating this? And Chef Ramsay may be ready to throw in the towel. And I'm going to drive straight back to the fucking airport. And he's not the only one. I'm not taking any more fucking tables. What? You're walking out. Walking out. Chef Ramsay has already witnessed some minor problems like the decor and some major problems like the serious tension between the owner's daughter and the head chef. He's hoping that he can find some positivity in the food. How are you, darling? Good, thank you. How are you? Andy, right? Yes. I tasted that soup. I felt like going straight back to the airport. <laughs> OK, we're done. Let's order, shall we? OK. Um, right, let's go for the wild mushroom ravioli, please. Phil Piccata. Um, where do I sit? The fresh Pacific salmon. Okay. Mama's own meat lasagna as well. And uh, I've got to go for the meatballs. I think we're done, my darling. Wow. Thank you. Of course. Here's his orders. Got a good mix. Is that for Gordon? Julia, you're in the way. Like always. You know what, Trevor? That's bullshit, Trevor, and you know it. Kiss <laughs> my ass. Although I'm not a fan of Trevor's antics, I think our food is still very good. Mushroom raviolis. Mushroom raviolis. And what's the sauce? It's an Alfredo sauce. And can you ask the chef when he made the raviolis, please? Yeah. Thank you. Wow, that looks like a pile of defrosted snow with bear shit sprinkled all over it. Trevor, when were the raviolis defrosted? Just, Just now, yeah. Wow. Do they look homemade? I don't think so. They're frozen and they were just made. So store bought? Yes. Damn. Can the chef make a ravioli? I don't think they ever have, no. Can you ask him if he can make a ravioli? Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, wow. That is bad. Ah. Trevor, have you ever made ravioli before? Fresh ravioli? I have not. Do you know how? No, he no. does not know how. <laughs> He's never made him, and he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how. You know, making pasta's like making bread, right? So, 550 grams of the flour, six egg yolks, whisk them up, pinch of salt, drizzle with olive oil. He's having Andy write down how to make how to make raviolis. Lovely. You mold it together. That's called pasta. Then knead it like bread. Okay. Yeah. That's Thank you. They were disgusting. <laughs> wow. Did he throw that away? Yes. What the fuck is wrong with it? 
Trevor, he would like you to get together 550 grams of flour, six eggs, oil, a pinch of salt, everything you need to make. Pasta. What's 550 grams of, I don't know what that is. Of flour. He needs to get the stuff to make flour. I know, but what is 550 grams? Yeah, he's British, Mom. I know, but what does that mean? We got to do the conversion. conversion. We have to figure out how many cups okay. that is. Figure it out. I don't know. Okay. He wants him to get everything to make raviolis? He wants him to just get everything together and start making pasta. Oh, this is going to be fucking great. A chef? that doesn't know how to make pasta, and you're the head chef of an Italian restaurant. Even if you can't make ravioli, linguine, spaghetti, lasagna. Wow. It's too oily. Try on there. I've never done it before, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, that's way too oily. Yeah, that is too much oil in there. Yes, it's supposed to be dough, not paste. Now, well, that's my first try. Bear with me. <laughs> Trevor is way out of his league right now. He has absolutely no idea what he's doing. That guy's an idiot. Here's your meat lasagna. Thank you, my darling. And um, there's a big, disgusting thumbprint with meat sauce. Can you ask him just to take his paws off my side? Do you see that thumbprint? I do. It's like dubbed in the sauce and... Right on yeah, the edge of right the on the side of the plate. Yeah. Not appetizing. Can you ask yeah. him just quickly wipe that off, please? Absolutely. And tell him to clean these fingers, please. Yeah. Chef's thumbprint all over my plate covered in tomato sauce. No, thank you. That's disgusting. Now what? He hasn't tried it yet. He just wants you guys to clean the edges of the plate. There's fingerprints. There's a really bad one right there, and there's some more here. And he said to make sure you guys clean your hands. Yeah. I'm stressing out. Mama's made lasagna. Um, darling, why is it so watery there? Um, that would be from the marinara. Wow. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Ugh. It's stone cold. I mean, well, Andy, if you just touch that there with your finger. Cakes, it's cold. It is ice cold. It's ice cold right here. Yeah, so, ice okay. cold. Okay. <clears throat> Show Julie. Julie, please. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Disgusting. The chef would like you guys to feel right here. It's cold. That fucking lasagna is cold. Julie, it's the microwave. I told you not to use that microwave. Use the one in the back, I said. It's not going to make a difference, I guarantee I you. said to use the one in the back, because I don't want this fucking happening again. It's not going to make a yes, difference. Yes, it is going to make a difference. It's a microwave. Then why all of a sudden did it change? That it, fuck, four I know. fucking years. That's bullshit. I said what? don't use okay, it. OK, Julie. Julie's in denial about everything, and I don't understand why she won't acknowledge that. Make sure there's no fingerprints. Here's your spaghetti with meatballs. Thank you, my darling. And are the meatballs homemade? No, they're frozen. Oh, come on. Serious? Does he know how to make a meatball? He does know how to make meatballs. Oh, OK, great. So why isn't he doing them? Um, I believe that they used to do them and they fell apart too much before. That means he doesn't know how to make them. Doesn't know how to make them right. <laughs> wow. Ask the chef why he can't make a meatball. OK. Please. Yep. Thank you, though. Wow. And the meatballs taste like warm foam. Trevor, chef would like to know why our meatballs would fall apart. Why would you not be able to make a meatball? So the only reason we stopped serving them is because they fell apart. That was our original chef. I didn't say that. That was putting words in my mouth. Thank you. I would love to go back making handmade meatballs. OK. That's bullshit. <laughs> Trevor, I can't get you to do fucking prep, and you want to make meatballs? That's going to work. <laughs> Kiss my ass. You don't want to pay anybody to do anything. I have to beg you to come to work in the day. I can't even put you on days because you don't show up. Do you think I want to come back here and try to handle a whole goddamn kitchen? You don't handle this kitchen. I handle this fucking kitchen because you refuse to do anything. So I don't know what to do. You ask for this job. You always walk around I saying, I'm you. the head chef. I didn't ask you. <sighs> now, do you see why no one likes you? You can shut your mouth. Oh, I'm scared. Trevor says it was the original chef's meatballs that fell apart. He's never made the meatballs here. OK, so. He knows how. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's a uh, dreadful texture. Meatballs taste frozen. And marinara, if you just tip the plate to the side, I'll just show you, it's just full of water. I didn't expect a watery marinara. And the spaghetti's not even glazed. It's just bland. OK. 
Thank you. Now what? The spaghetti is not glazed, it's bland. The marinara is watery. The meatballs, you can taste, are frozen. What's wrong with it? Good spot. Oh. I don't, I don't know what's. <laughs> the spaghetti is bland. The marinara is watery, and you can tell the meatballs are frozen. I don't think it was that bad. I don't. I think it's fine. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Veal piccata. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. How's the VR? Yeah, it's still, it's still raw. You see it there? It won't even cut, so I'm still scraping it. It's that raw. It's not even hot. I don't mind it being paint, but it's raw. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Veal piccata. Veal was raw. I mean, I know it just needs to be kissed in the pan, but it was that thick. Raw in the middle. The veal is still raw. It's raw. Raw? I mean, I can't say anything about that. It's fucking raw. Where I'm starting to get, like, fucking pissed. Nice, that's... Thanks, Daddy. You're very welcome. And could you ask the chef just to show me his bowl of pasta? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. The chef wants to see the bowl of pasta you started. Oh, I tossed it. You threw it away? He threw it away. He threw it away? He did. Why? I have no idea. He did earlier, I guess. Damn. <laughs> that better be right. Thank you, Diane. Wow. Now, what is that? That's your salmon with That's the balsamic salmon. paint. With the balsamic paint? Yes. Is the salmon fresh? I believe it's frozen as well. You're kidding me. Mm -mm, it says fresh on the menu. It says fresh on the menu. You're absolutely right. Fresh Pacific salmon. Frozen. Yes, it's frozen. Good God. I finished darling. That's terrible. The mash tastes weird. It tastes weird. Do you mind? It's just, it's just, a, it just tastes old. When were they made? I'll go find out. Would you mind? Please, mm -hmm. honey, thank you. When were the potatoes made and by whom? Are you fucking kidding me? What's wrong with it? The mashed potatoes taste old. They just made them last fucking night. Okay. They were made last night. OK. That's bullshit. This is fucking stressing me out, man. Chef Ramsay liked nothing today. And I don't know what the hell happened, and I am completely shocked. That's bullshit. There's nothing wrong with that salmon. And those potatoes were made last fucking night. So that's bullshit. I love my food. Why doesn't he just leave it alone? We got a fucking problem. Lunch was a complete disaster as Chef Ramsay discovered issue after issue. Wow. It's now apparent to him why this, the only Italian restaurant in town, is struggling so much. Uh, let's get the team out. Let's have a chat. OK. Everybody come. Uh, so I, I'm, I don't know where to start. Has anyone got an ounce of training? I personally don't. First question I asked Andy was, does a chef make pasta? I How bad does that sound when we're standing inside an Italian restaurant that you're the head cook of? The fact you can't even make a fucking meatball, that scares the shit out of me. If my interest has dwindled. You don't have the interest. You shouldn't be putting the jacket on. I mean, is anything fresh? I don't have fresh food. Everything that we come in except for our produce. OK, but I mean, you don't have fresh food. All of our, we make all of our sauces. Oh, come on. We do. Come on, what, you expect me to give you a round of applause because you make your sauce? Right. Mushroom raviolis. The filling was hideous. Bland sauce. Lasagna. Stone fucking cold in the middle. The worst thing about you defrosting it, A, you can't operate a fucking microwave. B, the bits that you were cooking, they're bland. Uh, the veal. The veal is old, I'll tell you that. What do you mean, old? I mean, I don't order veal very often. It was raw. That's what I was trying to say. Oh. Fresh Pacific salmon, $18.50. Yeah? Frozen. Frozen, very weird taste, looked dreadful, overcooked. No one complains about that salmon. Oh, People on. like it. 
So you don't think that customers need to know it's frozen? If they knew it was frozen, do you think they'd order it? Does it say fresh on the menu? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Big, bold well, letters. Then, OK, then that's a mistake. You don't know? No. It was changed. It was changed. When was it changed? How long ago was it fresh? About two and a half, three years. Two and a half, three years ago. So, uh, a while. When did the salmon arrive? Couldn't tell you, honestly. You couldn't tell me? I couldn't oh tell you. Oh, my god. I've seen that salmon in there for a while. I don't believe that either. I'm just saying. I don't believe that either. That's OK. OK. Why did you go in denial when they're telling you the truth and they're, they're in the engine because room? Because I'm the one that orders the food. Well, we're the you one don't that cook it. Makes I don't food. cook it, but I order it. So when was the last time you ordered salmon? Probably two weeks ago. Why are you shaking your head? Because it's been in there longer than a month. Trevor, that is fucking bullshit. Do you think customers locally, do you think they should leave their home to come into your restaurant and pay for frozen food that they could cook better at home? I think our food's good. I'm standing by my food. I think our food's good. So what part of store-bought frozen food do you think is good? I think our food's good. Help me to understand what part do you think is good? I think it's good. I no. mean, I don't understand what you're asking me. OK. So out of all the dishes that I had, the veal bacala that's old that you agreed to. I do. The, the lasagna that's microwaved, that's stone cold, not even microwaved properly, and the salmon with the paint. I'm asking you, very politely, what part of your menu do you think is good? I think our food's good. But you're not stupid. I'm not stupid. So meatballs frozen, sauce watery, lasagna. They can't even fucking reheat it properly. And then why are you blowing smoke up your own ass, telling yourself in a deluded way that your food's good? Or have I missed the trick and I haven't ordered something that you said I should be eating? I think our food's good. Who's telling you it's good? The customer. They're not coming. That's why you're in debt and you're putting your funds into okay, this place. Fine. No, but come on then, man up. I will say this, we have never had a customer. Andy will, but I have very had very few customers ever actually complain to my face. Okay, uh, do you know, I'm not interested about the customers that blow smoke up your ass currently. I'm interested in the customers that aren't coming any longer. And truthfully, most customers don't like to complain to your face. They just don't come back. They vote with their feet. I don't think you've got any idea how this business is functioning. I do understand how the business is functioning. You don't know what's on your menu. You don't know how it's written. Your chefs disagree with you. I mean, I, I've never seen so many people so far apart. And the proofs and the tasting, because it felt just all over the shop. You are way out of your depth. The food, bland, boring, dated. And when a head cook can't even operate a fucking microwave, that scares the shit out of me. But the owner said your food's good. So, continue kissing her ass. Wow. My food's good. My food's good. Yeah. My food's good. Well, that wasn't pleasant. I'm surprised I didn't walk out of the split two years ago. Trevor's being a little fucking prick. <sighs> Don't cry. It hurts my feelings. You know. You cry, I'll cry. Oh, God. That was brutal. <sighs> that was a little too rough. Let's go outside. <laughs> that was very unpleasant. I don't even have, have ever felt like this before, ever, in my life. This is horrible. After a frustrating conversation with a defiant owner about the many problems with the food... Hi there, how y'all doing? Chef Ramsay returns to see how the dishes are prepared by this band of young cooks at Manja Manja. So, talk to me about the line. How does that, uh, how does this roll? Well, we've got our saute. Saute? Yep, all of our raws, our veggies, our produce, yada yada. What's in here? Meatballs and sausage and marinara. It's like an oil stick in there. Wow, that's terrible. Is that normally yeah. like that? You said that the spinach was tart, didn't taste fresh. I think it looks just fine. Oh, we haven't met, have we? Yes, sir. How long have you been here, bud? A couple months. A couple of months. What's wrong with the place, in your mind? 
we have a leadership problem. These guys haven't been trained properly. Yeah, you're not wrong. Honestly, I don't feel that Julie has the leadership qualities. We have a very young staff and inexperienced staff, and unfortunately, she's the biggest reason that they're not where they need to be. Oh, no, what's wrong, Janelle? So they're too salty, so they're ordering something else, just so you know. Too salty. Are you not interested in tasting this when it comes back, or you just, fuck it, it comes back? I just say, fuck it, I don't taste it. You just say, fuck it, yes, don't sure. taste it. Wow. It's yellow, it's limp. Julie, that's the spinach from behind the line. It can't look like this. It's behind the line, they're cooking okay, with it. Okay, why does the spinach look like this? That's what we've been getting in. No fucking way. And we've had to wash it because someone last night had a piece of sand in it. Seriously? What the fuck is this? Spinach that's you what? ordered. This is not our spinach. has never, 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 never looked like this. He's trying to impress Chef Ramsay, but that is not Trevor. Trevor is a spoiled little bastard that refuses to do his job. I have never seen our spinach look like this in four years. They've cooked with it, they've sent it, you've charged for it. You need to see it. I see it. And you're just gonna let them cook with it? No, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to figure something out. Uh-huh. Throw that shit out. It's hard not to laugh. I know. That down. Look this in here. In the walk-in, he goes. It's the mold on the floor. Look at that. This is an absolute horror. Fridge just used like a trash can. Even buying peeled onions. How much pasta are they cooking? Yeah. Is he expecting a pasta rush? And more pasta. He's obsessed with spaghetti. Containers of pasta cooked. All this work for what? What's he doing? Okay. Julie, you got two seconds? Sure. How often does the restaurant cook pasta? Uh, every day, every other day. So like twice a day? Fresh for lunch, fresh for dinner? No, once a day. They'll cook it in the, like midday. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Do you have any idea what's going on behind here? This will be used today. Can you stop dreaming? Do you have any idea how many portions are in here? No, I you don't. Got, you got no idea how many portions of capellini pasta are in there? No, I don't. Okay, how many do you think then? Roughly. 20. 20. Now that is a lot of capellini. That's just one container. It's pasta mania. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Enough pasta for close to four hundred portions on this table here. And we've got how many customers tonight? Fifty-three. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. I don't know why there's this much pasta cooked. I'm only asking you because I don't know either. I'm looking at it thinking, what fruit cake's operating this? We don't have this much pasta. It I, didn't I reproduce itself. I, Let's I, get that I right. I absolutely agree with you. There's usually three. One, two, three. Not all this other. These two, I don't know why these are here. You just told me this is all going to be used in a day. No, I said, okay. Because here's the thing. I'm going to get okay. changed. Okay. And I'm going to drive straight back to the fucking airport because you are just bullshit me. OK, let me ask you this. Please. How can they cook this, the pasta for every order that fat? Doesn't it take, it would, these people would be waiting. These people will be waiting. So this is Capellini. I know it is. Which cooks in how long? About three minutes. 90 seconds. I'm I telling have you, never I'm seen, not a chef. I have never seen anything as bad as this. OK. But what I'm just trying to explain to you is common sense. Maybe you are a fast food restaurant. It's dinner service at Manja Manja. I have never seen anything as bad as this. And Chef Ramsay has discovered over 400 portions of pre-cooked pasta. And Julie refuses to take any responsibility. Maybe you are a fast food restaurant. Look at all this pasta. I, I fucking agree with you. Oh, no. Not more pasta. Where did that come from? That's gluten-free. Gl gluten-free. Gluten-free. And there's the angel here. Somebody needs to go wait on my table. You guys yeah, need to pick yeah, up you, table you, you, 19. You continue running your business. I don't want to stop you. Any more pasta in the house? Not that I know of, chef. Fuck me. They way overcooked pasta like you wouldn't believe. They're trying to bury me. Yeah, I think they are, too. How's that fix looking? Not the prettiest, but getting it out. I don't know why Julie doesn't want to fire Trevor. He half-asses stuff. He's lazy. So what is that? It's our meat lasagna. We nuke it for four minutes, put cheese on, and nuke it for two minutes. So it's a double nuke. Wow. That looks like a science experiment. And now you're going to put it back in there with cheese? cheese on it. My god. Oh, fuck me. Hold on, man. Where's that going now? It plants into in the microwave. The microwave. And then what? Back on the plate and, and marinara and send it out. Fuck it out. Can I 
Can I use any of the microwaves? I don't know. <laughs> microwaves are full right now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Once again, we're working that microwave. One, two ovens. One, two, three microwaves. More microwaves than ovens. I have to agree. Oh, and shit, hold that. on. Oh, my god. It's hot. What is this? Uh, they're supposed to be veggie lasagnas, but the microwave, like, goos it out. The final result is a hard piece. I can't even cut yeah, it. Yes, because it's been microwaved too long. Yeah. Doctor, do you need a scalpel? I think the patient is dead. Julie? Yes. Time of death, 7.44. Just touch that for two seconds. It won't hurt. Mm-hmm. But when you just say OK, it's like... I'm not saying OK. I'm saying something's fucked up. Something's fucked up. Why does it look like that, Trevor? Because it's microwave. We have been cooking these for four years this way. All of a sudden, they're fucked up. It's been fucked up for a while. No, they haven't. Did you use the microwave that I said don't fucking use? Yeah, I'm telling you. Why'd you use it? But all the microwaves do the same why'd thing. Why'd you fucking use it when I said don't fucking use it? All the microwaves do the same thing. Are you serious, thing? Kevin? If you use it again, me and you are going to have a fucking problem. All right. Huh. Deal. Kevin has never talked to me that way. And I can see that Trevor is rubbing off on that guy. Chris, hurry up. I need to put something in. What, what do you want me to do? I can't go any faster than the computer's going. No, I, you're fiddly fucking around. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. You want to plate up these raviolis and get them out? Wasn't there supposed to be no sauce? Kiss my ass. While Julie and Trevor continue to point the finger at each other, it's so salty. Chef Ramsay observes the majority of tables in the dining room are disappointed with the food. And that's overcooked. Medium well should be a thin pink line, gentlemen. Thin pink line. Well, that's, that's just, it's way over. It's way over. Tastes frozen, right? Cafeteria? Yeah. So very sorry about that. Um, they are working on another one for oh, you. No Should problem. be out just a second. Wow. What happened? They weren't happy with the breading on the eggplant. They said it was too thick and didn't taste fresh. Jesus. Truthfully now, when was the last time that was changed, the breadcrumbs? Yesterday. So you don't do it daily? No. Wow. She complains about the price. Who complains about the Julie. price? What else you bread in there? Chicken and eggplant. You bread, yes. eggplant, yes. and chicken in the same container. Yes. But look at that in there. Yeah. So what happens for a vegetarian? Cross-contamination. I honestly never even thought about Julie. that. Julie. Yes? They change the breadcrumbs once every two days. You laugh. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because that's bullshit. What I'm trying to say is that I asked about the breadcrumbs. So the kitchen said they changed them every two days. That's, I don't. So okay. when, when okay. in your mind, when do they change them? Every day. So you're saying one thing, they're saying the other. All I want I'm is the say, truth. Okay. That's I, all I want. I understand that. Is this from yesterday? Yes. 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 And how often do you change them? Every other day. Every other day, because yes. Julie, make sure that you don't throw them away. That's bullshit. Okay, it's worse than that. Do you know what they put in there? Egg. Chicken. An egg. An eggplant. I know what they put in there. What I'm concerned about is in there, there's bits of chicken. I understand that. So if I was sat here with my wife or my children, they wanted a vegetarian dish, You're... and they got bits of chicken shit. OK, I'm not taking any more fucking tables. What? I'm stressed out. I'm not taking any more tables. You're closing down. I just cannot do this and that. During dinner service at Manja Manja, look at all this pasta. Chef Ramsay has discovered over 400 portions of pre-cooked pasta. That looks like a science experiment. And almost every dish being cooked in the microwave. Owner Julie still maintains that her food is good and that all of tonight's problems are caused by the cooks. I'm not taking any more fucking takers. It's closing down. I just cannot do this and that. I'm waiting on tables. Can you pass them on to the waiters or not? Yes, I, I mean, can. It's just going from bad to worse. You seem to be happy with it. Mom, you just got like four tables. What the hell do you want me to do, Janelle? I don't know. You need to check on your tables, though. Julie's in for it. What's the soup today? Italian wedding. Who made that soup? It's store bought. Wedding soup frozen. What else? What else is frozen? Yeah. Everything. I'll show you. Yeah, we got a full freezer full. Same. We got our tuna, we got our salmon, we got our beef, we got our chicken, we got our seafood. So everything's frozen. Everything. Yes, so there's nothing fresh. No, sir. Nothing. Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. Julie, you got two seconds? Tonight's the wedding soup. Yes. Yeah. Popular? Yes. Chef's made it. Right. Well, they did. They defrosted it. They defrosted it. That's it. And the customers love it? Yes. They do like it. How many of them know that it's frozen? I have not had that conversation. All right. 
But you take their money. Yes, I do. Shame on you. What do you want me to say? You've given up, haven't you? No, I haven't given up at all. You don't think you can do better? No. You think it's fine to microwave frozen food? I'm not microwaving frozen food. We're you microwaving... think it's okay to serve frozen meatballs? They're you not think frozen. it's okay? They're... Meatballs aren't frozen. They start out frozen. Wouldn't that be frozen? No. No, 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 no. You've worked at three restaurants. You can't be that stupid. And I know you're not. I would respect you more if you would just be honest with yourself. I'm being you're honest. You're done, aren't you? You're not fit to run this restaurant. Yes, I am. What qualifies you? Yeah, I was just about to ask that. You go away. Get out. Go away from my face right now. Wow. It's fake. It's not fake. If it's not fake, then what is it? It's a restaurant. Where is it a restaurant? Here. You don't make anything. You buy everything. If I got those tables out of that dining room to watch you reheat egg palm, lasagna, meatballs, they would shit themselves. I thought it was normal. When you go to a restaurant, what do you expect? Fresh or reheated frozen via a microwave twice? Do you expect that as a customer? No, I don't. So why do you do it? Because that's how I thought it was supposed to be done. You didn't! Because you don't give a shit. I do give a shit. Where do you give a shit? 45 covers in tonight. If I ask 45 customers, what percentage do you think of your food was fresh? What do you think they would say to me? I... No, you tell me. What do you think they would say? But you think they think it's normal. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Julie, what? Julie, you running away? No, I thought well, you were done. Well, can we ask the I customers a were... question? I thought we were done. Oh, no, no, I'm not done yet. Shortly, I'll be done. First of all, I'm sorry to disturb your dinner. Just out of interest, when you decided to come here this evening, you look at the menu. What percentage of that menu would you expect to be fresh? Let's start from table to table. Ladies. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Madam. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Sir. 100 all the way. 100 all the way. Well, I am deeply sorry, but let me tell you something. It's not even 5% fresh. It was obvious. It was obvious. And 95% of everything you've eaten this evening is frozen. And you can cook better at home, yes? Yes. So why do you think it's fine now? I'm leaving. You running away? I'm not taking any more. Julie. I'm walking out. You're walking out? Wow. Just not in the mood for it. I'm not going to be screamed out like that. I can't do it. Julie. I cannot do that. I'm walking out. Just out of interest, when you decided to come here this evening, you look at the menu. What percentage of that menu would you expect to be fresh? Let's start from table to table. Ladies. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Madam. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. 90 to 100. Sir. 100 all the way. 100 all the way. Well, I am deeply sorry, but let me tell you something. It's not even 5% fresh. It was obvious. It was obvious. And 95% of everything you've eaten this evening it's frozen. And you can cook better at home, yes? Yes. So why do you think it's fine now? I'm leaving. You running away? I'm not taking any more. Julie. I'm walking out. You're walking out? Wow. Just not in the mood for it. I'm not going to be screamed out like that. I can't do it. Julie. I cannot do that. I'm walking out. I'm done. You You're don't care. You're screaming at me in front of customers. Because you don't fucking listen. I do listen. You do not listen. I was proving a point. Wasn't screaming at you. Uh, what do you want me to say? You're. you're I want you to wake you're up. You're belittling me. You're. I you're, am belittling you. You're tearing you. me apart. So you think it's right to take their money? I don't know. You don't know. I. I am. A, I, okay. I. Ninety to ninety-five percent fresh. That's what they came to your restaurant for. And everything I've showed you tonight, you're blaming your chefs. I am not blaming my chefs. I, I, you can ask. I, I take responsibility for a lot of the shit that goes on in this restaurant. Honestly, I feel like it's a free-for-all here. You run and do what you can as much as possible until your shift's over. And that's it. You, that's you guys it. have never said this kind of stuff to me, ever. Ever. I say stuff all the time. You I've, never say I've anything, I've asked for a Kevin. cleaning list. Cleaning list for the back area to keep shit clean. How long ago was this? Three weeks ago? Where is it? You know, like, 
common stuff to clean. Where hey, is Kevin, it? Kevin, let's talk about all the times you haven't showed up to work because you're high. Two times. You're so disrespectful to her. You need to show a little She respect. doesn't want to listen to anything we have to fucking say. She tries to, but you guys don't even guys, give her a chance. I have talked to you a hundred times. Stop. I have talked to you over and over and over. You know I have, Trevor. You're fucking lying. You are. Yes. I have sat down and talked to you so many times and said, what can we do to make this better? And you've never fucking say anything. So that's a fucking lie. Because every time I do lying, say something, you get shut down. You are fucking lying. Whatever. She's given you so many chances, Trevor, and you know it. Let's talk about your habits for a second and all the times you come in so high that you throw shit at the walls. So high that you want to fucking punch Who someone. interrogates it? You! No, you fucking... You gotta get the fuck out of this restaurant oh, so we can work. No! Yes. I don't fucking do anything! You're so high all the fucking time that when you go off fucking drugs, you get so angry that you don't even want to work. Drugs? Who's on drugs? He's a fucking tweaker! And you fucking know you're a tweaker! You've been doing drugs for three years! Janelle, Janelle, come here. Janelle, come here. Come here, come here, come here. No! Fuck him! He deserves to be fired and you know it! He tried to fucking punch me! And if I would've let him right now, he probably would fuck, fucking punch me again! He's such a fucking asshole! He's so disrespectful! Okay, stay away from here now. Darling, go inside the restaurant, please, and get a glass of water, please. <laughs> That is not right. <laughs> How long has this been building up? A long time. The way you're running this place is incorrect. How in the hell are these doors still open? Because I fight and battle to keep the restaurant together. For what? Because I want it to succeed. Why do you want it to succeed? Because it's my restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's my restaurant. Do you know what? Sometimes it's good to stop completely and start again. You're just continuing. I'm not trying to rub your face in it, but when you tell but me. But that's what it feels like. But because you're in denial, because you're telling me that's what the customers want. You can't take the criticism. That's I what I'm say, struggling I with. Can say no, this. you can't. Yes, I can. You're going to stand there and argue that the shit that you're defrosting and cooking in the microwave is what the locals want. Lunchtime, you kept on telling me, my food's good, my food's good, my food's good. And then all night, every 15 minutes, something else cropped up, or that's been defrosted, or that's frozen, or that's the crazy cooking vegetarian dishes in the same breadcrumbs that you wear with chicken palm. And you have a, a, a Cajun company that provides frozen food. You defrost it, he reheats it, and throws it out there. <sighs> Customers aren't that stupid. I'm sorry, but the truth hurts. And I've closed the restaurant before. I've failed in my hometown. But I don't stand there with the arrogance thinking, it's perfect. I never said it was perfect. So why are you taking the money? Because I'm trying. How about trying to make their experience a bit better? I or you're not up for that? I, I am up for that. Are you? Yes, I am. So where's that passion, then? I have passion. Where? I want... What dish? I don't know. Well, I'm just exhausted. I'm struggling to find anything positive. I'm struggling to taste something that should be served in a restaurant. And this is not how restaurants run. Trust me, this is not normal. I thought it was normal. I thought I was doing it right. I don't think they even enjoy serving that shit. Apparently, I'm doing it all fucking wrong. What are you waiting for? I don't know what I'm waiting for. Get a grip fast. Finish cigarette and clear down. My head is just spinning. <sighs> I thought I was doing it right. I did. I did. <sighs> 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 
And when he, Chef Ramsay said that I didn't care about this place, I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here doing this right now. It's been a long time since Chef Ramsay has seen so much tension between an owner and a kitchen staff. Let's go in the dining room and have a quick uh, catch up. Before he can even begin to push forward with improvements to the restaurant, he knows he needs to have a heart to heart with the people who work in it. OK, I want to talk to you all as a group. Yesterday was a bad day. The atmosphere in here is dreadful. The relationships are bad. And this was ugly. I have to say that some of the things that happened yesterday, I was stunned. I have never been talked to by my staff, ever. Last night, when Kevin talked to me the way he did, I was shocked. Kevin has never raised his voice to me, ever. Everything was at a boiling point. There's a fear around here. Everybody's walking on eggshells. They're so afraid that they think she's going to jump off the handle because she's so frantic that, that we're all on edge. That isn't true. That's we're not true. true. I am very forgiving. That's a blatant lie. You were so rude and so disrespectful to me last night. How do you expect us to act? I never said a word to you. Are you kidding me? I was at the because... computer. You going to tell me to hurry up, get out the way? Judy, why did you go after Chris? I've had customers in this last week told me that Chris is in the restaurant talking shit, saying what a bitch I am. Is this legit? This is legit. All right. I, and I have. I mean, if she's going to say that, then she's forcing me to say defend what you myself. Want, Chris. She has people calling her bitch on a daily basis, out loud in front of her face, and I have defended her. Well, I've heard And it's, 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 you are. No. I've heard people saying that you're talking about everything that you think is wrong with the restaurant. Have I been talking about what I think the problems is, what I think that could help this place out? Absolutely. Did I ever once badmouth her? Absolutely not. Yes, you did. I did not once say anything. If I've said anything, it's that the people that are around her are incompetent. And she has a right to be pissed off. Mm -hmm. That's what I've said. I've never said That's anything about her in a disrespectful way. That's BS. So don't tell me that I don't come in here and do what I'm supposed to do. Don't tell me that I don't. I've had more people tell me this is the best service I've had, and I've come in here since this place was open. I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about since I've been here. I'm talking Chris, about I'm the talking about well, I'm, tables I'm, that tell me that you and talk. And I'm telling the way you what the tables are talk. telling me. Chris, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with I'm you because not going, I'm not arguing I'm not with you either. I know what I said, and, and I, know, I never said nothing like know, that. And I know what, what the customers have said to well, me. I, I don't, I, I can't deal with what people are telling you. I'm telling you what I know. All the stuff that's wrong in this place, I could have went on for days about the stuff that's going on, but I didn't. I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to put you in a place where all of us can make a little bit more money. And if somebody took that as me being rude to Julie, hey man, that's just the way it is. You crazy. You want to know what the problem is around here? It's, it's, it's blaring. It's, it's got stars all around it. Julia, there seems to be an air of discomfort with you around the customers and the staff. Why are you so agitated? I have to be in the back and helping the staff, and it's too stressful trying to do both. I just think you should focus more on managing. I mean, you have a hard time focusing I, on what you need to yeah you're I'm too scattered, scattered yeah, yeah. organization you're right yeah I'm you need scattered. more organization. Oh, no no but i think what you haven't done is you haven't prioritized the list of importance in terms of what you need to accomplish right because you seem far too agitated and way too on edge i agree but some of the blame is my staff the whole staff no the major issues in the restaurant are trevor trevor is creating a lot of stress in the restaurant because he has a bad attitude he doesn't want to work. He wants to stand behind that line and only cook his food. I cannot schedule him in the day, or right. he just won't show up. OK. He just doesn't show up. How long has this been going on for? It's gotten really bad in the last six, eight months. Really bad. So he's checked out? Yes. He's absolutely taking advantage of me because my hands are tied because I don't have anybody else in the restaurant. And the days that he doesn't appear, what are the excuses? He doesn't have an excuse. He just doesn't show up. Uh, Trevor, your side, what, what's going on? Have you given up? I had those days, yes. Some days are better than others. Not only are you in way over your head, but you're, you're at your depth. Yes, yeah, sure. One mistake happens and you get angry with everybody. How long have you felt so angry behind that line? It's grown and built over this past year. Why did you come in with that attitude? I was 
in over my head at the time. I was in my own personal problems. And it brought it into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the problem. When Trevor gets angry right. and has one of his fits, it happens in the restaurant while we're full. Andy calls me quite a bit and says, Trevor's refusing to cook. He's out back smoking. There's tickets on the line. You need to come to the restaurant. Right. Because he's acting like an ass and saying, I won't cook. And none of this is brought to my attention at the time. How am I supposed to fix something if it's... Because we're scared of you, Trevor. I'm scared of you. Right. When you went for Janelle, personally, why does the job take you that far in the unknown? That that day, you get that angry that you want to punch her. That day, uh, we had a new cook. He kind of lipped off to me, and I was saying stuff under my breath. And then out of nowhere, she comes to the back and yells, no one cares about you, no one cares about your life. That's because you were throwing things at the wall. It doesn't involve you. I had tables, Trevor. I had tables saying, that guy is high, that guy, I'm scared to be in here right now. You were yelling about my mom, about how she was a bitch. She is my mother. I don't think you realize that. She is my mother. How would you like it if someone talked about your mother like that? How would you like it if someone called your mom a bitch and stupid and worthless? How would you like that? I don't work with my mom. I don't well, have but how would problems. you like it? She is my mom. I know. She, she is. is my mom. And you I have respect know? for her. No, you do not. You have no respect for her. I don't have respect for you. I don't have respect for you either. There is no question that Manja Manja has major problems with the food, but the interpersonal problems of this restaurant is Chef Ramsay's biggest hurdle to overcome. We're scared of you, Trevor. I'm scared of you. And the relationship between Julie's daughter, Janelle, and Chef Trevor may be impossible to fix. You were throwing things at the wall. It doesn't involve you. I had tables saying, that guy is high, that guy, I'm scared to be in here right now. So, Janelle, could the customers hear him throwing things Yes, against? he was yelling and slamming shit and he was slamming pots. He was throwing nice against the cutting boards. Were you scared? Yeah, I was scared, and my table was scared too. Here we are with a business losing thousands of dollars a week, and you start shouting and screaming in the kitchen, petrifying the customers, petrifying the owner's daughter. Were you high? That day I was, yes, sir. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Judy. I didn't know that. What did you say? I didn't know that he was high that day. You know, I thought it was maybe once every six months. And I talked to him about his drug use on several occasions. And he said, I'm done. I'll never do it again. He promised for me. Obviously, I didn't know enough about drugs. And how long has this been like this? A good time. Mm -hmm. 12 months? Longer than that. Mm -hmm. And what's the substance? I didn't know. Uh, it's methamphetamines. Mm -hmm. So it's serious stuff. Are you attending meetings? No, sure. You're not? This is not about a chef and a, the owner's daughter falling out. This is, this is toxic. What are we waiting for? Someone to get hurt? It's, it's time to make some changes in this restaurant, and no. I'm, I'm ready. Trevor, this is not working for me anymore. I've had this conversation with you about your drug use for too many times. Let's become poison in the restaurant, and I can't do that. And you're fired. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sorry, I can't have this going on. I respect your honesty, but you cannot walk in here under the influence. I understand. On your downward spiral, start turning this place upside down. And you certainly can't cook whilst on that. You need help. And listen, everybody in this room has made mistakes, and you've made one of them. Yeah, sure. Um, Trevor, let's have a word outside together. Wow, that was tough. I talked to him. He said, I'm not doing that. I believed him, obviously. I didn't know. You need help, but I know. And you've got to get into treatment uh, quickly. I want you to get yourself home and get yourself treatment. I will. OK, bud. Take care. I really appreciate it. 
It'll be better for him. I didn't know he was doing drugs, and I'd, I would have, yeah. I didn't know. I'm embarrassed. I can't believe any of this went on. But I think having Trevor being so young and inexperienced on my line and me expecting him to know how to move this restaurant forward, it was a big mistake. I'm very nervous to go forward. I don't know what's going to happen from now. I just don't know. After learning that Manja Manja's head chef, Trevor, has been abusing drugs, Julie has decided to let him go. Now Chef Ramsay wants to make sure that Julie is committed to making big changes to putting her restaurant on a path to success. The atmosphere in here is dreadful. Everybody is at such a high stress level. OK. But with regards to Trevor, I, didn't know. I, I, I understand. I have a lot of experience with addicts, and he is in a bad place right now. He is not fit to be a head cook or a senior cook or a personal responsibility. I, I knew that I needed to let Trevor go. I knew that he was the cancer in the restaurant that was causing a lot of yeah. bad attitudes. OK, I respect your decision, but I would seriously like you to consider down the road, if he gets his act together, just keeping that door open. I will. He needs to step up and get clean. OK, I understand. But here's the thing. I need to know now that you, deep down inside, are seriously committed to change. I am absolutely committed to change. Absolutely, 100%. You need to have a better vision because you're so fragmented. I agree. And you're not focusing on anything. It's not the way to run a business. I'm too spread out. You weren't even cooking your food. No. We've got to change the food. The food has got to be changed. Good. It's shit. What other things did you think about that you want to change? I need to quit waiting tables, and I need to have better communication with my staff. That's a huge commitment. It is. What you just said. I can do it. You just said I is, can do this. It's true. It's true. I agree. I need to take care of this. We've got a, a gap to fill in the kitchen. Yes, we do. And I'm terrified. And this place needs a chef that can help run this business from the engine room and to get the business afloat and up and running and making more money. No, I, yeah, I, no, I agree. Absolutely agree with you. I'm going to make some calls and I'm going to get help. OK, I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. It's time to make some serious changes in this restaurant. I know I've been part of the problem, but I'm ready to go forward and make this restaurant successful. Now that Julie understands the necessity of dramatic changes to the restaurant, Chef Ramsay wants to show Julie the impact and importance of fresh ingredients. I'm going to cook, you're going to watch. OK. The two dishes we're going to make, a simple lasagna and a simple roast salmon. Have you ever functioned this restaurant without microwaves? No. Wow. And how many restaurants do you think functions more with their microwaves than they do with their ovens? That I don't know. No, not many at all. That's all changing as well. OK. I can't wait for Chef Ramsay to show me how a real, true kitchen is supposed to be run. He's going to teach me how to cook because we're doing it all wrong. So the exciting thing about lasagna is in the layers. Tomato, meat sauce, mozzarella, pasta. How difficult was that? It looks pretty easy. Five minutes. Pretty easy. Okay. What do you dislike about being in the kitchen the most? The stress of being behind the line. When you've got a great prep and you've got yourself organized, it becomes the most pleasurable and the most de-stressful thing you can ever do. With salt, a little pepper. Now, into the microwave for four minutes. Fuck off. Are you serious? <laughs> You're good at taking orders, but you've got a brain. <laughs> Use it. Okay, open up the fridge and take that out, please. What is that? Salmon. Yeah, what do you mean, salmon? Fresh salmon. How do you know it's fresh? Because I can tell by the look of it. It's got that dark pink color. Right. How do you cook salmon? They oh, cook it on the flat top. Now, cooking salmon this way is a lot easier than it is on that solid top. Once you've got a good color in salmon, turn it over once. That looks so much better. The practice you were doing beforehand was so much more difficult. You can do all these beautiful dishes so easy in a short amount of time and make them fresh. We are done with microwaves. We are done with frozen food. I am buying everything fresh. This is just a small sample of how exciting your Italian fare could be. And when you're the only restaurant within a 15 to 20 mile radius serving food like this, trust me, there should be a queue up outside the door. And um, we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. And we okay. all have to work as hard as we've ever had to reposition this restaurant. Yes. I know you've gone through a lot and there's a lot happening. Don't cry. But... I know, I'm distressed. What are you stressed about? Just the, this, all of it. It's stressful. Having that anxiety is normal. Bottling it up is not. Yeah, I've held it in for a 
long time. I can see that. We have your back. I know. We got you. Now you're sounding That's like a team, Mike. Now you're sounding like the way you should be supporting an owner. Good. Now that Trevor's gone, I did make some calls, and I have found a chef. OK? Oh, Someone to lead your kitchen. I'd like you to meet Don Wolf. How are you, buddy? You good? Yeah, I'm great. First of all, look at that smile on that face. <laughs> Colorado boy, local boy. Oh. Yeah, in Denver. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. He ran as an executive sous chef at a very reputable Italian restaurant in Denver. He has an encyclopedia of knowledge in conjunction with Italian cuisine. I've arranged for him to stay for the next two weeks and secure a new chef coming in. OK. Listen to this guy. I plan okay. on it. He's going to teach you everything he knows. Absorb it like a sponge. It's my pleasure. I'm ready. Get to know your new team. I will. How's it going? I'm Kevin. Pretty good. Kevin? Nice to meet good you. Good to meet you, man. Cooking is a whole different story for me now. We used to cook with microwaves. Now we cook, cook with food. ovens. Yeah. I'm going to grasp as much as I can right now and learn from Chef Don. We're going to learn everything. Oh, good. And it's, it's simple, and it's delicious. It is so amazing that Chef Ramsay got this new chef for me, and I just can't believe it. I'm over the moon. Mm. That's good. Confident in the dramatic changes that are coming from Anja Manja, Chef Ramsay has surprised Julie and the staff. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With a community event to encourage people to return to the restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am so grateful for you all to be here. We are making dramatic changes to your local Italian restaurants, and I know that you're going to love them. Hi, my name's Julie. I own Manja Manja. I am so excited to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming. The whole town's here. It's a great feeling that they're here to support us. In addition to the activities, and the sampling of some menu items. Very good. <laughs> Chef Ramsay has invited local dignitaries. Are we ready? To participate in a pasta eating contest. On your mark, get set, go! It was amazing. The crowd was all happy for us. Everybody stood in the race! they're actually realizing that we're trying to change things, and they're supporting it. Fresh bruschetta right here, yeah. Excellent. It is so delicious. I love it. Great flavor. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks. I can't wait to go to Manji Manji and try the new menu. It, it looks much better than it was before. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you. To your oh, please come. Everybody is saying they love the food. I am so excited. This is our chance to prove to everybody that Manja Manja is back. While a big part of yesterday was spent spreading the word about the new Manja Manja, last night Chef Ramsay's team worked around the clock and made a massive transformation to the dining room. Are you ready to see the new Manja Manja? Yes, yes. Uh, welcome. The new manja manja. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jump in. Oh wow. Oh my god. It's oh beautiful. Look at that. Holy cow. Oh my god. Oh, oh, my god. oh, oh my god. No way. Oh, Jump no. on in. Wow. wow. It looks, it so looks <laughs> stunning. It is. Oh. Right. Wow. Welcome to your new restaurant. Wow. I'm stunned. Gone is that bland beige color. And in its place, a spruce vibrant green. Wow. Cool. It's beautiful. Gone are those dreadful, dreary boots. We've replaced all the seating with these beautiful wooden chairs, which dramatically opens up this beautiful roof. Wow. I love the chairs. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. That's awesome. This is awesome. And you know what? With those boots gone, the flow of service should function so much better. Wow. I'm Overwhelmed. It's a warm comfort feeling in here right Doesn't now. It? Look at the wall. Before it was an eyesore. Now that we have beautifully made it blend right in. This is great. Breathtaking. Isn't it breathtaking? It really is. It's gorgeous. Look at the windows. Full length wooden blinds draped with wonderful taupe curtains. It is absolutely beautiful. 
It's so beautiful. And let's be honest, it does not look anything like fast food restaurant, no, right? No, not at all. I can't thank you enough. Did you still like the old decor that you said you were beautiful? No, of those... no, this is so much better. You sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I thought my old restaurant really looked good, but after seeing this, I must have been crazy. I'm excited. I'm really excited. The place looks absolutely amazing. It's inviting, feels like Woodland Park. People are gonna wanna come in here and enjoy themselves. The pictures are nice. It's really cool, too. I like this. This is probably the best present my mom's ever gotten in her entire <laughs> life. I've never seen her that happy before. To go along with a completely revamped dining room... Please take a copy of the menu and hand it down. Wow. Chef Ramsay has done his magic to the menu as well, with fresh Italian cuisine that is sure to be a hit with this tight-knit community. Visually, what do you think? Gorgeous, absolutely. It's beautiful. It screams, eat me, yeah? Absolutely. Let's start off with the bruschetta. Great little board for sharing. So whilst the guests are undecided what they're going to be having, hit the table with the bruschetta. Likewise, with the chef's antipasta a mixture of salamis, meats, cheeses, and some pickled vegetables. Those two should hit the table immediately. The spaghetti and meatballs, done with a rich tomato sauce, fresh basil, and spicy, delicious meatballs. Mm, yum. Manji is very own lasagna. Look at those layers. And guess what? Breaking news. It's coming from the oven. Not the microwave. Not the microwave. Yes. <laughs> Next to that, one of my favorites, pan-seared salmon, big hit. Served with a nice, fragrant lemon risotto. Simple. A uh, chocolate, molten lava cake, delicious, creamy, rich, sumptuous in the middle. Cut through, it just oozes. That's perfect. And let me ask you this, what percentage of this small menu is frozen? Well, I'm sure nothing. Not a frozen ingredient anywhere, not a microwave bean in size. You have to embrace change. Everything here is fresh. Now, to go along with your stunning food, we have a complete new range of flatware and dinnerware provided by Oneida. Right, go to speed, dig in. Mm, that's good. Isn't it? It's that sauce. I'm extremely excited to cook this new food. Like, it feels like I left Manja and went into a completely different kitchen. Wow. It's really good. So good. Tasting this new food compared to my old food, it's daylight and dark. This food has great flavor. I now realize that my other food, it was bland. This is delightful. I can't even put a plate in the microwave. They don't even fit. <laughs> it's minutes before the doors open. Come over, guys, please. Let's go to the dining room, shall we? And the morale in the restaurant is completely different than when Chef Ramsay first arrived. The important thing tonight is what? Getting the food out, making sure it all runs smooth. Communication. Yes. You don't send mistakes out of the kitchen. We're not going to even attempt to send anything out substandard. And hey, guess what? You're not going to be pushing any numbers tonight. <laughs> Four minutes, two minutes, cocktail sticks. You'll be cooking. Covering the saran wrap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just watch your sleeves. It's a real oven, so it's hot in there. <laughs> yeah. Are we ready? Yes, yes yeah? sir. Let's go, guys, yeah? All right. Let's make it a night to remember. Right this way. Here's our new fresh menu. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. While Chef Don will be working with Kevin behind the line. You're the expediter. Chef Ramsay wants Julie to be working in the kitchen as well. And he has a critical tip for her before the start of service. You've got this dreadful habit of rushing things. I know. You I... need to slow down. Okay. Rushing takes place in fast food restaurants. Right. You have something unique now. Okay. You need to understand that and nurse it. Okay. Anyone turns around and says, oh, we waited. No, they're not really waiting that long because it's cooked to order. Okay. Got to get that through in there, I yeah? I know, it's new, it's new. First ticket's coming in. Earth. We're working on nine calamari and an antipasti Fantastic. salad. Fantastic, thank you. Calamari's going down. Can you fire table four, please? You got it, boss. You, you have a fried artichoke going, right? And then yes. the next app is the meatballs. Come right up. Meatballs the working meatball hard. meatball app. Kevin, I need two fried artichokes and one calamari. Your first one's going down right now. Don't start the calamari. He's got four Caesar salads on there. Do you have an antipasto salad made? You're doing two and eight right now? Oh, my god. Kevin, you heard me on that fried artichoke? Yeah, it's in the oven. Yeah, you just asked a minute ago, uh, Julie. Give him time. Understand one thing. We're cooking food now, okay. not reheating it. Okay. So you have to cut these guys some slack. All right. But understand the difference, how we're cooking, right? Yes, I do. Thank you. Although it is very early in service, Chef Don is pushing orders out in a timely manner. 
spaghetti and meatballs right here. And customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. It tastes so fresh, it's delicious. This might be the best lasagna I've ever had. But about 40 minutes into service, Julie's fast food mentality is returning. Can I take this? Nope. She has lost a grip on what has been sent. How are we doing on the calamari and the artichoke? Already gone. And has fired too many orders too quickly. Appetizing the window, Julie. What are they for? You got two calamari. I don't have a ticket for these. That's what I'm. I'm a little confused. Creating confusion in the kitchen. Kevin, I need a chocolate lava cake. Chocolate lava cake going down. Don't hurry on them because they'll only like halfway through their food. Hey, who had the cakes? They gotta go out. What's wrong? They saw their food. But, but, but they're ready. I know. This is crazy. Get, get, get your mother. This is stupid. Mom, chef needs you. Oh, come on, Julie. Okay. Yes. You're firing. Come here. You're firing desserts on seven. They're still eating. So now you've just completely screwed us. I'll show you why. Okay. Look. They're ready. A, they deserve a gap in between entrees, appetizers, and desserts. This is table seven. Yeah, it's this okay. one. Okay. But they haven't finished the entree, that's yeah. all. Okay. I, I look, a chocolate molten okay. is not like taking ice cream out of the I freezer, understand. it's cooked to order. So they're still okay. eating their entree, and we're not going to ram them and stuff them like, like pigs. It is so important for my mom to follow through with what Chef Ramsay told her, or this place won't survive. Julie? Yes. That's the transition, understanding the weight. Okay. It's an experience now with this food. So you need to understand just the pace slows down a bit. Okay. Remember, we're at a different restaurant than we were uh, yeah, at the beginning of the week. I'll be very careful. I absolutely got the point. I have to remember, this isn't a fast food restaurant anymore. We are cooking everything fresh to order, and it takes time to get there. It's a different service. We're used to slamming food out, so yeah. this is different. Absolutely. What about you? Can you fire it? Absolutely. Tim, C-19. Are you ready for it, Andy? Yes. OK. Can you run that to five, please? Sure. Chef Ramsay's words have now clearly registered with Julie. So you're working on eight right now? I'm doing eight right now, yeah. And then yes. I'm doing eight, 15 and one right behind it? She is now managing the kitchen properly. Artichoke cards. Thank you. I need a runner. And understands that the operation of the new Manja Manja is completely different than what it was before. <laughs> and so is the appreciation for the food. This looks really fresh. I guess we'll have to make this part of our date night. It's been a really long time since I've seen this restaurant with so much energy and with be customers. Manja Manja is definitely back. Chris, how is everybody out there? Everything is very smooth so far, Chef. Good. They love it. Great. They love the food. Good they, to hear. They're thrilled. They just think yep. it's so delicious. Yeah. Right. Good job, you guys. No, good job, you. I saw a huge change in Julie. She was actually standing on the line, not screaming, just keeping everybody communicating. It's just like, you know, she was reborn. It was perfect. Very nice job. Nice job. Up top. It means the world to me that I finally have a successful restaurant. No more messing around in this restaurant. I'm the boss. I never thought I'd be standing here with a huge smile on my face. Me either, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, thank you. All of you. A incredibly successful relaunch. How do you feel? Great. Good. And so you should. And so you should. Good job. As dramatic as the change this restaurant has gone through, there was something else that was even more dramatic, and that was Julie. Uh, my darling, tonight, you took the reins, and you were in charge. You sounded and you looked like a boss. Good job. A really good job. Yeah, you did. Thank really you. Know. Know. Tremendous help back there. Oh, yeah, it thank was. You. It really was. Uh, yeah, she didn't swear either. Yeah. Huh? I did. <laughs> Slow down, and you're going to nail it. There was a really big change in my mom tonight. Before all of this started, you could tell my mom didn't really want to be here. She would curse, and she would not care if things went wrong, or she would just get frustrated. My mom really stepped up and really acted like the owner. I need you all to make a promise to me. We cannot go back. There'll be no shortcuts. No. No freezing. No microwaves. No microwaves. Thank you. You're absolutely right. Yes? Yes. yes. There's no going back. Hands up. Swear? Swear. Swear. Thank you. Please maintain these standards. I will. I promise. Make it happen, guys, yeah? Good job. Make sure you look after Mum. All right, I will. Thank you so much for Seriously, coming. Seriously, well done. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so yeah? much. I'm rooting for you. I hope so. OK. I'm, it's going to be great. You can do it. <laughs> okay. OK. Good night, guys. Well done. Thank you. Good night. Well done. Chef Ramsay did everything. There are just simply no words that can describe my thanks to him. I'm going to have good food, the word's going to get out, and I can come into my restaurant and be proud. <sighs> When I first got here, Monji Monji may have been the only restaurant in America that didn't use an oven. That's how bad it got. 
And on top of that, there was so much animosity between the staff members, Julie was completely lost. This has to be one of the biggest transformations ever on Kitchen Nightmares. But the good news is, the town of Woodland Park may only have one Italian restaurant, but right now, they've got a great one. Wow, a drive through Italian. Jesus, that's the first for me. He smells really good. He really does. One more thing I have to do. Somebody's at the window. One microwave to go, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You manage? We'll see. That's it? It doesn't fit that way. Thank you. Here. Close your, there we close go. your window. There. Hold on. Close your window. Close Good girl. <laughs> Janelle? Janelle! Janelle! Mommy! Oh, hold it at the bottom, darling. OK. That's it. And I've got the weight. I've got the load. Oh, okay. OK, just shove it in there. OK. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> Excellent. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, that was funny. After Chef Ramsay left, the positive mood and the positive feedback continued <laughs> at Manja Manja. Julie ended up extending Chef Don's stay. Fire on table 10. I need a lasagna and a short rib. Lasagna's got five minutes. And with his leadership, the kitchen is much better organized. And Julie is even now spending time behind the line. We have a beta Caesar and a calamari. Calamari's coming up. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Julie is a changed woman. And she finally has what she always wanted, a quaint, premier Italian restaurant in the picturesque town of Woodland Park, Colorado. Really good. Thanks for coming Thank in. You, yeah. Thank you. I'm Thanks for coming. Good. All the criticism that I got from Chef Ramsay was, in the long run, very good. I have a better restaurant. Business is great. It's going to be a wonderful year. I know it. <laughs>Redondo Beach, California. Just blocks from the ocean, is Zania Flame & Grill, opened in 2009 by the aunt and niece team, Faye and Brenda. Mama's falafel for table five. I'm Egyptian. I came to United States at 18. My first experience was uh, catering truck for 16 years, and it was really successful. But I always wanted to buy my own restaurant. It was always my dream to have my own business. And when the door opened about opening a restaurant with Faye, I decided to give her a call. Since she had kitchen experience and I had management experience. When I put it meat somewhere in the grill, do not move it. I just checked them. It's done. The reason why this place is going downhill is because of the drama between Faye and Brendan. Actually, it all this was on this side. These were on no, this side. This They're not here. cooking. Families don't want to come here because why would you want to come to a restaurant with arguing and stress? It's embarrassing. Oh my god. Faye is definitely the scary boss here. She's the one who pushes people, screams at people. You guys need to take the meat when the order comes out. She'll tell the staff, shut up. Be quiet. Get out of the kitchen. Then move. Move from here. Stop arguing with me. I don't want to hear it. Zip it. Move. Move. Don't worry about that right now. Do not move the tickets. Faye needs help, but she doesn't want to accept it from anybody. I know what I'm talking about, you guys. Faye doesn't trust me to run this place. The salad is not taking You see me standing here doing nothing? She sees me as her niece and not her partner. It's a complete joke. I'm obviously doing stuff. Brenda doesn't seem to care anymore. I'm going to go sit down in my booth. I just want to sleep. She's be on the phone. How are you? Taxi friend. Where is Brenda? Right now, with Brenda, just laziness. I want you to be a stronger person, but that's your personality. It's not that I'm be not, just because I'm not yelling at them. And it's not yelling. I'm not, I want you to yell. You know what, Faye? Brenda and my mom have a bad relationship. I'll fix it. Fix what? It's correct. It's not correct. All the problems come from the restaurant. You become like so frustrated, you're like, the hell with it. I don't care anymore. It's so upsetting. I, this restaurant has put a strain on my entire family. I really have to go. I'm, I'm done. Nobody understands how much stress I'm under. I've borrowed from my parents a little over 60 grand. If the restaurant fails, I feel like I would have failed my family. But you know what? We really need help. If I don't smell, I'm going to explode. I'm going to cry. The restaurant is my life. 
but it became a burden. It seems like it's slipping away. And I feel like if this is go, I won't have anything left. It should never be like this. Both Faye and Brenda have requested meetings with Chef Ramsay prior to him arriving at the restaurant. How are you? Brenda, right? Yes. He realizes that this is a perfect opportunity to get both sides of the story. It's Faye, right? Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Likewise. Uh, good to see you too. It's an honor to meet you. Well, it's, uh, it's a pleasure seeing you. And Thank you. Obviously, I wanted to reach out and have a word before I went inside the restaurant. Yes, I want to tell you some issues that I have with my business partner, okay, my great. niece, Brenda. Tell me about the restaurant. How did it start? Faye had this idea and saw a location that she really liked and approached my mom, and she said that I would possibly be interested. It kind of just took off from there, you know, and it seemed like it was the right thing to do. And are you 50-50? Yes, we're 50-50 partners. Right. So explain the roles of the restaurant. I shop, I cook, oh, yeah. I clean. You're the chef as well? Yes. Wow, you're busy. So if you cook, <laughs> shop, clean, what the hell does Brenda do? <laughs> Um. Basically, there's different days where I am serving and there's days where I'm on the line with Faye. And it can get a little overbearing back there. Because Faye, she's definitely a control freak. She doesn't have confidence in me stepping into the kitchen and being able to help her out. And she was just like, no, you're not doing it right. And I sometimes feel like I'm an employee, not an equal. I have to prepare everything for Wednesday when I take off. Every, literally everything. Why can't Brenda prep for her one day running that business independently? Um, she doesn't know. She stayed out with friends and she's very tired. The kids tell me when I'm not there, we sit in the computer, watch TV or what? watch. How does the business run on those nights when your auntie's not there? Very smoothly. Customers are happy with the food? Definitely. Things flow easy. I feel like it's a disaster. How yeah. do you know this is a disaster? The customer come to me and tell me wow. what happens. Brenda's cooking. In your absence, how would you give that out of 10? Six. Six. I give myself 10. Oh, wow. If she wasn't your niece, would you fire her? Yes. If this wasn't your auntie, would you fire her? Yes. How long can the business continue? I'm giving myself about a year. Really? Yes. Wow. Our numbers are horrible. Oh, I see. How much do you put into the business? We put about 60 grand each. Wow. I'm Good. afraid and scared that I will lose this in this time of my life. I don't see myself going to work for someone and even get hired. I really need Chef Ramsey to change Brenda. But I have doubt that anything will change. Brenda, it's not going to change. OK, I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank okay? you so much. Thank you, Diane. I'll see you back there. You. After hearing two completely different stories from the owners about why Zaina is failing, Chef Ramsay arrives at the restaurant, anxious to see where the problems lie. So fresh flavor of food, seven days a week. I'm glad it's fresh. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name's Amel. Amel, nice to see you. And this is? Mark. OK. This is my son. What do you do? Help around with everything from cooking to busing, serving, okay. seating. Right. Well, good to meet you. Uh, let me sit down and have a quick bite to eat, get up to speed, and I'll uh, catch up after. <laughs> Thank Enjoy. You. Oh, boy. Would you like to have a seat on the couch? Excellent. Uh, ooh, sinking down here. <laughs> I feel like I'm back on my grandma's couch. Why have we got such high couches in such a small restaurant? I'm not quite sure. I... Wow, OK. Um, now, how long have you been here? I've been here for four and a half years. So you've been here since the beginning? Yes. The two owners, do they run the business together? How does that work? Faisa works here more uh, more days than Brenda does. Oh, pretty? Yeah. But aren't they 50-50 partners? They're supposed to be 50-50, but I would say it'll probably be a 75-25 difference. Oh, wow. Faisa is definitely the 75% of the work. And what does the other partner do? Brenda's more laid back. She prefers more talking to the customers instead of being in the back with the kitchen. Oh. So who's the boss? The scary boss would be Pfizer. Pfizer? Is it Faye or Pfizer? She said to me her name was Faye, so... Usually I call her Pfizer, or sometimes when it's busy, I'll call her Faye. There's people who call her Fufu. Fufu. I'll stick to Faye. <laughs> She's scary. She is hell on wheels. Wow. 
If it gets busy, no matter what it is, you will hear yelling in the dining room. Everything that happens back there, our customers see, our customers hear everything. Wow, seriously? Yeah. Faye has an extremely short temper. If something goes wrong, all hell will break loose. How'd you go with Mark? It must be hard when you're working with the young son. Yes. If he sees something that's dirty, he will leave it for somebody else to take care of. Is he lazy? When it comes to cleaning, he doesn't do it full-heartedly, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so he leaves a mess for you when you come in the next day? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for the insights. I'm going to look at everything and... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Mediterranean Bistro, an exquisite dinning adventure. <laughs> wow. Where's Mark? Mark? Oh, Mark, um, he's... Did you ask me for Please, honey. Thank you. He wants to talk to you. Yes, sir. I'm out. You come with him. Go a little quiz. Are you ready for this? How do you spell bistro? How do you spell? Bistro. B-I-S-T-R-O. Uh-huh, good. And how do you spell dining? D-I-N-N-I-N-G. <laughs> so you wrote this menu. <laughs> Dining is D-I-N-I-N-G. OK. <laughs> Has anyone else mentioned it? We have a lot of customers who have um, pointed it out to us. Right. Um, thank you, Mark. OK, Mel, what would you recommend? We do uh, four different dips. We'll do hummus, yeah. baba ganoush. Give me the four different dips. I'll go for that, yeah. OK. Let's go for the father beans, the kiwi roll. OK. Uh, and then let's go for the Zeno combo plates. All right. Definitely. Thank you, my darling. Oh, you're welcome. I'll place your order right now. Yeah, first impressions? The place is sold us. Man. Oh. Jesus Christ. It's like dominoes. They just keep on coming down. Why is that? Honestly. Why? Oh, Jesus. Man. Wow. Are you ready? Three kibbe fava beans and Zena combo. Okay. Let's rock and roll. I am very proud of my food, and I stand by it. It's fresh. It's made to order. Chef Ramsey is no way he would dislike my food. The appetizer is ready. Just take it out. I'm confident. Our food's good. Damn. While the owners continue to blame each other for the restaurant's problems, the appetizer is ready. Chef Ramsey is anxious to taste the food. <sighs> So this is our combination appetizer. OK. Wow. Why is all that oil on there? We usually drizzle the top of our appetizers with drizzle olive oil. Or flood. Um, usually we drizzle, but it looks like there's a little extra put on. Yeah, I'll say. Can I have a teaspoon, please, darling? Of course. Thank you. Wow. You drizzle sparingly with a touch of oil, but look at it. I've got little spoon pools, little miniature bathtubs full of oil floating on the side. It's gross. Dish first. Just put this oil in, please. Don't. Oh yeah. Hey Mark, he says stop staring at him because you're creeping him out. You gotta be kidding me, man. It's a little dish. Oh. Teaspoon of oil. Well, who put the oil on? Um, I'm not quite sure. I wasn't back there. Wow. This is it hummus? My God. It's so thin. It's just liquid. Is that normally that runny that the hummus? I've been told it depends on the garbanzo beans. Really? We're gonna start blaming a fucking bean for the hummus? <laughs> There's times where the hummus will be extremely thin, or there's times where the hummus will be overly thick. Yeah, it's not the beans' fault. It's the chef's. I feel like I'm always apologizing for the food. No, we're done. I'm done with that. OK. But I'm not a chef. It's out of my control. We'll put the oil on top of the appetizer. I didn't do the appetizer. I did it. I said it's a lot of oil. It's tradition to put a good amount of oil on hummus. So for Chef Ramsay not to like it is a shocker to me. I should have made it for him. It's a disgusting busing station. It looks dreadful. There has to be a much better place to put dirty dishes than that. That's bad. Amel, it's weird how you just drop all those dirties there. Yeah. 
That's where our dishes go. Why not just walk five feet and put the dirty plates inside the plate wash? I don't know. How difficult would it be to walk straight into the kitchen and put them in there? Not hard at all. Chef Ramsay is right. But every time I try to open my mouth, every time I have a suggestion, I basically get told to shut up. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. Baba beans is ready. OK, I'm coming to get it. Oh. Baba beans. And who put the Z on, then? What's, what's the Z? The Z for Zena, kind of a design. Looks like someone's puked up on my plate. Oh, come on. Does that look appetizing to you? Yeah. Doesn't look too appetizing. It doesn't look appetizing at all, no. OK, thank you. No problem. Uh, that looks like the inside of a diaper. I mean, it's so bad. Jeez. She's a problem. It looks like someone threw up. <laughs> OK. Tell him, enjoy your meal. And um, I'm done there, darling. That, uh, yeah. One mouthful, too much. All right, I'll get I'll that out say. of your way. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. One thing I can confirm, it tasted the way it looked. Dreadful. Nope. Not a winner. OK, whatever. You guys, this is crazy. I don't agree with Chef Ramsay about some of the items. That's a first. I will defend my food to Chef Ramsay because I know how healthy and delicious it is. Chef Ramsay has only sampled a few dishes, but is already questioning the food. That looks like the inside of a diaper. And owners Faye and Brenda are questioning the feedback. Food never comes back. That's the first. People always rave about our food. Whatever. If you're telling me my food's not good, I'd love to see what's good. Who put the should be, could be back? I did. They're gonna be dry. That's why I moved the one that's cooked already. Kibbe roll, Mark? I don't want to serve you. Why not? It's so fucking rude. You should be confident in what you do. So these are kibbe rolls. Describe the dish. Kibbe rolls. It's a bulgar wheat shell with a sirloin ground beef and pine nuts in the middle. Thank you, Mr. Sunshine. Fresh? Uh, kind of. Wow. What does that mean? She'll have them like prepped for the week, like uh, one week ahead, because it takes so much time in prepping. They taste. Are they frozen? Huh? Yeah, they're frozen. Yes, sir. Do you know what it says on the front of the restaurant on the banners outside? About the catering? No. Go outside. Have a quick look. Okay. Read it and come back in. We'll have a chat. Damn. I know we can't spell, but let's hope he can fucking read. Jesus. What did it say? Care about quality and taste. OK, great. What else did it say? Begin with F. Begin with F? I didn't read it for quality and taste, and oh, I was just ashamed. There's three Fs there. Now read it properly and come back and tell me what it says. No problem. Have a look. Whatever you say. Oh, man. Right, three Fs. Three Fs. Fresh, flavorful food. Right. And you're telling me now my appetizer is frozen because we make a bolt at the beginning of the week. Yeah. I just read that, literally entering the building, so I don't expect anything frozen. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so your sign outside says fresh, flavorful food. So, yeah. yeah but this is frozen. You knew by the taste. The kibbe, you cannot f uh, do it fresh. You're not going to like what he has to say. I stand by the kibbe because we really use good ingredients. I don't see in any Arabic home anyone can make them differently. The chicken's almost ready. It's kind of not cooking on that side. I didn't want to burn it. It's not burning. I need to mark it, and it's done. If it's done, it needs to be off the grill. Well, it still so needs it to get be marked. Overdone. It's not overdone. It is. It's not. Maybe you should be the one all the cooking then. Doing drama for nothing. Faye is over my shoulder micromanaging and just constantly bossing us in the kitchen. There's no time for burning meat. I'm just over it all. Can you take this, please? <laughs> One item I could stand behind. 
This is our Zena combo plate. No, thank you, though. Wow. Instantly, you can see it's dry, slicing in there. Mm. Wow. And this one is the... That's a, just a regular uh, beef kebab. The meat is just, like, it's boiled. It's just tasteless. Everything's so overcooked. We try to make our meat medium, but that looks uh, medium well, well done. It's drier than Mark's personality. <laughs> and the kofta, sadly, is overcooked and dry. That's drier than the sands around in the pyramids of Egypt. That is dreadful. And the chicken is blend. Is the chicken fresh or is that frozen? The chicken is frozen. What a shame. Who cooked my lunch today? That would be a mixture of Faye and Brenda. I'm pretty, I think they've um, tag teamed on, on the dishes. I suppose when you tag team, you'd expect it to be twice as good, but this one's twice as bad. Uh, darling, I'm done. Well, that's disappointing. Thank you, darling. Wow. Trust me, this has been a huge, huge disappointment. There's not been one thing that he said he liked. Not even one item, huh? Let's, uh, let's come over, please. Wow. I don't know where to start, really. Um, Faye, Brenda, I'm so disappointed. The atmosphere's flat, the decor's drab, and I'm sat on the corner of a ridiculous cushion opposite a large container of dirty shit. They've never done that before. That's what's bothering me today. Um, excuse me? Um, we do that every week. I believe you and Vanessa use buckets, don't you? Well, don't put the buckets on the floor. Well, it doesn't matter if it's on the floor. I don't think that's the issue. I think the fact that the buckets in view they of the customers. Like they walk inside the kitchen with them. But we have been told to use a bucket. I always asked you guys to use a bucket so stuff doesn't spill all over the place. But we've never said to put it on the floor. Yeah, you use the table or the, one of the chairs and you take them back inside when they almost fall. But they're still in front of the we customers if we leave them, them, them on the chair. Put them or in the floor. I'm a little confused. Do we leave them on the floor? Never. Yes. Wow. But set all that aside, I've just had a bad experience. And I felt the food was below standard. The hummus was runny, very liquidy. Why so much oil on there? I have Arabic customers okay. that like loads of olive oil. When customers want more oil, don't assume that everyone wants more oil. I don't even think it was olive oil. What was that oil in there? Olive oil. It was olive oil. Wow. That must be cheap. Um, <laughs> what's funny? Um, our product's not cheap. Your product's not cheap. OK. So what's so funny? Well, you said it was cheap. Uh, it tasted cheap. It's not expensive, but okay. it's not cheap. I'm not going to argue with you, but you sit there on your ass, laughing your head off, thinking it's funny. I'm not going to get upset because of what you say. No. I'm just going to smile about it. It's, it's your opinion. Well, how old are you? 26, sir. I'd expect that if you're 16. Because right now, Mark is very far from funny. Can I continue about my lunch? For me, a kofta, when you bite into it, it just bursts with flavor. This thing was dry beyond belief. But this is number one seller. This is what my customer eats every time they walk in. But Faye, chicken was dry and the beef was dry. Is that protein frozen? We buy it fresh. I buy it fresh. We and marinate, and I marinate it. Buy it fresh. And I so have there's a to system. Freeze. Prep, freeze, and cook. I don't know why you think customers would leave their homes to come and eat frozen food. I don't have a walk in freezer and I don't have a walk in cooler. Okay. So, so my option is to freeze it, then cook it. How long have you been functioning like this? 18 months, okay. two years. Yeah, it's been like this since day one. I just wanted to let you know that I don't have the help to, to prepare when I need help. Right. I cannot cut myself in half, have my half here behind the counter and the other half sure. inside. But Faye, have you given up? No. Do you want to give up? No. I have nothing else. I can fight by myself. What? I need help. From your family? But yes. So who's not pulling their weight? None of them. Chicken was dry. But this is number one seller. Faye not only believes that her food is impeccable. I need help. She also believes that she is the only one in this restaurant who is putting in a real effort. So who's not pulling their weight? None of them. I, I, you don't let anybody help you. Brenda, what's going on? Is your auntie on her own? She's not on her own. She's not. 
she has to have her hand in everything. She has to marinate. She has to cut. That's not true. That is true. When is the last time you cut the chicken or lamb or beef and you marinate it? Many, many times. When? Many times. No, that's a lie. And many you know times. That. It's no, not a lie. a lie. I have always no. stand with you in the back and ask you, show me how to do I this. Say, show me how I to do that. I always tell you what, bring a piece of paper and bend it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't say, hey, come here, let me show you how to do this. So if I'm ever off, you could do it. You've not been shown the recipes? No. Um, she never asked, so she see me. That's not true. She see me when I'm I always go She's in, what can I help with? with? Almost every time I'm here. Many times I brought in my laptop and I said, let's go through the recipes. If she came and tell me I wanted to learn this, I would never tell her no. I will you never tell her say, no. hey, I have to do it. They do, can bring a piece of paper and bring any time when I'm doing something and write what I do. That's not true. When was the last time you were shown how to cook something? Never? Minor stuff in the kitchen. Seriously? Like appetizers, but that's pretty much it. Really? Yes. Five years? Yes. You two don't sound like a niece and an auntie. When was the last time your auntie gave you a compliment about something? I don't get compliments. When she cooks, all I hear from the customer is complain because she there's, only, there's, nobody she gets only cooks when I'm not here. Just the last week, on Wednesday, I was off. On Thursday, a customer walks in just to complain about how horrible the food was when I'm not here. I've never And I'm been not told saying that. because you don't take it then well you from should me. Tell me. I, I told you so many times you don't take it well from how, me. Brent. When did you tell me? When? No, when the falafel is dry. And the was falafel burned. was perfect. I got so many feedback. That's not true. I'm very picky how everything's cooked on the grill. That's not Don't true. Don't believe me, ask the servers. The server cooks the food when you're here most of the time. No, they don't. Do you, you don't cook all the time when she's here? No. No, I want her to answer. So I sit when on I'm my busy. ass when everybody else is working? Yes, and I tell you find something to do. I've offered to cut chicken multiple You're times for free, not. and I was told that I wasn't allowed to do it. But I'm confused. You want them to do it, but then they say you don't let them do it. No, they don't want to. That is That's true. Not That's true. not true. God honest truth. That's not true. No, no. I offered. I wasn't no, allowed to do did. it. I offered she to, for, to learn. For I offered to work for free to learn how to cut the chicken and help her during the week. I don't want you to be with me in the kitchen. No, I'm saying I you told me. I don't want you to be with me in the kitchen, and that's why I will never tell you anything. I'm afraid that she gets hurt when she's working her regular shift and not even cooking. She's hurting herself. I don't usually hurt myself. I haven't I need a bandage. Every day, Emma needs a bandage. I've never poked myself with a knife here. Emma, you ask for bandage all the time. No, I really don't. Wow. In the end, it's not my job to cook. I don't get paid to cook. I don't get paid to do inventory. I don't get paid any extra to do anything. But as a family, we do it just you because do we my care inventory? about the I've done the takeout it's inventory. I call it's inventory. for I do the she didn't bread. Say your inventory. I do the bread inventory. Maybe a few times, but not all the time. Not all the time because I have my own job to do and when I come in and the dining room's dirty, my first thing to do Why is. Why is the take dining room dirty? Because the staff no, um, some people... from the night before don't clean. Really? When it comes to cleaning, Mark does not do it. There's a little bit more lenience. Don't, okay. say, no. don't say that shit. Don't point fingers. Because that shit happens. I've came right after okay. you swept Mark, and I've swept. I'm trying I'm to tell you something. By far, she does way more of her duties but it happens more than both anybody ways. else. He's no, not it's not lazy. No, he's not. He's not lazy. Actually, he works the busiest nights. He works the busiest nights, but when it comes to bussing and cleaning I'm and pulling he his rope, he doesn't it pull it. Movie. Mark does not pull his rope when it comes to his duties. If you want to start pointing because fingers, Brenda, no. I was going to keep my mouth shut and not say shit about anyone. When you sit on your fucking phone, we're cooking, serving, and you're sitting. Negative. And if, also, I I'm, need, not say if I'm gonna else, sit down and actually okay. put food it, in my mouth, when, when, when you're here for five hours, like you always do. When you're here for five hours? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not here for five hours. You are. This impromptu staff meeting has gone from Brenda and Faye pointing fingers at each other. No, when the falafel is dry, the was falafel burnt. was perfect. To the blame game with the entire staff. There's a little bit more lenience. Don't, okay, don't no. say that shit. I'm, don't point fingers. Finish? Including Faye's son, Mark. If you want to start pointing because fingers, Brenda, when you sit on your fucking phone, we're cooking, serving, and you're sitting. Negative. Whatever. Go ahead, walk out like you always do. When you're here for five hours? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not here for five hours. You are. Oh, whatever. Uh, 
wasn't gonna talk shit about anybody, but okay. I'll be yelled at, taking food to the third table over by there. Who? By Faisa. She will scream at me as I'm walking. Because I ask, I ask the TV to be off. No, it has nothing to do with the TV. Like These are different issues. I have to scream at you, turn off the TV because it has some bumping and grinding and whatever is going on on TV. And it pisses me off because I walk from inside. Bumping and grinding, I'm what? There's no bumping and grinding video video channel. The solution Brenda have to change your shift because I voice my opinion. I change the shift because you guys constantly bump heads and you constantly get into these great arguments in this open Not kitchen really. in the dining room. It's, it's in front of customers? In front yes. of customers. Wow. Um, I need to see this place working tonight. Just do what you normally do so I can have a chance of getting up to speed to see how this place functions. I'm going to get some fresh air. What a lunch. I'll be back later. Thank you, sir. Wow. And I thought the problems were just the food. I can't handle this. Nobody here is perfect. Nobody here is perfect. You just make it seem like when Mark and Vanessa are here, it happens when all of you us know, are here. But you, you guys don't pull your weight. Nobody pulls their weight. And I that's what the wish, problem is. I wish that we have a camera roll when ML is working. Here. She works. I never, I never Nobody told you here she works work. like the way she works. Her mouth, yes, I agree. I agree. But when it comes to her work, she goes the extra mile. Her mouth is what gets her in trouble. She's an awesome worker, she and she is. needs to know that too she, to I work better. I always tell her. You that. know what? Nobody gets compliments here, Faye. Nobody. I tell her, thank you. We have a great night. Thank you. Have a good night. She, of course, she doesn't tell you. I tell her that, but she comes back and cry about things. Amel is not my problem. What my problem is, is what he said about the food. Anybody hungry? I'm eating my frozen food. Anybody want to eat frozen food? <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing about it. It's not funny. Ironically, the only thing that Faye and Brenda agree on is the food. I don't want this to burn because I don't have time to make more. It's not going to burn. Unfortunately, aside from their issues with each other, that is the restaurant's biggest problem. OK, are we ready? Ready or not, I have to be ready. What can I get started for you today? Oh, can I get an order of the falafel and oh. garlic sauce? Definitely hummus. No hummus? Doubt. Yeah. I'll be right back. OK, let me just explain to me how the uh, line uh, works. OK. The tickets come out, and we start to pull whatever meats, and uh, we start cooking. Wow. Hi, okay, don't let me stop you. OK, table one, spicy hummus and beef shawarma with Zaina. I got it. Brenda, when you do the spicy hummus, put more chili. That's why I cut these jalapenos. Use them, please. We're giving them spicy hummus, babe. It's always spicy made the same. Spicy. Whatever. Hummus, it still looks very watery, though. Is this it here? Yes. How often is that made? Every few days. This is number one seller, so within just two, three days, it's finished. Right. That's disgusting. <laughs> this is bad. That hummus is awful. It's hot, and why is it so runny? The consistency could be better. Yeah, yeah. just a little bit. Sorry for judging. How are we, ladies? Welcome. Hummus, how's that? Bland and runny. Uh, my apologies. It didn't have any flavor at all, and it was thin. So runny. runny. <laughs> Thank you. Fresh food, seven days a week, my ass. He's leaving? I don't think Gordon Ramsay likes us. Well, you're complaining about the spicy hummus. They say it's not spicy. I can't believe this, Brenda. When people ask you for a spicy hummus, they want a spicy hummus. Enough. I don't need something explained to me three times. He's here. Yay. With Chef Ramsay seeing so many customers unsatisfied with the same watery hummus that he had at lunch, he has returned from a trip to a nearby supermarket. I'll show them how good the hummus is. With a plan. Shh. Mum's the worst. Mum's the worst. Yes. There we are. Ladies, there we are. Some fresh hummus. Gents, the same for you. Thanks. My apologies. Sorry. Thank you. Way too much oil. He's cleaning tables for us? That's for you to share. That's good. Much better. He keeps taking stuff and moving it. I don't know what's going on. Man, it's working. Creating a buzz here. They're loving it. Holy crap. I'm running out. That's good. Mm. Better? Yeah. Got it. Who would have thought that store-bought hummus would be high in demand? 
How was that? Very good. This is better. Yeah, Much yeah. better. That had flavor. The other stuff. Brenda, all the chicken is done. Just give me a second. I'm making the damn salad. The chicken was just, that was nasty. Dry. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Um, no, 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 no. They're ordering Listen. complete new entree. She said she didn't like it at all. What happened to it? She said the chicken didn't taste good at all. Oh, really? It's dry. Is it supposed to be minced like that? This is exactly the way it's served everywhere I know. I never, okay. ever have someone return to chicken okay. shawarma. Well, not from the land. We have from the land. Don't let me stop you. Let's call them a liar. I never have a complaint of dry or overcooked shawarma. I tasted most of the shawarma, and I know how delicious it is. Can I go ask them why they didn't like anything or like what their opinion is? Because uh, that's just do what you think it's right. good. Because that's just this is never happens before. Hello, ladies. How are you today? You've sent back everything, so I just wanted to come and we just didn't live like in the area. It. What did you not like about the items? Mm. The chicken shawarma tasted like rubbery. Okay. And this was like, like vinegary and mushy. Was the flavor? It just wasn't. It was, really was it for you? Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. you guys are done. We're good. Whatever. All of a sudden, people are food critics. What did they say? They thought the shawarma was rubbery. Our dolmas taste like vinegar. Stuff never came back before. Never. Whatever. They don't like it, they don't like it. Wowza. God help me. Beef kebab, is it ready? Ready. Ready. Medium. This is the medium. No, it's raw. Beef is still cooking for that plate. I'll fix it. Leave it, leave it. Seriously, do what you always do. I'm fed up with Faye dominating in the kitchen. It's really hard to deal with. This one's like hard as a rock and I got medium rare. That one's raw. Half of this beef is well, half of this beef is raw. But these are medium. If I cook them more, they will not be medium anymore. But one of them was raw. That's what I'm trying oh, to do. Stop commenting on everything, please. I don't know why you're acting like I'm the one who's doing it. I can't handle this. I'm out. Why does he quick to jump down your throat? Why is that? I don't Why know. Not? If you haven't noticed, it happens to everybody who comes back here, even Brenda. Wow. Bloody hell. Ay, ay, ay. It's really rare. You know, just go ahead. You can just take it. OK. I'm good. Oh, cheers. This is supposed to be medium, and it's rare. Let me see, Mac. OK, that's cooked. That is wrong. I wasn't talking to you, Emma. Oh, man. Redo it. It looks like ever shit. Take, we ever serve any night? We serve this? Seriously, man. Making me lose it. Oh, my God. Flaming girl. Flaming fucking mess. Oh, you want to scream? That's disgusting. It's frozen. We're done. How are we? How's the food? It is stone cold. Yeah, I had that for lunch, and it wasn't pleasant. My apologies. Thank you. The customers have given a very clear verdict on the food at tonight's dinner service. So Chef Ramsay decides to move on to an inspection of the rest of the kitchen, including the food storage. Freezers are busy. Man. Wow. There must be three to four weeks worth of prep in there. Is that? Does that look appetizing? Mediterranean. It's not. Man. This one? Kiwi mix. Leftovers in a home kitchen. No date. My god. Ugh. Disgusting. God, what a mess. This stuff has been in there so long, it's all freezer burns. Any chance of any flavor has gone. A bit like the flame on the grill. Just boxes of meat prepped in bulk. They say fresh, flavorful food. My ass. I say frozen, frozen, frozen. That's gross. It's dinner service at Zena. It's raw. Beef is still cooking for that plate. I'll fix it. Leave it. Leave it. Seriously. Oh, I want to scream. And while Faye and Brenda continue to argue in the open kitchen, boxes of meat prepped in bulk, Chef Ramsay is uncovering some alarming practices in the back kitchen. My God. Which include a massive amount of frozen food. Fresh salmon. Oh, shit. Frozen salmon. Ugh. What is that? Welcome to my Mediterranean flaming grill. Pitta bread bag. There's like lamb in there. Look at that. Ugh. Defrosting frozen meat with warm water. What a mess. Chicken shawarma. Ugh. Does this lady really know how to run a restaurant? I don't think so. The logic has left the building. This is too many orders and none of them on the grill. I said you took all I the meat. I took out lamb. OK, it's not on the grill. Well, it disappeared. 
Can I, can I show you something? Just two things? Sure. Just to talk to you in private? Sure. Yes, I just want to show you something okay. very quickly. What do you want back there for? This was in the sink in a bowl of water. We run the water on it to defrost it. Running hot water on it, what does that do? It's not hot water. I run cold the water. It's warm on the outside and solid in the middle. So when it's different colours like that, do you know what that means? The meat is cooked. Even before you start turning this into kofta, you're screwed. One more thing. What's this here? What are you doing on here? I'm defrosting some chicken. And why are you defrosting that? I marinated it yesterday, and I didn't have enough space in the fridge, so I put inside the freezer. I disagree about the meat. Freezing the food, it doesn't make it go bad. I really don't get what he's saying 100%. Some of those customers tonight. The food that came back, were the customers right or were they wrong? I never, since I opened, they have that much food came back. Never. I don't think you understand how far you've slipped. Get real. I am. No, you're not. Why aren't your customers coming back to your restaurants? Fake. Hey. I don't know. They loved my food, they loved my smile. You're not being honest. You're not being honest with yourself, and you're not being honest with your customers. No. Honest. Your customers were complaining about the hummus, the dips. They weren't very excited. So I went and made some. Stay there. What is that? It's delicious hummus. Can you taste the difference? Yes, the texture. Now I have a confession to make. I actually walked to a store and bought it. You need to be 10 times better than store-bought hummus. Otherwise, what's the point of running a restaurant? Tonight was a shock to me. Like, wow, why everything is coming back? There is certain plates I I'm very proud of and it came back. But it's not good enough. What you're doing is so wrong. And unfortunately, because you're surrounded by family members, you've convinced yourself and them that what you're doing is right. Well, I'm sorry. Flaming grill, it's not. Extinguished grill, it is. And the problems, Faye, are inside. Do you want this business to continue? I feel like I'm hanging by a thread. There's no point of running this. and saying tomorrow would be a better day. That better day is not coming. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I don't think you understand how far you've slipped. Get real. I am. No, you're not. Why aren't your customers coming back to your restaurants? Hey. I don't know. Tonight was a shock to me. Like, wow, why everything is coming back? There is certain plates I I'm very proud of, and it came back. But it's not good enough. What you're doing is so wrong. Flaming grill, it's not. Extinguished grill, it is. And the problems, Faye, hey, are inside. Do you want this business to continue? I feel like I'm hanging by a thread. There's no point of running this. I've been praying and saying tomorrow would be a better day. That better day is not coming. <laughs> I can see the sadness. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed. No, no, please don't be overwhelmed, but just answer this for me. Do you want to continue? 
I do. This is all I have. I'm just burned out. I overwork. No, no. But are you 100% sure that you want to continue in this business? I love what I do. Tonight it didn't show because I really didn't love the way things were going. Okay, um, I'm getting out of here. I want you to change your attitude because you can't change what you're doing. We have no chance in trying to change this restaurant. Yes. I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. I honestly have nothing left if I lose here. This is it. This is my life. And if it doesn't work... I don't know what to do. You have two seconds. Uh, yeah, that was rough. Rough. And I'm going to call it as I sit. You guys are just go through the motions. And when something goes wrong, you fall out with your auntie, she falls out with you, and all of a sudden, you then just go back into your own corners. And the only people suffering are the customers. All night long, the problems are on the outside. The problems are the customers. It's never inside. And we never, ever look objectively and understand how bad we are. Everyone's walking around in denial. It was hard to hear. I'm not upset because I'm in denial. I'm just upset because this is the first time we've we've, I'm we've encountered this. Not trying to rub your face in it. Right. But tonight, three tables started complaining about the hummus. I ran a hundred meters up the road. I store bought it. Came back through the kitchen, presented it. They loved it. I'm trying to get that message through to your aunt. But when customers think that a store-bought hummus is better than what you've just served them and charged them three times the money, that's how far we've slipped. And you know what? It's sad in there. It is so sad. I, I've got a question for you. Deep down inside, from the bottom of your heart, do you want to seriously continue running this business? I definitely do. Do you? Yes, I do. 100%. OK. I'll see you in the morning. OK. Good night. Good night. I need a hug. You're OK? Everything for the best. No, <laughs> oh, don't cry. We need to make it better. He's right when it comes to certain points. It's just I need you to help me here. Instead of pointing the finger, can we come up with a list of things that you, you could do change. to improve? I think that would be that's actually a really great idea. I actually want to go. I'm really tired. I'm frustrated. In Faye's mind, she thinks that we're the problem and that we make mistakes and that we're the issue. But she's the chef. She's the prep. She does everything. And I believe 100% that she won't change, and there's no question about it. OK, everybody clock out and go home. I'd love to fix all these problems about my hands are tied. Fame has to trust me as a business partner in order for things to change. Chef Ramsey knows the only way he can move forward with fixing the restaurant Let's come out over here. is that he first must find a way to get Brenda and Faye on the same page. He begins the day with a staff meeting with the goal of clearing the air. Last night, I saw you, Faye, burnt out, feeling alone, isolated, and you saw no light at the end of the tunnel. I understand after you telling me how hard it is and you're on your own. I get all that. I got that yesterday. But last night, I watched everything. And you work, talk, and perform like someone has given up. Last night, I went into the kitchen and just took a few notes. There must be three to four weeks' worth of prep, frozen solid in there. All freezer burns. It's supposed to be beefy. Sure. Do you know, in that freezer, there's containers stacked this high full of prep. 
you've prepped so far in advance, it's freezer burnt. Then I look at the refrigeration unit in there, and it is bedlam. The fresh stuff is at the front, and the old stuff is at the back. I honestly don't have all the stuff don't. there. <laughs> you don't? Oh, this is so difficult. I'm not going to embarrass you and bring out the yellow and the rotten parsley. OK. So you know what's in the back of the fridge? Yes. What I want to talk about this morning is why is it like that? Lack of help, lack of... <laughs> You're freezing it for the lack of help. Yes. Faye, before I can go any further forward, let me ask you this. Do you think that you're the only one that's actually working and prepping in this restaurant? Yes. They can call me a liar if they want to. They come here, do their shaft. I feel like they're here to make their tips and leave. Right. That's, that's my honest truth. Yeah, well... That's how I feel about them. So who was the first person that literally gave up? Your son. Um... Your niece. Brenda. Brenda, is that true? You sit there in silence. I sit here in silence because I know the truth. I know that I've stepped up so many times. I do. But she has other people who offer to do it. I try to help, but... I don't like Amal to be in the kitchen because she cries about everything and little thing, and she all day. Um, all no. day. No. Yes, she did burn herself with hot what? water, booked herself with knife, even... I haven't poked myself with a knife. Uh, she's denying this right now because she doesn't not... let me finish. I feel responsible for her asking for bandage all the time, and I don't want blood in the food, I don't want the drama itself. Amal complains about being here. After 9 o'clock, she give me an attitude face. It was but it was her time to go out with her boyfriend, waiting for her outside. She's this. Only talk, not, not do. Right. And um. when I say that to her, she take it as a mean, I'm the biggest bee that she ever seen. Do you trust her? I, I do. She's the amazing help. She She's a very she good worker. I'm confused. She's I trust her, but I don't trust her. Does she not welcome help? Oh, not for me whatsoever. I think when she's drained, she accepts the help, but she has to reach that level. Can I say why why I do that? Go ahead. I hear complaint from Brenda all the time because she wants off. She needs her time That's off. That's not what Brenda's saying. Look at Brenda. Hey, I tell you when I have a family event to go to and I slip out of here for an extra day, I feel guilty. I know and you I've said expressed that. that to you so many times. I, I feel guilty. What? I, tell you I don't why. like taking time I tell off. You why. And it's because I tell you why, and I wanted you to have fun and enjoy family when you're out of here. Exactly. So you don't come with that burden and that look again. Like you don't want to be here. And I don't want you to have that same look either, Faye. I didn't have that look to recently. How many no? Like, How many times have free, I told and you? I am the one who have to carry everything. Hey, wait a minute. How many straight. times have I asked you? Please take an extra time off. I go you, home can you for a few days. To do things when I'm not here? And I do. I do anything that you ask me to do. You tell me to roast ask. the eggplant and peel it. I ask. do. Because unless I ask you to please let me do something, let me help you out. Unless I do, you don't tell me, hey, come back I here and help me. How many and times? And I leave it 90% of the time. I end up with no cuss cuss of the time. When I have done. lunch and I have to serve. No, 99% of the time to God. is done. And if it's not done, it's because I was busy on the line. That's the only time stuff doesn't get done. I have many times walked in the back. She's like, I have a lot of preparation. What can I help with? I'll put freaking gloves on and I'll pull out a a cutting board and a knife. Tell me how to do it. Show me how to do Until it. Until we get a phone call and we leave the kitchen, never come back. I am so confused. But I They're am. I, I go through the same stuff you do. I mean, I'm not sitting here freaking leg over leg doing nothing. So why does Faye have to prep for you when it's her day off? Because she feels that she needs to season things, that she needs to cut things, and it has to be why done no? by You're cooking her. Them. You're cooking them. It's like you can't trust your family. Who can you trust? It's not a point of trust. It's a point well, of everyone, they want their time off. So they don't want to be here as much as you do? It's Even not... your 50% partner? Yes. Wow. That's not wow. true. 
That is so not true. That's true. Maybe everybody's assuming, assuming that I don't want to be here or she doesn't want to be here or nobody wants to be here. It's not voiced. Right. Nothing's voiced. There's I, poor communication. I can see that. This is crazy. Any of you, any of you showed up an hour earlier just to get your even your own thing going? I show up early a lot, actually. I, I never... have your time card. OK, you have my time card. Then you know I'm at least 10 to 20 never, minutes early. You're here 20, 30, 40, one hour earlier. Because never I don't here. need to be here an hour early if, because I need to take care of my dining room. That is the job that you have given me, so I do. Did you hear but that? She took care of the dining away. room, which it looks like this all the time. Why do you feel so uncomfortable that the night before you take your day off, you have to control them? With everything that you do, why has it got that bad? Nobody stepped in. Nobody Even stepped in. She's with offered us. us. Brenda's Brenda. offered, That's everybody's enough. offered, and she won't teach anybody because she wants to do it. When she complains and stuff like that, she doesn't That's allow enough. anybody to do anything. I even told you bring a damn piece of paper and a pen and write down what I tell One you. One time, two days ago, no, three I'm... days ago. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't ever use that word with me, ever. I mean it. Do not ever. Use this language with me. It's all about my language, but you're not listening to what I'm trying to say behind no, it. No, I'm trying. For the last four, five, seven years you were here, did you ever ask me to come and write things down? No, but I've come and That's asked it. to help in the That's kitchen. Enough. You can ask her. When you, ask, when you ask, I told you to come and bring a piece of paper and pen and write exactly no, what didn't. I'm doing. you You told me that three days ago when we were making but savings. It was the only, only time you asked. I've ever said anything but like that. It was the only time, and Whatever. I told you do not use that language Whatever. with me for the second time. Whatever. I've, I've offered so many times. Well, You've been here for fun. years. If you were so smart, why you didn't come next to me one day and said, you know what? I, I did. I, I stayed in the kitchen and watched you cut me, and you tell me to shut up and get out. No, that's not true. That's okay. a lie. What started out as a staff meeting to clear the air... I go through the same stuff you do! ...has erupted into a screaming match between Faye and the staff. I even told you bring a damn piece of paper and a pen and write down what I tell One you! One time! Two days ago! Are you fucking kidding me? With Faye holding onto her belief that no one is committed. So they don't want to be here as much as you do? Yes. Wow. And the staff holding onto their belief... Nobody wants to help her because she's so critical of the way you do help her! ...that Faye is actually unwilling willing to accept help from anyone. OK, stop, 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 stop. Don't you want to be consistent? Yeah, of course, yeah, naturally. But what is it that you struggle with to teach them? I tried. Uh, no, I don't think I you're tried. trying enough. She doesn't have the patience to train somebody. If she does, she'll show you, and then she'll say, do it. And then if you do it, and it's not perfect the way she wants, she'll get so frustrated, and she'll yell at you to the point where it's just, okay. you feel overwhelmed yourself. And Did I ever do that with you? Yes. That's not true. Mom, is that true? She has a hard time trusting people. Faye told me yesterday, if you were not family, one, two, three, four of you would be fucking fired. Now. Yes. Why can't you trust them to run this business? I can. You can. Prove, I prove can. it. Prove it. No, you need I to can. prove that you, you have the trust. OK. I'm going to agree to something. I'm going to leave everything not done the night before. Not and done. you walk here, and you ask to be served food and see what you're going to get. Stop there. Do you know what? Fuck it. We're going to open for lunch. I'd like to see you and you behind the line. I'd like to see you and you in the dining room. And you are going home. OK. OK? And I will give you feedback on how it went. You've got 15 minutes. Let's go. 15 minutes. You happy with that? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> I know I could do this without Faye, and I would love for her to see that I am capable of doing this, and I can run the show. It's your time to shine. Yeah. You OK? I'm OK. You sure? Yes. This is hard for you. Very. Yeah. Today is going to be a disaster. I don't feel like it goes the way it's supposed to go when I'm not here. Now, um, I want you to jump in here. Yeah? They're going to struggle without me. I have a confession for you. You're not going home, really. I'd like you to sit in here and watch carefully. Because I don't think you really know what goes on in your restaurant when you're not there. OK. Listen carefully. I will. Pay close attention to everything you see. OK. 
Okay, good. Thank you, sir. I'll see you later. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Amel or Vanessa, does someone know how to put the rice cooker on cook? No. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. Wow, my... Brenda, this is cooking, right? <laughs> I'm holding my breath for them. We got customers coming in, guys. Hello. Hi. Oh, welcome to Zana Flaming Grill. Go ahead and have a seat. I'll play with you. And what can I get for you, sir? I'll do the lamb kebab plate. I'm going to try the shawarma sandwich. Can we try the matabo? The matabo? Yeah. Sure. First order on. Yeah. What is it? Um, a metabol appetizer. Okay. If you can get the sides for me, Mark. You got it. The first orders are in. How are we doing on the meat, Mark? Beef is done. Kofta is done. Excellent. One piece of lamb should be coming out any minute. And without phased micromanagement. Are those potatoes ready? You need to go yep. out with potatoes the ready. All right. Brenda, working alongside Mark, seems to have the kitchen under control. This is ready. Table two. Here we go. We have your falafel. Beef shawarma sandwich with onions. Thank you. You're welcome. And the lunch service is off to a solid start. I need chicken shawarma started. Turn around and check Brenda because there is shawarma sitting there for a while. Mark, let me know what's ready so we can start dishing. Chicken's almost ready, beef shawarma's almost ready. The beef, maybe two more minutes before the beef shawarma. You have a whole pan that's cooked already. Come on, you guys. Use the cooked one. The chicken is done. Make sure that shawarma have no oil in it when you dish it. A little bit more. Oh my god. Go. Table five. No. It just seems like everything in here is over oil. Do you want me to just take it? Uh, please. Okay, sure. Uh, it's a bit of oil. Yeah. It just seemed a little bit over oil. Yeah, oil not down, sorry. Table five does want the kebabs, but they don't want to wait 20 minutes for it. It's going to be a 10 minute wait. Okay, I'll tell them. As the busy lunch service continues without Faye. Okay, we're getting backed up. Pressure in the kitchen is clearly mounting. Make sure your customers are happy, guys. I, no, Mark, you don't have to say things like that. Faye's son, Mark, and outspoken server, Amel. I, can you? No, I need to make flaming potatoes move that. I, are beginning to butt heads. Go do something else. Don't worry about it. I'll get it done for you when we it's We heard right you. Thank you. Couch. We hear you. Thank you. No, you have a fucking mouth on you that's unbelievable. Hey, Mark, watch your mouth. Relax. Emma, so I can't... Shut up. Mark. Go. Watch Go. it. Don't talk to like that. Come on, you guys. Go. Without the staff's knowledge, Chef Ramsay is attempting to show Faye that the restaurant can run without her. I don't think you really know what goes on in your restaurant when you're not there. He has set up a stakeout vehicle for her to observe. Now you have a fucking mouth on you that's unbelievable. Oh my god. And although Brenda seems to have a firm grip on running the kitchen. Are those potatoes ready? It needs to go yep, out with this order. Ready. All right. Mark and Amel have started to bicker at each other. Yeah. I am Shut up. Mark. Go. Watch Go. It. Don't talk to Go. like that. Come on, you guys. You okay? Yes. I swear to God, I'm going to shove my foot straight Ooh. up his goddamn ass. Mark. Uh-oh. Sarcasm needs to stop. Well, it's Constance. called communication. Brenda is getting straight to the point with Amel. This is really hard for me. Why is it hard? Because I put more dedication and more love into this, and Mark is going to yell at me and tell me what He's to not do yelling at you. He's Are you kidding? I had parsley. Amal gets very frustrated when someone trying to correct her. No, no, but look at the way Brenda's controlling the situation. When Mark does that to us, can you stop and listen to me? When something sits on the counter, it needs to go out quickly. See, Brenda can do it. Look how tough. He asked you what table so we can go out hot and fresh. That's Brenda showing that she's capable of being a boss. Yes. Um, Brenda seems to be in a charge now. I'm proud of her. Do you want to continue to argue? No, we get this done. All right, I'm going to start dishing. Mark, let me know what's ready so we can start dishing. It's almost ready. Beef shawarma's almost ready. Start dishing, Brenda. Table five is ready. So I have your order all set. Good job. Good job, guys. You ready? We'll have a little fun with them now, OK? Sure. Then you can tell them how proud they are. Last table gone? Yes. Yes, good. Come over, guys. Please. So 
why don't you just give Faye a little insight to how it went? I thought the heat was on for quite a few minutes just because we got slammed with orders, but mm -hmm. with the communication with me and Mark, uh, tag teaming on the grill and just communicating across the board. One or two uh, plates come back, but when we put it back out, not one complaint. I have a confession to make. Faye did not go home. <laughs> she was with you because she was sat behind the restaurant in the car park, watching everything you did, listening to everything you said on a monitor. And I think she has something she'd like to say to you all. I'm really proud of you all. There is a few mistakes that we can work on. And what did you think of Brenda's performance? Amazing. You're amazing. And I feel like I don't tell you enough. It's an eye opener for me what I saw today to see how hard you work. And I commend you for taking a charge. And I did this little exercise for Faye to watch to understand how good you are. And let me tell you something. You clearly passed the test. You did. Yeah. I was proud so well of done. you all. We do have to improve the food, right? Granted, yes. Yes? yes? But for me, the relationship was far more important than the food first. Today is a new beginning, OK? Give me 15 minutes, and I'd like to get into the kitchen and start cooking something exciting with the two owners. Well done, all of you. I'm really excited that Faye got to watch how we run the place. I really do hope Faye starts treating me as a partner and not her niece. It's gone on definitely too long, and we're ready to move forward. I really hope in the future we can agree about the staff meeting. Definitely. And we have to address what's bothering us. I know now we have to work as a team. And I hope that we could move from my obsession with everything being perfect. We need to act like a team, and we need to strive as a team. And I realize it's about time to treat Brenda as my business partner and not only my niece. You know, I know that we need to fix a lot of things. We definitely proved it to Faye that we can do our jobs. We are capable of helping her out when she needs, and she just needs to allow us to do it. So we'll see what happens. You did a good job. I'm glad. Let's go. You two. What is that? Fresh fish. Fresh oh, it's fish. definitely fresh fish. How does it feel? Yeah, awesome. Here's the thing. Find fresh, sending that message out to your customers is the only message to go ahead. So I'm going to do two very simple dishes. We'll do a nice yellowtail, we'll do a nice little shrimp kebab. It's an uh, out of this world experience to be taught by Chef Ramsey. Find the grill and start to market. I am learning that when you said fresh, it means really fresh. It doesn't mean it's frozen fresh. Fresh lemon juice in the rice. Thank you, smell the herbs. Smells okay, and the lemon amazing. in there. From there, my herbs go in, and then I've got a little touch of vegetable stock. Just a touch. What kind of stock? Vegetable stock. I've poured my heart and soul into this place in the last five years, and this is the first time I feel like an equal partner with Faye. I'm just going to show you how we play this up. If we cook just delicious and fresh, and if Brenda will continue to change her work ethics, be a business owner, I think will make us very strong team. Amazing. Something very important you should both know. Yesterday, after my lunch, I went around town, but I asked just people walking towards me, tell me about Zena's Flaming Grill. Zania's Flaming Grill, ever heard of it? No. Damn. Passed through and seen it, never really stopped. Have you been? I have not. Nobody's heard of this place, man. Over three quarters of the people I spoke to, they have never heard of Zaina's Flaming Grill. So I've arranged for a small exclusive spot at the Redondo Pier. We're going to tell Redondo that you're here to stay, and we're here to relaunch, OK? and we're going to take little samplers to get the word out there. And most importantly, I want them leaving with Zayna's Flaming Grill's flavor. OK, awesome. Um, get all the team together, and we're going to head to the Redondo Pier, OK? Yes, sir. Yeah? <laughs> Come over, guys. All right, how are you feeling? Hi, feeling good. So, we're relaunching tomorrow night. Hi. Yeah. Zayna's Flaming Grill is now flaming hot. Uh, why don't you and I okay. work behind? All right. Yeah, and then you three can market the hell out of the new yes. Zayna's, Zayna's Flaming, Flaming Grill. Grill. Yeah? Got it? Yes. OK, let's go. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. You guys hungry? Come on in. Yes. Yes. Enjoy. 
Enjoy, guys. Here we go. Enjoy. A delicious shrimp kebab with a tzatziki sauce. Enjoy. This is definitely what we need right now. People that actually live really close or just a few minutes away have never heard about us. Rosanna's Living Girl, PCH and the US. We're doing a new launch. We'd love to have you in. We're by the beach. We should let the community know that we are here and we're serving the best of the best. Enjoy. How's it taste? Excellent. <laughs> it's really good. Delicious. You want for shrimp? Would you like some? I love this sauce. Excellent. We've never done anything like this, so I think this is really big to come out here and come together and be a team. We'd love to see you guys. It's a new beginning. You guys got to come check us out. Zena's Flaming Grill is going to be flaming awesome. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. What's going on now is just, it's a whole new Zena. Everything is just finally falling in place the way it should be. The yeah, motivation to drive that was lacking is back. Love you, boo. Thank you. The flame is back, right? The flame, oh, yeah. the flame is back. With the word out to the community about the changes at Zena, Chef Ramsay and his team have just 12 hours to turn a Mediterranean restaurant into a beachside hangout. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we feeling? Very Very excited. Good. Ready to go crazy. Are you ready for the new Zena? Yes. yes. We all are. No fainting allowed. <laughs> Let us see it. On the count of three. One, two, three. Welcome to the new oh, Zayners. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it looks stunning. I love it. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so beautiful. Gone is that dreary cream colour. We have given it a fun, beachy vibe. It's as beautiful as they are. The booze were hideous. We have completely opened this space up, which has given you another 12 seats. This is a completely different restaurant. And then we got stalls. We're going to take advantage of that bar. Amazing. At the tables, you have these stunning pewter chairs. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful dinner and flatware donated by Oneida. Plates, bowls, knife and forks, you name it, you've got it. You can't uh, imagine how thankful I am for this. Amazing, cool pop art. I love it. Quirky, colorful, and cool. Amazing. This is our dream come true. It is, definitely is. It couldn't be more perfect. It's very hip, very beachy, and we're ready to unite and get this party going. Thank you so much. You OK? I'm very happy. Oh, OK, you're crying. I thought you were OK. <laughs> I honestly never dreamed about owning a place like this. My restaurant was really old-fashioned before. Now it's a beautiful place for people to come in after a day at the beach and enjoy a beautiful beach restaurant. <laughs> Now that Chef Ramsay has brought the beach vibe to Zena, come line over there. He reveals the new tasty fresh menu to the staff. Oh wow! Yummy! <laughs> Yummy! First off, the dips: roasted red pepper hummus, not liquid, but a nice textured hummus. Delicious tabbouleh, parsley, scallions, tomatoes, lemon juice, and a classic bulgur wheat. Beautiful. And then the lamb meatball gyro, served in the pitta, scallions, and tahini as well. Wow! Shrimp kebab finished with lemon and beautifully served with the pita bread. Last night, we cooked together that wonderful yellowtail. Again, soda potatoes, red onions, and we serve, grill the fish, and send. Excited to taste? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Have a really good taste, because tonight, we're going to relaunch this stunning Mediterranean grill with a big bang. Jump in. Mm. The hardest part is figuring out where to start. Wow. Mm. This is a party in my mouth right now. Wow. <laughs> You're going to love this. If I start liking that, we might run low before the customers get here. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious, good recipe. This new menu is a dream. A little bit of a change just makes a big difference. Mm. Holy we should put these two together. Mm -hmm. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready to launch my restaurant tonight. I have everything I need now to really serve it on the beach. And it will be just a wonderful feeling to have Brenda and I working together as a team. Hello, welcome to the new nice and improved Zena. Ladies. Having spread the word in Redondo Beach about the new look and menu at Zena Flaming Grill. This looks so good. The restaurant is fully booked for relaunch. Looks like the beach. It does look like the beach. It's cool. Were you guys ready to order? I'm going to go with the grilled local yellow tail piece. The yellow tail? Um, the zucchini fritters. I'm sure you ladies will enjoy everything. 
Right, you ready? We're fired up. We have the flame back, and I have to show you that tonight. Okay, have you warned your husband the flame's back? <laughs> I told him earlier today I... that he thought I was talking about something else. <laughs> and he... <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep it clean. It's a family restaurant, for goodness sake. <laughs> Okay, zucchini fritters. I'll start that. Good. I'm starting the two calamaris in the zucchini. Okay. 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 Good. That's it. Talk. The more okay. talking, the better. Okay. Okay, Brenda. Crispy calamari and grilled yellowtail and what else? And shrimp, shrimp kebab. kebab. For relaunch, Chef Ramsay has set up a new system in the kitchen that has Faye and Brendan working side by side. Firing up fries. Beef kebab. Rice on grill. And so far, the plan is working. It's yummy. It's so good. Everything was seasoned perfectly. But as the orders start to fly in... Two calamaris and a zucchini fritter coming up, okay, Faye? Faye has stopped communicating. Are we good on rice? Do we need rice, Faye? Faye, talk to Brenda. And that's slowing down the delivery of the food. Who's gonna take you Faye, you don't even look at me. You just stop talking. I'm doing it. I <laughs> know, oh, we're talking work at the same time for me, okay? okay? Here we are. Can I please know the status on table nine? Um, did you hear me? Faye is so used to having her mindset where she has to do everything. Faye, come on. She just needs to understand that it's not just her in the kitchen anymore, that it's her and Brenda. How far out is table nine? No answer. I know. What's going next, please, Brenda? Because Faye's turned off. We got a lamb kebab, medium rare, and the yellowtail. Let me know if you need something, Faye. She's not even saying anything. She's just turned off. Faye is just not communicating. And I just truly hope that we can make it through this dinner without totally falling apart. How are we doing, Faye? 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 It's relaunch night at Zaina Flaming Grill. And Chef Ramsay has implemented a two-chef system in the kitchen. How are we doing down there, Faye? Where communication is the key. Faye, did you get that? But shortly after dinner started, Faye has shut down and is no longer communicating with Brenda. Brenda, 30 seconds. Faye has shut down. She's so used to working on her own, she refused to talk. So get out, get out, okay. get some, okay. just, just completely flat, okay. silent and flat. Right. Yeah, your partner, don't forget. Okay. You're in the driver's seat now. Yeah, get a go, please. Okay. Please. How are we doing, Faye? Talk to me. Faye doesn't know how to work with a team. Come on, talk together, yeah, let's go. She's used to doing everything by herself. Tell Brenda what you're doing, though. OK. Rice is behind you. Talk to Brenda. But I am an owner, and I am a boss, and I need to take control and bring this place back to life. Faye, okay. we just need you to respond. Just because we had a few minutes of downfall, we all we do is get right back up and, and keep going. Yes. yes. Right? We don't dwell on it. We pick up and move on. Yes. Table three. Crispy calamari and grilled yellowtail and what else? And shrimp, shrimp kebab. kebab. Keep it going, guys. What do I need for table nine, Faye? Meatball, Cairo. Meatballs are in the oven. The good news is you're talking. More Thank breaking you. news. <laughs> With Brenda taking control and encouraging Faye, she is responsive again. The two chicken and the one lamb is ready. Excellent. Nice. Table eight. Excellent. And this duo are now pushing out orders at a much faster rate. I like that zucchini fritter. It's good. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. You saved me. We got each other's back. We're a team. I am very proud of Brenda tonight. She was my backbone, and it was really nice working as a team. I hope you enjoyed everything, ladies. Yes. Yes, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. The count of three Zainas. <laughs> One, One, two, two three. Zaina! <laughs> the flame is back. God bless you all. First of all, night one, you achieved a lot. It wasn't going to be perfect. But let me tell you, it's pretty good. Feedback. From the customers, what was it? I didn't get one bad complaint. Great. I talked to a few of the tables, and uh, they were really happy. They loved the new decor, and they said this is what a beach restaurant should look like. The look of this restaurant is completely different. Do you know what else is completely different? The way you treat each other. I am very proud, very proud of all of you. Brenda, you are a natural-born leader. Tonight, you confirmed you're a partner. Thank you. Today she pulled her weight and she held my back up. She's amazing.
Chef Ramsey gave me my family back and my restaurant back. I finally have the partner I always wish for. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, so much. Best of luck. Chef Ramsey has changed our lives, and I am worried about fate going back to her old ways. Well done, my darling. Good job. But we'll see what happens. When I first arrived, I didn't think a relaunch of this restaurant was even possible. Brenda and Faye were completely at odds, and the staff behind them, they had no direction. But unbelievably tonight, Brenda and Faye were working side by side in their kitchen. My only hope now is that Faye really understands that she's not in this alone. Wow. Beaten by a store-bought hummus. Unbelievable. After Chef Ramsay left... I'm gonna come cross out what I just took out. OK, baby. Zena became a popular spot in Redondo Beach. <laughs> but unfortunately... That chicken is not done. Faye has taken a step back. I want to just let the chicken because this is the hottest this is what in my grill. It's burning, that's why. And her stubbornness has resulted in Vanessa and Emel leaving the restaurant. Whatever. Meatballs are heating up for table six. On the positive side, Brenda has taken on a more active role. It's almost ready. Excellent. And the two owners continue to work on their relationship. Keep it up. You're doing good. Thank you. As well as maintain their newfound success. We're glad to have you here. You. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Easton, Pennsylvania is located an hour away from Philadelphia. Just outside of downtown Easton is Bella Luna an Italian restaurant owned by Rosaria Scolo. This table right here. Who bought the restaurant in 2010 for her two sons, Maurizio and Gianfranco. That's for Nicole. My son Gianfranco went to culinary school, and one of his dreams was to own his own restaurant. Two chicken parms, penne vodka, and chicken and broccoli. So uh, we found a place here, and we took a chance. Is everything OK? Uh, marginal at best. I feel the community has not responded to us the way we thought. I don't feel they really appreciate fine Italian cooking. That's it or not. I just don't think this is worth coming back to ever. We're in a state that we don't have much business at all. You know, there's days we got to close early. There's days we don't open for lunch. If this guy complains still, let me know. People of Easton like mediocre Italian food, frozen food, and that's not what I do. FYI, they sent the soup back. They said it tasted fatty. Just it tasted one. fatty. I studied in Italy, and I worked with chefs, and I know what Italian food is. This chicken's burnt. What do you mean this chicken is burnt? Does that look like burnt chicken? Please. Doesn't taste bad to me. What are we doing wrong? That's my question to myself. What am I doing wrong? Bella Luna, um, personally, I think it looks like a morgue. When you walk into this place, I think, where's the viewing? Do I go through that door? Is that where the body's laid out? But why did they want to speak to me? Why can't you deal with it? I, I, could, I tried to deal with it, but they asked to go, go over my night. head. Well, I've been dealing with everybody all night. Rosaria is very disorganized. Why are you in the kitchen, Ma? You should be out on the floor. Because I'm trying to help out. No, 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 no. You got to help out on the floor. And she's not a leader. Everybody is running around, burning the candle at both ends. Bella Luna should be on the map, and it's just not. And we need something different. If we had to close, I would be very disappointed because we worked so hard to make this dream happen, and it would just kind of kill me. It really would. Bella Luna. Hello. Welcome, Chef Ramsey. How are you? Tracy. Tracy. Thank Bill. you so oh. much. Oh, nice to see you. Is this your place? No, I am the manager here. Rosaria Scolo owns right. it and her two sons, Joffe, head chef. Okay, great. Maurizio, the son. So, mother and son mother and run the place. Sons. Do you yeah. normally greet customers? Before they even get out of the car? No. Seriously. You're special. I'm special. You're oh, absolutely special. I, I'm happy to be and here. You smell good. <laughs> um, on a scale of one to ten, how bad are they? Minus two. Oh, shit. 
They're very stubborn. Rosaria coddles Joffe. You know, if a customer sends a plate back, she'll yeah. defend the son instead of saying the customer's always right. Wow. That makes me insane. Are the locals biting? No. No. No, no, no one's all. biting. And this place should be banging. Yeah. We have to do things. I run a Fifty Shades of Grey bingo on a Thursday Jeez. night. Say that again? Fifty Shades of Grey bingo. Bingo. It's adult bingo. Adult bingo. Yeah. Uh, uh, handcuffs it. involved? No, no, no. Well, they could be if you wanted to. But I mean, why would you? No. God, no. Jeez, man. <laughs> just arrived. We just try and think of anything that will create a buzz, a but, stir. OK, your hair looks great, by the way. Uh, turn around, that looks lovely. <laughs> it's, it's a chia uh, pet, by the way. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, can we get inside? Please come. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, thank you for the briefing, by the way. Uh, oh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you for coming. All right. Um, oh, Jesus. Is it Christmas? <laughs> wow. Yeah. What's with all the Christmas decorations? Um, we are in the middle of July, right? It's Christmas in July. Hi. Oh, hello. Hello, Chef Ramsay. You must be... I'm Rosario. Rosario, nice Can to see you. Can I give you a hug and oh. a kiss? I'm Italian. That's yeah. what we do. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. Let's go inside, shall we? Sure. In the barn, have a little chat. Excellent. OK, uh, first of all, um, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, how long have you been open? Uh, three years. Three years. OK, yes. good. And uh, what kind of background do you have? I don't have experience of owning my own restaurant. Neither did my son. But we all have the passion for food. Mm -hmm. And since Gianfranco went to school and he wanted to become a chef, you know, this was our dream. So he has restaurant experience? Uh, well, when he finished school, he did an internship in Manhattan. Yeah. And then after that, we just jumped in here. So I won't say. What? I can't won't go. say he had internship a to ownership. Yes. No, come on. So we all, yes. What about the big bit in between? The things called experience. Didn't have any. But you had a vision. We had a vision. Wow. We followed it. So how's the food? I think it's more authentic than than okay. other places around right. here. We make everything fresh. We don't use anything frozen. That's great news. You know, That's we, great we news. only have one freezer. And this is the way I want it to be. I want to sure. bring out fresh Italian food. But why wouldn't Eastern embrace that? Why wouldn't they support it? I don't know. I think they're used to one thing. Like, if they're used to frozen food and you give them fresh, authentic, they will not appreciate it. So you're saying they'd be more upset with fresh as opposed to frozen? Yeah. The food is not the problem here. It's probably more of the community really don't know about fresh, authentic Italian food. Good afternoon, Chef. Maurizio. Maurizio, good yes. to see you, bud. Maurizio, and this, and this is, is, uh, this is Chef. Chef Gianfranco. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good to see you, bud. So, uh, this is a dream come true for you, right? It is. You running a business with your mum. Yes. And are there any issues with you and your mum running this restaurant? Uh, yes. Like, communication, me and my mum, right. I mean, it's kind of, like, you know, hard because it's your mother and, yeah. you know, we are both bosses together, but sometimes I don't agree and I tell her, but she just don't listen. And how do you rate your food in terms of a scale of one to 10? Where'd you go? Eight. Eight. Fantastic. Well, listen, I'll catch up with you after lunch. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Here we go, chef. Bar, dinner, lunch. Bar, dinner, lunch. Yes, so, sir. So, God almighty. Um, OK, who's been writing letters to our valued customers? <laughs> Thank you for choosing Bella Luna. OK, we take great pride in preparing every meal and refuse to serve substandard food. That's nice to hear. I like that. Good. Uh, shall we order? OK. What would you like? Oh, okay, camera, Danny. I'll go for the veal, the salt and bokum. Um, the penny and the vodka. OK. Uh, and throw some mussels in there as well. Marinara? Yes, please. All right. Thank you, Marinara. Yes, chef. Here we go. OK, he wants veal salt on boca, penne a la vodka. That's it. Oh, and a mussels marinara, please. Damn, cooking for a world-class chef. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Very well. What's your name? Nicole. Nicole. How long have you been here? A year and a half. In your mind, what's wrong with the place? Management. Not focusing on, in my opinion, what they're supposed to be doing. So totally unfocused. Yeah, there's a lot of. Name calling, disrespectfulness in the back. Really? Um, what from the kitchen? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, enjoy the meal. Thank you. Um, she seems like a nice girl. No. What do you mean? No. Out of her mind. Serious? Yes, chef. Nicole is a moron. Did I serve you? Nicole needs to be out of here, but I leave that up to Rosario. And this is the uh, salt and vodka? Yes, chef. Thank you, darling. Oh, 
Wow. How hideous does that look? My God, it's planned. Chewy, that's been beating the crap out of. It's fucking disgusting. Think he's complaining about the real job that it's tough. I did it ten, not even two seconds. I flipped it really quick. Tenderize it. I mean, we do have one of the best veals. We get it from the butcher in Queens, so I don't know. Unless you overcooked it. Yeah. I did not overcook it, bro. This is so overcooked. It's extraordinary. A little taste of that. Oh my good god. I mean, it's dusted with flour. See all this? Yes. See this here? That, that's gunge. That's just raw flour. That is like, you can make a fucking pizza dough with that. That's, gu that, 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 that's gunge. I'll remove it. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Wow. How's the veal tray? Feels overcooked. He said gunge. He called it. It's, it's just flour. Wow. I mean, this is a uh, fucking crazy. If Chef Ramsay doesn't like the veal, there's nothing I can do about that because that's the way it's made, and I'm not going to change that. OK, Chef, this is our penne a la vodka. Can I just give you that much yellow and bits of crap? Why is it drowned in sauce? I cannot answer that. I mean, it's like baby vomit. The sauce is disgusting, and that is gross. Can the chef not cook past them? We have inconsistencies. I should have grabbed the penne that I cooked this morning. Why? The penne that I just cooked is sitting there fresh. Didn't even get oiled yet. What, what did we give them? Penne I cooked yesterday. I'm sure there's a difference. It still tastes good. You didn't like the taste? No. You didn't like no. the taste? Awful. Okay. Said it was like baby vomit. Baby vomit. Baby vomit. Wow. Okay. Where's that? You come over. Apart from being drowned in sauce, the pasta's like mush. Would you mind? Because everyone starts thinking I'm exaggerating, but it's like overcooked. Disgusting. But the flavor is not bad. Oh, I disagree. You disagree with the flavor? The sauce is bland. There's no salt in the sauce and there's too much garlic. But for me, the fundamentals when you come to an Italian restaurant is the pasta. The pasta's overcooked. That's the embarrassing part. Anyway, can you get the chef to taste that? OK. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Taste the pasta. Yes. You said it's drowned in sauce. And it doesn't have any flavor. The sauce doesn't have any flavor? That's what he said. Oh, Eight out of ten. Trust me, right now, he's not even eight out of a hundred. All right. Thank you, Chef. I hope. Good luck. Wow. Yeah, uh, are we sure? That's it. Uh, <laughs> when I think of Italian cuisine, it's done with an exciting, generous amount of mussels in a bowl, but that has to be the tightest portion of mussels I've ever seen in my entire life. Is that what customers get? This is what customers get, Chef. But how much is that? Not really sure, Chef. Do you find out how much this one is? Yes, Chef, Please? I will. I mean, seriously. Oh, my god, how much are the mussels? Look in the computer, Tracy, and find out. Sister, you did. Wow, you no. really just said that $10. to me. You didn't know. You own the fucking place, sister. I know, ten dollars. Oh, you on, should know come too. On, come on. It's ten dollars. How hard was that to tell me when I'm dealing with this shit? Mm. Oh, it was a muscle. It's a fucking clove of garlic. Damn. Ten dollars, chef. Holy crap. They taste frozen. Can you just check with the chef, because they are so chewy? Yes, I will, chef. Yeah, please? Man. Are the mussels frozen? Yes. You should have fresh mussels. We cannot have fresh mussels when we have a menu that's extremely large. They taste so chewy. Yes, you... chef, they are frozen. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Come on. Uh, can you come in the kitchen with me? Yes, sir. So far, he likes nothing. I'm going to start flipping out in two seconds.
Mr. Ono Rosario's description of Bella Luna's food as authentic and fresh. Disgusting. Chef Ramsay is beyond disappointed, and he is in need of an explanation. OK, uh, come over. Uh, I don't know where to start. My experience at lunchtime was dreadful. And there was nothing authentic in what you just served me. And I'm struggling. The big kick in the balls for me, the muscles are actually frozen. Why are you serving frozen muscles? No, I, I need to know, because you told me fresh. I'm only going on what you told me. We don't sell enough muscles for me to have them fresh every week. So then what's the most important thing to do about that dish? Take it off the menu. Take them off the menu. So why haven't you? She doesn't want to take it off the menu. Who is she? My mother. Why would you do it? Maybe we can oh, afford to make new I, menus. I, I, I try not to have anything frozen on the menu. Stop. I try not to have anything frozen right. on the menu. Right. Did you just say that? Yes, you did say that. Right, but so then, they're frozen. Then him as a chef, you should tell me, take them off the menu. I did tell him you. as a chef? Yes. I did take tell you. Take them off the menu. Why is it still on? Why? It's still on because there's a constant circle of miscommunication. Who wants it off, who wants it on, and it still stays on by the end of the week. I don't know what it is, thinking that you can just buy a restaurant because it, it, it succumbs to your dreams. Your fundamentals are all screwed up, and you have big issues here, from making pasta to proper seasoning. You've got more chance winning the lottery than you have becoming a success here. Can you read that? Uh, Good evening. Just to give it a quick run through. How does the line work? Who does what? Um, You're not going to get on any that tickets. side. I stay on this side. We try not to like cross each other so we don't step right. on each other's toes. Uh, why can't we get tickets? These are what we have. We just some bits of paper like that. Yes, you have bits of paper like That's that. Insane. That is it. There's no proper tickets. I need the trim from the microwave, Dustin. Show me those uh, shrimp, please. Where do they come from? The microwave, do I see? Yeah, we defrost them in the microwave. So you frozen shrimp? Yep. Just asking. OK. What's that in there? Shrimp and juice. Defrosting chicken in a wash hand basin full of blood. And then we're prepping it next to a cooked meatball. Wow. Here, go ahead. I'm not seeing very much what you're portraying in the front of the menu. You know the fresh ingredients, and please be understanding. And you know the chicken's frozen? The chicken we buy fresh. Chicken's frozen. Why don't you come around? I'll show you where they're frozen. Are those chicken breasts frozen? Yes, they were. Yeah, they are. Thank you. The chicken's not fresh. It's frozen. We're defrosting it here in the wash hand basin. See that blood there? And you don't know that this is frozen. You're yelling at me. This is an issue that you should take with the chef. Do you know we defrost the shrimp in the microwave before we say to them? No, no I know okay. that we put it in ice water. What? Uh, uh, Dustin? Yes. Are you defrosting the frozen shrimp where? In the microwave. We don't put them in the water? I no. See. OK, so you didn't tell me any of this when I first met you. All you told me about was your freshness. You turned around and said the, the authenticity and what right. you stand for. That's what you told me. Right, and I so still believe in that. You believe in it, but you're not actually practicing it. Yes. So you're saying one thing and doing the opposite. Right. Fucking hell. What? After feeling misled by Rosaria about the freshness of the food, Ugh, God. Chef Ramsay decides to do a little investigating to find out what is really going on in this restaurant. Ugh, how much chicken does one restaurant need? <sighs> Calamari is not even frozen. And here, voila, my delicious Italian mussels. Have you got two seconds, Rosaria? How much chicken do you think you have in the freezer? I don't know. Let me show you. I rarely come down here, so I really don't know. We buy it fresh. It's fresh. Really? Just... That's the calamari we got today. Frozen at the bottom? Right. Hold it. We got it in this morning. And we're freezing it. And then we're defrosting it to send it back out. Why should anybody wait for shit like this? I saw the calamari bean fresh today. 
It's fresh. We bring it in fresh. We got the delivery this morning. Are you crazy? So why are you in denial? The kitchen is not my responsibility. I have enough responsibilities, Gordon. Am I a superwoman? How could you not know? I don't have 20 years of experience. If you are making the statement of being fresh, being authentic, you don't need 20 years' experience, you should know everything. You should know what's going on in every fridge. So it's my fault. So if it's not your fault, then whose is it? I'm not the chef, Gordon. You're pointing everything out on me. Yeah, let me go and get him. Go ahead. Yeah. Ramsey's down in the basement. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Ain't going like that. Have you got two seconds? Yeah. What's the matter? Let me show you. You don't prep that much chicken and then freeze it like that. We buy them fresh and we bread them and we make them ourselves. You're telling me that. So I'm sat there like an idiot believing you. I didn't call you an idiot. I'm calling myself an idiot because I believed you. You're allowing these practices to happen, making false claims. I'm not a fan of frozen food. I don't, I don't, I don't get like this. frozen food. You're endorsing it. You run a business selling it. I, like you're I supposed, said, I you're don't. You say no. I mean, this is insane. You don't like frozen food. I don't like frozen food. What the fuck? I don't like frozen food. So you have the nerve to serve it to your customers. So it's not working because this is frozen. That's what you're telling me. If something is frozen, it's bad. If it stays frozen, it's bad. Come on. You can't be this naive. I don't know why we don't have people coming through the door. I feel like screaming because it's like you're in denial. This is not cost control. This is stupidity at its best. You don't need to be a culinary genius to identify how bad this is. Up. He's no. right. You knew it from the minute we came in here, Ma. Okay. That's that's so wrong. He wants to hear it from you. I would say it's my mother's fault. It's her restaurant, and I might be pointed as the bad guy, but I'm not. After being frustrated with John Franco and Rosaria over the deplorable state of their food storage, Chef Ramsay heads back upstairs to see what's inside the walk-in refrigerator. Oh, look at that. Lizard in a desert wouldn't eat that. Wow. Grand through and through. Absolutely disgusting. Fresh turnips. Oh, my god. Oh, look at the color of that. It makes me gag. That is veal. Oh, you dirty bastards. Zaria, what the fuck is that? These are my... I don't serve these. These are mine. How many times a day do you go into that walk-in? Roughly. A hundred. A hundred. Disgusting. Hold that. That's broccoli rob, left over from my brother's wedding. They're left over from your brother's wedding? Yeah. Come on, guys. Have you any idea how bad a turnip needs to go before it gets that bad? Touch that. Just, just touch. I, just, just, just. I'm not serving it. We're not using it. No disrespect, but what would you know has been served? No. I don't know why it's not funny. There. It's not funny. I am fucking pissed off. Wait, it gets nobody, worse. Nobody yeah. throws anything out. I can't wait I can. for this fucking excuse. Have you any idea how bad a slice of veal needs to go that color? Just smell that. What was that color? Why is there veal in there? Smells bad. How long is that there? It couldn't have been two days, Mom. Oh, fuck off. Two days. What in the fuck is going on? You don't fucking care, you do you? Of course I do care. You don't give a shit. Says who? That walk in there is a disgusting mess. You should be ashamed. Hair in the food. Hair in the food? Who just said hair in the food? Me. Is this a joke? Come round. Oh, no, I think she's talking to somebody. If you were examined tonight, what do you think Close. would happen? Close you down. Close down. Can you go out there and apologize to every customer? Yes. I am shutting it down. 
May I have your attention, please? We here at Bella Luna apologize for any inconvenience to you wonderful people of this community tonight, but we are shutting it down. We are not worthy to continue this service. All right, it's been shut down. Can we close that door, please? It's just going to keep getting hotter in there, and more stuff is going to go bad. What more stuff can go worse? Tell me. I have no clue. Right. And now, in the last 60 seconds, all of a sudden, you give a fucking shit about what's going to go off. You got lazy, and yet you cannot accept it. You're done, aren't you? You're, you're finished. What do you mean, finished for the night? Oh, uh, no, not for the night, but just in general. You're a spent no. force. No, it's not who I am. Really? Yeah, I haven't gave up. If I have, I would have left you. I would have left you here by yourself. It's not my fault. She thought everything could work. She thought it was easy. And I told her it's not going to be easy. Well, how about you stepping up? <laughs> all the pressure, all the tension, it's building on top and me not getting paid. There's a reason why you haven't had a fucking paycheck in two years. Do you ever stop and ask yourselves? You are making so many mistakes, you don't even know what's right or wrong. And you're allowing him to do it. You're both destroying each other. I'm amazed you've stayed open for three fucking years. And I can't do everything for them. I cannot be checking produce. Why did you buy a restaurant when none of you worked in one? <laughs> I don't know what to do next. I don't know what I to don't do, know. Chef. That makes three of us, because right now, I've got fucking no idea where to start. A chef that's checked out, that's given up, and an owner that's in fucking denial. I'm not in denial. I'm not. You can show him a lot better than this job. I know you can. Come on, that walking's not that big. <laughs> Something's got to change here, man. The cards are laid out. Either we go all in or we turn around. We're not making any money. We haven't made any money. And now we ran out of heart. Jeff, you know what to do. You just you know lost yourself. You were taught right, and you have traditions from our family. You just got to put that back in play, you know? Come here, guys. Fed up with both Rosaria and John Franco, Chef Ramsay has devised a plan to get everything, once and for all, out into the open. OK. Chef Franco. Yeah. Rosario, each of you is going on trial. One at a time. So you're going to come up here and defend yourself. Got it? Rosario, I'd like you to go first. Come on. Come on down. OK. Take the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Tracy, Rosario's weaknesses, what are they? Very weak in discipline with the staff. She needs to be tougher on the back kitchen. She needs to be tougher on the front. OK. But I don't think I'm weak. People do mistake my kindness for weakness. But I'm not a weak person. I but you're weak. You're here. weak because she lets people walk all over her. So that's that's one point. Yeah, I'm too nice. Go ahead. Next. Unorganized, mismanagement, no follow through. You know, you know. But I'm one person. I cannot be doing everything. If my job was just to manage and sit in my office and take care of my bills, I would have everything down packed. And that's but what I'm it there should be. serving. And that's what it I'm should be. I'm doing bar. I feel like I'm having a nervous breakdown. And then and I walk out. Nobody understands. And you're nobody cleaning gives windows. A shit. How many yeah, times have I said to you? Nobody cleans windows. And I'm there cleaning instead of going into the walk-in and checking to see if there's any produce that's going bad. OK, last night was a, an eye-opening for me. I didn't it's have no clue what the hell goes on into that walk-in. OK, Jim Franco, yeah? Um, she's too nice, and people step over her. And... She's too nice to you, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Very so nice. He to babies you. You, you would have been fired a long time if you were in someone else's kitchen. How about that? How about stepping up to your plate and really show your passion that you lost? 
You lost your passion, Gianfranco. What happened to the, the passion that you had? You wanted to be a chef. I didn't push you to be a chef. That was your dream to be a chef. You wanted to go to school. You made it happen. Jim, maybe this is the wrong way around. How about you getting up and swapping yeah. places with your mother? Yeah. Let's go. Because it's just starting to shift to you, my boy. You also have to take responsibility for your own actions. I will continue. Why are you letting go? Why? I feel like I do all this work and I don't get any credit for it. And I don't really show my true passion because I'm just working with this disgustingly huge menu that I do not like. You got to take responsibility too. It's it's yeah. it's it's not just hers. It's not just yours. But I mean, at least take I know, your half. I don't of have the too. time and the money but to I go. But I tell him to take over. You're the chef. Make a menu, okay? If he takes the bull by its horn and he just does it, I'm not gonna say no. So put your foot down. Grow some balls, like I always tell you. You are a chef, young man. But you need to you need to find your voice. You're right. I do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you something. You need input from a, another source. Hang on a second. Come in. Thank you. Bill, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. This is Bill. Hi. And he brought a few of his friends. Take a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Please come through. These people represent the town of Easton. You'll probably recognize them because they've all died in your restaurant, Rosario. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the owners and the staff need to hear from you what were your recent experiences when you went to Bella Luna. Far away, please. There was a, a fly in the wedding suit, and it was kind of an embarrassment, and we just left it there because we just didn't want it. Suit of the day. Um, Rosario, I mean, anything to say to Bill? I apologize about that. I. I just apologize. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Next, please. The food and the service have both been subpar. All of our entrees came out at different times, making it very difficult to enjoy a family meal. That's my issue with food being prepared and sitting on the line, mm -hmm. because we're short-staffed. It's not the customer's problem, the fact that you're short-staffed. It's not just the service. Alicia, thank you so much. Thank you. Next, please. Um, I went there once. Food was subpar. Very disappointing experience for what I expected. Everybody has a bad night. I figured I'd give you another chance. And the second time I went, it was extremely disappointing. Our dinners were totally wrong. My son ordered chicken. He got veal. I threw my money on my table and said, I'm done. I will never come back here. Oh, sorry about that experience. Next, please. The food, everything just did not work out. But what really, really stood in my mind was I ordered a cannoli, and the cannoli was sour. And so you came over to me, and you gave me a fresh cannoli. Well, why didn't you give me the fresh cannoli first, rather than give me an old cannoli that left a horrid taste in my mouth? I mean, a sour cannoli, I mean, it, it can get you sick. Right, but I was not aware that you were giving the sour cannoli that wasn't good. Well, maybe I, the I would sour have cannoli the, shouldn't even the be there. I was not giving it to you, you know? But my point is, is as the when owner When the cannoli manager, came back, and then I tasted it, and then I said, this is going bad. Well, yeah. Gone bad, not going, gone bad. It's bad. Once it's gone, it's gone. It's not coming back, is it? So, right. <laughs> you know, that should be gone right. the night before. Do you know, it That's shouldn't be I there. Saying. Like, why even serve something that is questionable? Oh, you're right. That you're totally just, right. That was the, the experience that I said, I, I don't think I'll ever come back to this restaurant. Wow. To hear what they were saying, you know, the reality, it, as much as it hurts, it's the truth. This feedback uh, this morning has been pivotal. I hope you'll all be willing to give Bella Luna uh, one more chance. Uh, on behalf of the owners and the team, uh, I'd like to say a big thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. I think everything has to be changed. And if that's what we need to hear to make things better and get Bella Luna back on the map, I guess that's what we need to, to hear. Convinced that Rosaria and John Franco are now fully aware that change is their only option, Chef Ramsay goes ahead with stage one of his plan, transforming the data decor of Bella Luna. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Welcome to the new Bella Luna. Oh my, oh my, oh my god. Oh, wow. Do you see this, Ma? Amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> How bright and refreshing does this beautiful restaurant look? Do you like it, Jeff? I love yeah. it. John is that dark red maroon color. We've lined up the walls, the ceiling, with that beautiful grey. Oh, my God. Gone are those hideous tables in the middle, placed them with rustic, centralised tables. Great for families. It's got that communal feel as well. And the back wall, the entrance of the kitchen, we've had a little bit of fun there. Those cutting boards just give it that nice, rustic charm. Oh, yes. I never thought Bella Luna had any chance of looking this amazing. Oh, I'm still speechless, and everybody will tell you I'm never speechless. When I first arrived here, this area was a bit of a disaster. What I'm about to show you is something that is unique. This will be a game changer, because you have now a state-of-the-art, stunning, oh, brand new, here we go. <laughs> beautiful POS system nice. from Dynaware. It's going to transform oh, your business. Man. You can track your inventory. You can adjust your costings, labor costs, and what we need to hit on a weekly basis. And trust me, chefs, it'll be so much less of a confusion for you in the kitchen. This thing is going to be an absolute dream machine. Excited? Yeah, very, yeah. very. Good. Amazing. Thank you so much. I can't believe that I'm standing in Bella Luna. I feel like a little girl when I was back in Sicily. It's amazing. I'm just so thrilled. This is like a dream. Wow, I can't believe it. OK, come over, please. Take a good look at Bella Luna's new food. Oh, my god, I love it. Take a menu, my darling, and pass them along. The first course, steamed mussels, fresh. When they're open, they're cooked, you send them. That's how you should be serving a bowl of mussels. Yes. It's amazing. Delicious cavatelli, beautifully handmade, light, creamy tomato sauce. Next to that, you've got the delicious lasagna, homemade lasagna done with a nice, rich bolognese sauce. You've got a wonderful pan-seared salmon served on a bed of risotto, fragrant risotto with tomatoes, raisins, parmesan, and a little olive oil vinaigrette. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Presentation, like, it's got to look good. Mm -hmm. And it does. Absolutely. Absolutely no frozen food here at all. Fresh, clean ingredients. Welcome to the new Bella Luna. How are we doing? Beautiful. Thank you. It's relaunch night, and Chef Ramsay is determined to change Bella Luna's negative reputation. So how are you? Thank, Thank you for coming back. No problem. So he's invited back nice many of the unhappy customers that were at the town hall. Hello. And a pasta up. Cavatelli and chicken parm. That completes table six. Go, 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 go. Very early into service, John Franco's attention to detail in the kitchen is paying off as customers are thoroughly enjoying Chef Ramsay's new menu. How is it? Oh, my god. It's better than my mom. She's Italian. She's so good. So, Franco, Nicole put in an ossobuco and a pasta dish that they're waiting a long time. OK, all right, I'm sorry. Come on, guys. Fucking hell. OK, all right, look how many tickets we have back here. But just midway into service, John Franco is overwhelmed with the rush of tickets. I need steamed mussels. We're working on it, Tracy. And maintaining the standards of the new menu. Now, which table did she say I need? Wait, wait. Come on. And a relaunch that started off on a positive note is suddenly in jeopardy. Still waiting on table six. How long do you think? Uh, it's going to be a little bit more because you have a well-done prime rib. No, uh, I don't no. have a well-done prime rib. All right, so, OK. Come on, guys. Get the tables together. A minestrone and a Caesar salad. Are you kidding me? All of you, quick! If you think I'm serving that, you're dreaming. We may as well go back to where we were. All right. All of a sudden, we've just dropped our fucking standards. And the next person that throws that out at me, I will throw them out. Yes, chef. Come on, guys, let's go. Come here, you. Is that, what, is that what you busted no. your ass off for? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Come on. You're right. It's in front of your eyes. Get them together. It's relaunch night, and John Franco's standards have dropped in the middle of service. If you oh, no. think I'm serving that, you're dreaming. And Chef Ramsay is not exactly pleased. Is that what you busted no. your ass off for? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Come on. You're right. It's in front of your eyes. Get him together. 
Yes, two sir. ways. A kitchen functions. You run it or it runs you. All right. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. It's been about an hour and a half, right? Yeah. One little mistake and he sinks to oblivion. Get in there and get him lifted up. Come on, honey, you're OK. Don't worry about it. Everybody's happy. They love the food. Don't let one little mistake keep you down. I'm trying. OK, honey, don't worry. Gianfranco is under a lot of pressure right now. You guys are doing great. But he needs to know how to deal and work with the pressure as well. All right, guys, we got to get a hold of ourselves. We need another bruschetta. We need all this stuff plated. I need a pappardelle and also buco right away. That's it. Are we ready for table six? Yes, we are. All right. Let's go. Stop plating that. Very nice. Keep it going. Salmon, I need it right away. Plate it. It's in the oven. Run that out. And now I have appetizers ready. I'm proud of you. This is amazing to me to see John Franco actually get a voice. There you go. That's the part of Adele. How are we doing? How We're was your dessert? Well. Oh, it was so though. good. Everything really good. Yeah, this is our first time here, but not our last. It was a pleasure serving you. Let him know. And we'll see you soon. Tonight, let's be honest, it wasn't perfect, but we went a long way to impressing the locals. Young man, I finally heard your voice tonight, but it needs to be there from the beginning to the end. And you can't have your head in a pan, because this place is going to be busy. Thank, Thank you, you so chef. much. Good night. Take care of your mom. OK? Yes. Chef? OK. What a big man. Thank you. Darling, come here, you. Uh, Take care. God bless you. God bless you. Good night. <sighs> what a night. A mother and the two sons moved from New York to Easton to open their dream restaurant three years ago. But truthfully, they were not ready for such a big challenge. But now they have the roadmap on how to succeed. But what they really need more than anything is the discipline to follow it through. Wow. Bella Luna. Fingers crossed. What a place. In the months that followed, Welcome to the new Bella Luna. Rosaria took Chef Ramsay's suggestions, and Bella Luna's business increased significantly. Good job, everybody. I really want to thank Chef Ramsay for choosing us to help us and try to save Bella Luna. I just, I feel so blessed. Grazie. You got it, Mom. Due to some issues with the landlord, Bella Luna had to close temporarily and is now searching for a new location. They hope to reopen very soon. From the first second I leave a restaurant on Kitchen Nightmares, I'm always wondering how they'll fare. Tonight, we will see how the restaurants I visited last year are doing. And trust me, you won't believe what I found. First up, the Galleria 33 in Boston. Boston's North End home to La Galleria 33, and these two crazy sisters. Rita. Go talk to the customers. Go entertain them while they're waiting for the fucking food. And Lisa. Rosa, go do something. That's my spot. From the very beginning, they were trouble. I'm pretty sure this is what a nervous breakdown feels like. They didn't have a clue on how to run a restaurant. I mean, you should have seen how the staff behaved. Rosa, could you not do that? Thanks. She told me to sweep. She's sweeping, Lisa. She's sweeping it on me, though. Don't sweep it on my sisters in the room. I roller. hate you. Once I met these two sisters. Lisa, 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 I'm Rita. Rita, I could tell they were going to be a handful. I think you said water, water, Sarah, honey. Oh, shit. Water, water. Oh, I'm water, sorry. Please. No, 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 worry, a little bit too early. <laughs> Never too early. <laughs> uh, it is. Lisa loves wine. She likes to drink. I smoke and she drinks. I mean, since we're airing my dirty laundry, oh, I'll let her air her own. Cut that out. Don't say that she drinks. Lisa's great. They told me their parents own a restaurant as well. Oh, your mum and dad have a restaurant? Yep, yeah, five doors In out. Boston? Yes, yeah. right across the street diagonally. You're kidding me. Same menu? I didn't get it. And Rita's ex-husband is the chef. Say that again? I was married to him. Sounds like a soap opera. Yes. Oh, boy. OK. It was time to try the food. Good. I'm Sarah. Oh, please. Sarah, nice to see you, darling. Very nice to meet and you. My server. She didn't hold back, and she certainly wasn't a fan of Rita and Lisa. There is no organization at all. Wow. Not here, not in the kitchen, nowhere. Wow. That's not good. Why is she saying that? Because she's an imbecile. Skank. Frozen gnocchi, frozen meatball, veal paradiso. 
Oh, come on. Wow. It's like someone's thrown up on my plate. Gross. They call this Italian food, and they wonder why business is down. There's a Michelin chef in here ripping our food apart, and you guys are giggling away, and I'm about to throw up. <laughs> Rita was freaking out. Oh, God. But she had every reason to. Let's just pray that he uses his pray. nose. You're like beyond prayer. I just want somebody to kill me at this point. This is too much. When it came time for dinner, I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I walked through the door. Rita was arguing with customers. This is her plate. I yes. took it right from the waiter. Yeah, I know it's And plate. I stuck he my finger. The one that she handed to me to eat was cold. And they're all hot. Are you kidding me? They were hot. Was, they they were, time, they weren't hot to us. So they were cold when they got here, and they got hot when they came back. I was in absolute disbelief. She was really arguing with them. They're all hot, so I'm just wondering. Oh, my god. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, I saw Chef Doug drop a piece of chicken on the floor, oh. then pick it up and cooked it. You just dropped that on the floor? Yeah. You can't cook it. You just dropped it on the floor. I know. But when I brought it to their attention... Uh, Rita, Lisa. Hello, what? He just dropped the chicken on the floor and put it back in the pan. Wait a minute. This one here. These sisters just wanted to make excuses. I don't know what if he I does, say... it's disgusting, but... What are you wiping his ass? I'm not, but I don't want to be betrayed as a restaurant who serves chicken that's been dropped I tried before. to stop him from doing it. I don't know, he's not. Oh, fuck me. Next thing I knew, Lisa didn't want to be bothered with any of the problems that I was pointing out. I gotta get the fuck out of here. can't do that. Ridiculous. Douchebag, he doesn't want to help us. He doesn't care. I'm out of here. You go, I'm going. I didn't I'm going. sign I'm up for this. Well, I, I don't give a Mr. fuck what you signed. Let, let, let me tell you something. I didn't sign up you walk this. out, I'm out. None of you give a shit here. That's bullshit. Then you take that off, I'm going as well. You go, I go. Lisa finally came to her senses and realized she needed my help. I do give a shit. But so if you give a shit, then you'd stay and actually show some willing. I came to help. Okay, I'm just gonna have a glass of wine. We can fix it. It's not too late. I'm here to help. I know. And at times you think I'm not. I'm here no, to help. I know you are. I know. But I'm not going to put a Band-Aid on it. A Band-Aid's not going to keep this business no. open. No, it won't. No. The next day, I decided the first order of business was a staff meeting. First time ever for this restaurant. Today, it's all about moving forward and changing. Boy, were Lisa and Rita ready. They weren't holding back. Rosa, you're a real sloth. Joe. When I ask you to do something, yeah, like wash a window, you know the reason? <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Miguel, you scratch your balls in the dining room. But doesn't make me a bad way to scratch my balls. Come on. Wow. They had a lot to say. This is what I see when I walk in. You are sitting there, Sarah, chit-chatting, drinking coffee, and looking miserable. Because well, whose fault something... is that after all? Yours? No, it's yours. You expect everything it is not to be my done? Fault. This business, number one, is not under my name. It's under both of your names. That's you why know. you need to listen to what I say. Finally, Rita and Lisa were standing up to their staff. I'm taking control back today. These two sisters were now committed to moving forward. Next, I had to tackle the food. Just have a little gather over there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. I introduced small plates. Did you say start? It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, my God. God. <laughs> and modernized their dining room. Right. This is so oh, nice. Clean. Oh, my God. I feel like we have our own identity as a restaurant now. I feel like it's us. I'm excited to work here and be here, and it's beautiful. It was time for the relaunch, and Lisa... Hello, how are you? Can I have your name? Mendoza. And Rita really stepped up. Fire, two specials, a large gnocchi, and a veal osso They showed such great enthusiasm by taking control of their staff. Whenever you're ready, send it out. You ready? Take this one. Thank you. Making sure customers were happy. Wow, that's really good. This is amazing. And their food was executed properly. I think that's everything. OK, beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for coming. These sisters are truly, and I mean truly, unique. <laughs> I'll stand here. What, what, what's the matter? You have two arms. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had such a hard time saying goodbye. Gordon, Chef Ramsay, Chef Ramsay, you can't go. I cannot stay. You can no, stay. I, I, just like, just I, I, 20 more minutes. I, I, I can't stay Just one also book or more. Oh, where is he? Fantastic, thank you. I'm sweating like a pig. I can't wait to see Gordon. 
I'm so excited. I, I'm not gonna be able to contain myself. I'm gonna try, but we'll see. Rita, Lisa. Oh, I see oh, come on. him. <laughs> Wow. How are you, darling? I'm are you well? Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Um, I found good to see him. you both. Are you well? Found found him. Him. Man, yeah, Trump is crazy out there. I know. It's so, so nice so to be I back. Heard. Place yeah. looks amazing. I've been yeah. busy. Yeah. This is nice. We've been busy, so we have been busy. Since being on the show, most of the response has been positive. There's been a little backlash because I called Chef Ramsay a douchebag. Oh, oh, Captain, you well? Oh, God. Has he been promoted? Has he had another, another title? Well, he's given been... himself the other day, he was telling people he was the owner. What are you here? Everything. I'm like manager slash. Oh, so you're the manager? Rita? Yes. Uh, is Pat serious? General manager? He is the bus boy. I just assumed their role. He's the owner now. The owner. Honestly. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get with Pat. You need like seven scientists to figure him out. Hey. Hey, how are you? How are you, bud? You well? Good to see you. You good? Yeah. But Is he working hard? You know what? The heart has. <laughs> the heart has. Yeah. What, you, you guys back together? No, That's no. That's amazing. No, 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 no. Oh, you're not back together? The, the passion oh. for the food. Okay, yes. good. Let's bend down together, just in case any chicken on the floor. You can't cook it. You've just dropped it on the floor. No. Oh, no. oh, no, there's no chicken on the floor. No. Oh, gee, what is that's, that? That's me on the floor dressed what? as a chicken so he never forgets of the fiasco. Douglas caused that whole fucking fiasco when he did that whole spiel with the chicken. I was really mad. So I put a picture up on the wall of me dressed as a chicken thrown on the floor so he never forgets what he did. I think it's nice that Rita can make light of a shitty situation. I do, I'm not, you know, I don't, I wouldn't. I don't dress up as things. I'll leave the dressing up to Rita. Good to see you. Excellent. Right, let's catch up with the two girls. Things have been really good since Chef Ramsay left. I think everybody's attitude has changed. Douglas is being much more creative. I'm more motivated. Rita's still Rita, but that's OK. All right, first of all, who's in charge? Um, we are. Yeah. I have a better relationship with the staff, because it's more like before they didn't really respect us or what we said, and yeah. now I feel like we're leaders. You know, there's always got rid of all the riffraff. Right? Yeah. Tell me how you got rid of the riffraff. I what happened? did the fireman thing that you do when they're not good, rotten fish from the head, cut it off and throw them out. <laughs> That's I normal did. in a business. I know, I'm almost normal. After you, you I'm almost normal. You cannot carry dead wood. No. Okay. They were like more than dead wood, they were like a burnt down forest kind of. Hey, don't forget I, me, huh? Yeah, no. But don't forget me. <laughs> I don't forget you. You're pouring the water huh? on the table. He's fine, he's fine. Yeah, he's... Um, oh, I'm sorry. How about a drink for the ladies? No, I don't. I don't drink in service anymore. You don't drink in service anymore? I'm just gonna have a glass of wine. Unbelievable. It's amazing. You're gonna have a little glass after service. After service. Um, I smoke. I smoke. She smoked, but that's hard. She's you, trying. You said you were gonna stop smoking. She said I was gonna stop smoking. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, it's a bad habit. I don't want to do it. But... Talk to me over the last 10 months. How's it been business wise? It's been up about 15%. 15 yeah, percent. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Great. all the back bills paid, mortgages bought up. When you greet customers, are you chewing gum? No. Are you chewing gum? No. No. What is you chewing? I swallowed it. I swallowed it. No. Oh, so you are chewing gum? I was chewing gum. And now you just swallowed it? Yes. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gordon, for sticking my tongue out. You probably saw my cavities. How are you two working together? Are you on the same page? Yes. I mean, I we were, were pretty, always yeah. on the same page. Lisa but makes gelato. Mm, She's so creative. <gasps> After you left, all these juices. Yeah. And I cried. I sobbed like a baby. I missed the cameras. I missed you. So I got in trouble because I installed a surveillance system. <laughs> She said I spent the money foolishly. I, I had a gelato it machine, and she said we didn't have But money. I needed that cameras. Time, I, I needed like, cameras, Gordon. She doesn't understand. In. I needed the cameras. So now I have this little Gel machine. machine now. Yep. And yeah. I have four out, cameras. You know. I wanted eight. Right. I settled for four because I wanted a share. I had the surveillance thing on my phone. I could I could flip on my phone and look to see what was going on. But I used to do it while I was driving. And so I, you know, you can't text, and I'm pretty sure you can't watch the surveillance cameras either. So you've got the cameras in, so when you're not here, you can maintain. Well, so sometimes I walk around, and then I go downstairs, and I play it back, and I watch myself. Or if somebody falls, I 
go and I look at it. I think the surveillance cameras are useless. She goes and replays stupid shit, like I fell one time in the kitchen, she'll go downstairs and like watch me fall over and over again. You two have got such a huge they love fan base us, yeah. in London. You know I mean, where else they huge. love us? From prison, from prison. Yeah. You're huge in prison, did you know that? In prison? In yeah. prisons. Rita's a stalker. He's I've written her like eight letters. S seriously? He's yes. coming out yeah. in 26 years. He would like to take me for coffee. No, mine are all lifers, so I don't have to. Their life, you're, their life you don't have to yes. worry. Yeah. I've gotten a guy who wants to buy my shoes because he has a foot fetish, marriage proposals, but I'm already married, so I mean, unfortunately, I have to say no. Sorry. Would you excuse me? I'm going to go down to the bathroom and I'll come back and have a quick bite to eat. Okay. I'm going to go downstairs. Should I come with? No, he's not coming to the bathroom. No, with not into the bathroom. No, 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 no excuse me. I've got to check something out first before I go to the bathroom. I'm dying to find out what they've got. Wow. Lisa! Lisa! Oh, Rita! Rita. Oh, holy shit! Yes. yes! Yes! Two seconds, please! Yes! Rita or Lisa? I just want both of you. Oh my god. Quick. It's happening! Oh my god. Oh shit. First of all, no. Seriously? Are you kidding me? What is it? It's ice cream. Nothing. It's empty! Yeah, it's empty! Come and on! We pull the other one out! We pull the other one out! Wow. So this one's just packed with frozen pasta. What the fuck are they? Those are porcini ravioli. Oh, my God. Just gelato. That's it. That's it. You're allowed to have sorbet in the freezer. Yeah, we have to freeze that. Is that your little machine? That's my little yeah. machine. I love it. It's, it's so little. little. I'm so excited that you're in to sorbet. It's just fantastic. Want to see uh, my moonshine? Your moonshine? Yeah. Where is it? Over here. Oh, my God. We're going to make an ice cream at this court, and it's going to be so good watching those here. Jesus Christ, how long has that been brewing in there? Well, it's got a date on there. Yes. I date and label everything, because you taught me. Yeah. Are you drinking that neat? Hell no, I don't drink. I don't even drink <sighs> that, and I drink. Oh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> All that work! Are you going to put that into the gelatis? Yeah, so Maybe, once yeah. it's, uh, yeah. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. Bloody hell. This is how we're going to do it. When my moonshine is done, I'm going to give a shot to Pat and we're gonna wait two days. If nothing happens to him, like death or serious illness, Lisa will then take it and work it into a gelato because I don't think I can legally give anybody moonshine. I don't wanna go to jail. I, no. I was gonna say again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, oh my God, I'm dying for you to taste that. Wow. Like someone's thrown up on my plate. Wow. This is delicious. Miles apart. It's really good indeed. In terms of your glasses, how many different flavors? What are you working on? Well, we can let you taste. I'd love to taste one. Oh, I have a Becky. I'm going to stay okay. here with the I'll chef. Go ahead. I don't eat 80% of Lisa's flavored gelato. I don't like that one with the flowers in it. It's another one with honey. Don't like that. Although her gelato is really good, the texture's perfect. But those flavors just. I'm so busy in there. Hey, yeah, the chocolate orange. Yeah, chocolate yeah, orange. The anise. The anise. Aniseed. Why would somebody order something called anus? <laughs> you can't shout anus sorbet, anybody? I'm humiliated because she says anus to Chef Ramsay. It's disgusting to think of an ass in reference to ice cream. That's gross. That's blackberry lavender. She sometimes yeah, gives them to me you. to eat. No. But then my mouth goes on fire because she comes up with all these flavors instead of chocolate. She's a very immature palate. Oh, I have to make her, Well, like, she smokes. Her taste buds Oh, my are God. What is this beat up Rita <laughs> take? No, no. This one? That's an anus. Oh, yeah, she just <laughs> Anna C. Anna C. Anna C. Anna Is that it? Anna C. Anna C. It still sounds like anus. Um, that is delicious. Great job. Seriously, I am so impressed. So am I. Huh? But you're not leaving, are you? No. No, I have to go. Now? Already? Every time Gordon leaves, I get so sad. Well, we need him here saying? in Boston. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of nightmares here. I am certainly not the only one. Bye, my darling. Come on. Is that time of day? Uh, amazing so lunch. Soon.
know, I know, I know, I know. You keep know, you good... can't just walk into our lives and keep, leave like this. Keep, it's keep, not right. Keep up the good work. Good to see you, bud. Yes? Can we revisit, I, okay? I, I, <laughs> Please. I shall be. Love you. Bye, bye, bye. chef. Bye-bye now. I have to admit that both Lisa and Rita are two of my favourite owners I've ever had the pleasure of working with on Kitchen Nightmares. And now, due to all their efforts, the Gallery of 33 is a strong, independent, brilliant restaurant in the North End. And finally, something worthy of their parents' legacy. But, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Man, honestly. He's going to check up on us again. You can't leave us for too long without checking up on us, because then things... He'll be back. Hanson, Massachusetts. Home to one of the most stubborn owners I've ever met, Tom Caceres. The beef tips, people don't love them. Don't tell me that. This man purchased a restaurant called The Old Hitching Post for his daughter, Andrea. Good afternoon, Old Hitching Post. But had no intention of ever giving it to her. You, you gotta make sure water comes in. is in the front. But I want you to be there too. Well, why don't you go? Because, no, you. From the beginning, I could already tell that Tom and Andrea were on two completely different pages. What I'm saying to you, Andrea, you're not ready to take over. That's not true. Definitely not a nice situation. And sitting in that drab dining room didn't make it any better. I know we're in the uh, area of Cranberry, but my God, from napkins to the walls, it's Cranberry OD. Then I met my server, Carla. Oh, Carla. When, when was this one made? This was made today. She lied to me. She told me the food was fresh. Dry, horrible texture. Are you sure that was made today, darling? It was not, Chef. It's frozen. It's yes. frozen. It's frozen. Carla, why are you doing this to me? Sorry about that. But I wasn't going to get mad at her. I mean, look at it. It was Tom who was living in a fantasy world. He thought there was nothing wrong. And on top of that, he thought I was going to love his food. I thought you were going to love my midlock, but regardless if it was frozen. You thought I'd like that? Well, I really did. It's an insult to America. And this area, that's what they love. Tom was refusing to see the problems, even though they were staring him in the face. And on top of that, he wouldn't listen to me or his staff. They talk all the time that the food's not that good. Did you tell him to change? You don't let him change things. I never allowed him. I off. never allowed him not he to change says anything. He tries to when did I tell you off? not to change? I've tried to take things Come off. Come on, Piece of shit. So a new dinner service would be a challenge. But I didn't expect Tom to tell me that his frozen scallops smelled ocean fresh. The smell inside there. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. I've never heard or seen that advertised before. Rule number one when studying to be a chef, fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better once it's frozen. Here you are lecturing me that that fucking thing is fresh. It wasn't just me. Tom's daughter, Andrea, couldn't believe what she was seeing either. Oh, my god. And she knew her dad needed to change. I want this business, but I want it, I want it to function correctly. And my fear is that by the time it comes to me, what am I going to do with it? There's nothing to have. After Tom realized he shouldn't serve frozen food, he then came to me, open with the idea of changing. You got my support 100%. I want to be right next to you. We have to change immediately. And I trust you. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Let's get together. It was a shocking turnaround from such a stubborn man. You know what? I was blind all this time. Now that Tom had realized what he was doing wrong, it was time to get to work. Remember those dreadful cranberry walls? I got rid of them immediately. <gasps> wow. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. Are we in the Oz? Stay with me. <gasps> Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Tom and Andrea were on the same page about something. You like it, Dad? I love it. It was time to relaunch the restaurant. I put Andrea in charge. Table 23, two clam chowders, Caesar and a wedge salad. And it was an absolute success. Up, uh, got it? Carla, pick up 29. Andrea, show them what you can do, honey. Tom could see how Andrea was ready to run the old hitching post on her own. I'm passing over to you something you want. I'm leaving. Okay. I want you to take care of it. I want you to be successful. And you know I'm always be next to you for whatever you need. I know. So, go out there, girl, 
and get them. Okay. All right? I love you, Dad. I love you, too, honey. To be honest, I never thought we would get here. Getting the okay from my dad to step up and be in charge, it's amazing. Well done. Too old. Thanks, Dad. I'm back at the old hitching post where I met a very stubborn owner, Tom, who bought a restaurant for his daughter. Even after seven years, he wasn't ready to hand her control, but I was able to convince him that she was more than capable and definitely ready to run the restaurant on her own. I'm just hoping he stuck to his word. Last year when I came to the old hitching post, Tom, the owner, was running his restaurant like a tyrant and running the business and his daughter into the ground. After much convincing, he finally handed over the control to his daughter, Andrea. I'm hoping that is still the case. That color, beautiful. Hello. How are you? I'm proud. <laughs> I am so happy to be back. Oh, nice to see you. Good to see you. you look great. Thank you. The colour of this building is so inviting. It's called Showstopper Red. Whose idea was that? My idea. And um, where is Tom? You're not going to find him in here. Tom has definitely left the building. He's not here no. anywhere. Wow, that is great news. My dad has left. He's definitely out of the building. It took a long time, but my father finally trusts that I know what I'm doing, and dad is officially gone. That pivotal moment when that transition took place, when was that? It took him a long time to, to realize that. It's been, we're on month four now of completely being on our own and running the show. On most parts, my hands are tied. Just he's having a hard time backing down. Are you running the business? We run everything. Wow. Financials, everything, everything got turned over into my name. So when I first arrived, the business was losing money. And um, where are we now? We pay all of our bills. Everything is taken care of. That's fantastic. Yeah. Where is Tom? Tom is actually next door with my daughter. He's next door? Yeah. Babysitting. Yeah. Why don't you bring Dad over? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thanks, Tony. Excellent. Since Gordon left, my dad has moved about an hour and a half away. Now when I see my dad once a week, it's family time instead of, like, kill each other time. Tom. Sev Ramsey, come here. Oh, hi. Good to see you. Uh, likewise. It's been a year. Good to see you, too. Have you missed me? Very much. <laughs> um, this young lady has finally got the reins. I was a little bit nervous on the way in. I was thinking that you were going to pull back control. I would never do that. Thank you for standing true to your words. Why don't we go and have a catch up, maybe a bite to eat? Absolutely. Yeah. Gordon thought I was very stubborn person. He didn't believe me I was going to give the restaurant to my daughter. But I love Andrea. She loves every bit of it. I thought I'd walk in the door, you'd be running around. Screaming and shouting. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. No. But your daughter has the range. She has 100% control now. Before you said that, Andrea wouldn't last any longer than three months on her own. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, you're not ready to take over. That's not true. How are you feeling now? I think it's going to last for a very long time. Yeah. And she loves the business. Yeah. When you love what you do, Absolutely. you cannot go wrong. You, in general, I mean, you look less stressed than you did last time. I'm looking forward to go back to business very, very soon, you know? Yeah. I'm going to do the cooking this time. So are you going to be opening a new restaurant? Yep. And you're going to be in the kitchen? Yep. Fuck oh, me. I know, man. What are you going to do? Will you be using fresh collops or frozen? Shellfish is something you never freeze. And now here you are lecturing me that that fucking thing is fresh. 100% fresh, as always. I know you're going to get upset with this. I'll say it quietly. Do you still think that frozen scallops taste better than fresh? Absolutely. Fuck okay, it now. <laughs> no, stop fresh as always. Fresh as always. So challenging to my life. Chef Ramsey, Hello, welcome right. to the Hitch and Post. <laughs> welcome. Good to see you. Tom, let's catch up later. All right. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. And likewise. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Excellent. Sit down. Yes. So good to see you. So good to see you. I'm so happy to be back. Darling. Yes. Chef Ramsey. Sit down. There's a Thank quick catch so up. Yep. First of all, ladies, good to see you. Good to you see you. Well. Um, Tom has left the building. Tom is gone. <laughs> Great news. It, it really is. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Andrea, tell me about her performance. I'm so proud of her. She has stepped up seriously. Wow. Big difference that I see is she's managing the business. Yes. In the past, the whole business was in Tom's head. Mm -hmm. Tom runs a business his way, and he's not open to alternative ideas. We look forward to coming to work. Mm -hmm. Nice. And the meatloaf is flying out the window. It's fresh. It's, it's fresh. Delicious. I'm not lying to my customers. 
I have a meatloaf. When, when was this one made? This was made today. Are you sure that was made today, darling? It was not, chef. It's frozen. It's yes. frozen. Frozen. Carla, why are you doing this to me? Sorry about that. No fibs today. No fibs today. No I fibs promise today. you it's fresh. You promise me? Hi. Carla, swear. The food here at the Old Kitchen Post restaurant is fresh. Fresh. The feedback is excellent. Food, Great. everything. Great. It's so nice to see you both. You, you know too. That. Honestly, you I too. miss you both. Thank you very much. I lie a lot to my customers. Everything was fresh, I was told to say. Now we can be honest. The meatloaf here is fresh. It's not like those Greek maracas. I want you to love my meatloaf. Yeah. Can you hear the little maracas? Hi, chef. Our new house favorite, fresh meatloaf. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, so, meatloaf, wow. I mean, presentation, looks beautiful. So, how ironic is that? Dad's gone to change the diaper. You're running the business. <laughs> that is absolutely delicious. I mean, something that definitely makes you want to get out of your house. How was that uh, meatloaf? It tastes like uh, TV dinner that I give my three-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, that's been polite. Food is amazing. Um, that was what my I... biggest thing, is just give people really good food so that they want yeah. to come back all the time. But you've got great food. We, have, um, we do. In a great building mm -hmm. uh, with a great owner. Thank you. I'm so happy that you came back. Having Chef Ramsay come in here again and give us his approval was like a breath of fresh air, and it, it just gave me the power and the will to want to do more. First of all, congratulations. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Um, keep it up. <laughs> Come here, you. You, tried everything. you Greek yeah. god, you. <laughs> Honestly, it's strong as an ox. Good luck Thank with you. the new restaurant. Thank you so okay. much, and it was my pleasure meeting you. Take care. You have to come back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I always knew that Andrea had it in her to run the old Hitchin Post, but I'm more thrilled that Tom actually let her take over and run the business. Now, she's proven she's a great owner by making a big success of this amazing restaurant, and she's even made her father so proud too, so good on her. Everett Washington, home to the Prohibition Grill and belly dancer, Rishi Brown, who was very keen to show us all her moves. Unfortunately, not in a good way. Um, have you just been to a party or? No, I just no. got all dressed up just for you today. Oh, so you just, you, you don't dress like that normally? No, I do dress like this normally. Oh, you do dress like yeah. that normally? Yeah. Wow. I was hoping she paid as much attention to her food as she did her outfit. What's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so it's soup every two days. And last week? Uh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. I quickly learned that she didn't know the definition of soup of the day. What's happening? Soup of the day means a daily changing soup. Oh. I didn't even know what the soup of the day meant. I thought that just meant what soup we were serving that day. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was lame. Soup of the day. A new soup every day. OK, I'm going to talk to him about that. Wow. At that point, I could have left there and then. I didn't realize how clueless she was. <laughs> I'm not that stupid. It's just that's what I understood that meant. The frightening thing was that Rishi didn't think there was anything wrong. I liked it. I thought it looked nice and kind of unique and different. Then again, she didn't even know what soup of the day was. I don't know what to say. I like the food. I think the food is great here. I didn't know why she wasn't listening to me. I wanted to see dinner service in action. I knew I was in for a show, but trust me, not that kind of show. You are kidding me. Are you fucking serious? I'm not joking you. Close the doors, put them off my dinner. Fuck me. It wasn't just a belly flop in the dining room. Oh, my god. It was in the kitchen as well. Look at that. Dry as anything. The meat's cooked and raw on the same shelf. Rule number one. Cross-contamination. Ex explain to Rishi. Never saw a cooked product next to a raw product. What is this, guys? Oh, my god. It's trout. What is New that? New trout, old trout. And that there is the fresh one underneath, right? Oh, my god. I couldn't let it go on any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry and I'm so disappointed, but whatever you're eating now, just stop. Ridiculous. Let's go. Rishi finally started to see that this place was in serious trouble. I actually feel sorry for you. Do you know why? You're being used. Step up. Yeah. Get a grip. Yeah. Because time right now is not your friend. 
So, the next day, Rishi stepped up and decided to make some big changes. I don't want to beat around the bush about it. Unfortunately, I'm letting you go. I'm sorry. After seeing that Rishi was serious about being an owner, I was ready to turn Prohibition Grill into Everett's first ever gastro pub. So, I transformed the decor. Oh! Prohibition Grill is no longer a grill. Welcome to your new gastro ah! pub. Designed a stunning menu. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yum. Oh, my God. That was amazing. And gave Rishi a new look. Wow, you look amazing. Thanks. I huh? love it. <laughs> At the relaunch, Rishi proved that she could take charge of a restaurant. Fire left one, please. Left one heard. All right, and the salmon for you, my dear. That bourbon glaze is fantastic. Good night with them. Okay, good Take night, care. Chef Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here in Everett, Washington, to check in on the Prohibition Gastro Pub and its owner, Rishi. Now, last time I was here, Gastro Pub were fairly new to this part of town. So it would be interesting to find out how the locals took to the new Prohibition. But more importantly, did Rishi stick to a promise with no more belly dancing? Time to check in. Last year, Prohibition Grill owner Rishi had to be one of the most clueless restaurateurs I've ever met. And it took a lot of convincing to get her to step out of that belly dancing costume and into the role of running her restaurant. But we did it. And I'm back and very anxious to see how she's doing. Fingers crossed. Hi, Hi. how are you? Good, wow. how are you? Welcome very back well. to the Prohibition. I'm so happy to be back here. Yeah. Um, look at this place. Yeah, it's been wow. great. It's it looks great. gorgeous. Uh, where's Rishi? Oh no, is that the music? That's you are music. kidding me. <laughs> oh no, she promised me no more. Burn, I'll be right with you. You, you prom. Just kidding, Chef Ramsey. You are so bad. I was so excited and then I got really nervous. I know, I'm sorry, Gordon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for coming. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. You yes. look great, the restaurant's Thank busy, you, and Chef you Ramsey. look like an owner. Thank yeah. you. Smart. Okay, and hey. Tucked away. You look great. Right, good. Hair looks Thank amazing. You. In general, how's business? Little by little, it's uh, catching on fire. Let's go and catch up, shall we? Somewhere okay. nice and quiet. I'm really so excited today because I really want to show Chef Ramsey what I've done. I'm not this clueless, you know, belly dancer turned restaurateur. First of all, congratulations. The place looks amazing. Thank um, you. No more belly dancing, right? No more belly dancing. Excellent. Yes. How are you doing personally? Oh my gosh, well, I'm gonna tell you, I've been working around the clock here since you left. Now, I'm totally an owner here. Right. I'm involved in what's going on in my kitchen. Yeah. I'm involved in the ordering. Yeah. I mean, my consulting chef, Marquetta Shrek, she's spectacular. It's changed my life, it's awesome. I'm so pleased to hear, because you were so distant, and oh you had no God. idea what was going on there. It was I almost no like, idea. And yeah. oh, closer to the business than ever before. Oh. Wow, There's wow, no wow. comparison, Chef Ramsey. Yeah. yeah. Right, I'm going to quiz you. Oh, gosh. OK. First question. What's the soup of the day? I didn't even know what the soup of the day meant. It's a soup made fresh daily. And what does the word fresh mean? Fresh means, I thought fresh means that it's not frozen. Food at the peak of its life. That's what it means to me. Food that is beautiful, vibrant. How do you grow oysters? Oh, my goodness. You don't make an oyster, you just open them. Huh? Yes, in the shell. <laughs> we grow them in the shell in the, in the ocean. And what's the secret of a good belly dance? To have a great shimmy and undulation that work well together. <laughs> That's undulating. Where does belly dancing belong? In appropriate venues, Brilliant. not at work. You're keeping your belly separate from your business. Absolutely. I'm so pleased to hear that. Thanks, you know that. Chef Ramsey. Before I may have been that naive owner, not so much anymore. He can quiz me all he wants. I got the answers. Hi, my darling. Good to see you. Likewise, good to see you. How's it going? Is this lady been demanding on enforcing higher standards with her team? She's a force in the kitchen, that's for sure. Great. You are serious. I'm on it. Oh. Yeah, I, even do, I even do a prep shift here a couple times a week. You prep as well? Yes. I'm impressed. It's a pleasure meeting you. It was great to meet you. Likewise, Madonna. Good to see you. Well done. Keep up the good work. 
Man, I've got to go back in there. Huh? Yeah. My favourite spot in there. I know this! Close the door, it's bring off my dinner. Belly dance. That was a belly flop. So, Chef Ramsay, we're going to have you okay, sit Grace. right here. Mm -hmm. Thank and you, um, I'm going to go to the kitchen and prepare a meal for you. Would that be OK? I, I have something wait. special that I'm cooking myself for you. Last time Chef Ramsay was here, he didn't like anything on our menu. And today, I'm a little nervous, but I feel confident he's going to love his lunch. OK, Chef Ramsay, wow. this is our IPA barbecue shrimp with wow. spicy sausage on creamy yellow grit. That looks amazing. And wow. we have a little sample of the braised pork shoulder with the spatzel wow. and the wild mushrooms. Take a seat, darling, Thank please. Thank you. The creamy grits is one of my specialties. I make them every day. What do you think? The grits are amazing. Oh, thank you. Wow. That is delicious. I think of this, and it really does stand out as a true gastro pub dish. Thank you. But then I have that little nightmare and that little flashback to the salmon. Oh, my God. Remember the, the salmon? pinwheel salmon? That is fucking disgusting. I will never forget that dish. I'll never forget when you rolled it out, and I was like... Bloodlines on there as well. Nasty. You have really embraced the change, haven't you? Oh, my gosh. Chef Ramsay, I love it. And to see that you've got one foot in the kitchen, and you're running the business from the engine room yes. and in control. I'm so encouraged to hear you say that. Come with me. I've got a little surprise for you. Chef Ramsay really helped me to quickly understand that change needed to occur. Is my makeup all smeared? No. no. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm okay. sure. Looks amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry for interrupting, but I'm so excited to be back here because this place is amazing. Thanks to this lady here. Great job. Thanks, um, I would like to just introduce you to a very special guest. Please give a warm welcome for the Mayor of Everett, Ray Stepherson. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, now, so meaningful. I know uh, Ray has a few uh, words to say to you do. and your team. Sir. To everyone who is here, I, Ray Stephenson, Mayor of the City of Everett, do hereby proclaim July 31st, 2013, as Prohibition Gastro Pub Appreciation Day. most amazing moment of my life. Uh, good job. Thanks, Chef Ramsay. I love okay. you, and thank you again okay. for everything. Okay. Come back. Keep thank up you. the good work. Thank, thank you, Dan. Take care. Thanks Bye, guys. Bye, thank Chef Ramsay. Bye-bye. He's so handsome. Wow, what a success. Rishi has really impressed me. And it's so nice to see her go from a completely oblivious owner to someone who's now in control of a restaurant big time. And it's so nice to see the town of Ever embracing a true gastro pub. Long may it continue. Thank God, no more dancing. <laughs>